Hello, Snowpoke. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Ink Theory. December 30th, 2020. Just two more days until the new year. Snow, how are you doing? Yeah, I just turned on the stream volume. Oh, they could hear me. <laughs> That's a start. Yeah, don't worry, Snail. I'll just take care of the next six hours for you. No worries. <laughs> no, but yeah, right now Snowpoke is setting up um, kind of last minute audio, audio corrections and whatnot. But yes, welcome everybody. Welcome to Ink Theory. It's going to be an exciting six hours or so, five, six hours, something like that. It's going to be amazing. Again, we had so many teams sign up at the last minute, which is incredible. We thought this month would be a little more quiet, but, you know, we were surprised by all the late signups. And again, we basically reached the numbers that we reached last month, which is incredible. It, it will surely be a great tournament. We've uh, I know the support team has been really busy this morning and uh, this afternoon kind of navigating and helping helping teams out, helping assist their team setup and all that. But it's going to be wonderful. And yeah, we're just getting a few things situated here, so we'll be starting momentarily. Test. Oh, yes. Wait, I can hear myself now. But I think chat can hear me. Chat can hear me. Sadly, I can also hear myself, which should not be happening. But that's a start. That's a start. That's a start. All right, we're getting there. We're making progress. And yeah, today is a special Wednesday edition of Ink Theory. As you guys know, Ink Theory typically happens on the Saturday, but this Saturday is going to be, um, I think it's the January 2nd, and that's, you know, kind of right around the time of the holidays, which makes it tricky. I mean, we're around the holidays right now, but we think this is still a good time for a tournament, and we can clearly see that by all the teams who signed up. Again, reaching, I think we had 60 registered teams or something like that. Yeah, like... 62 or so and then i think like a few of them didn't finalize their signups as it always goes but um this is still a much much larger tournament than expected it definitely is and it's going to be an exciting one as well i need to look at the maps and see what we can look forward to Okay, I apologize for stream to a second. I'm still figuring out this uh, mild audio issue. I'm hoping you all can't hear what is going on. Basically, I can hear myself, uh, which I don't enjoy very much, especially because I'm hearing myself with a slight delay. But I might tell you about the schedule because in just one minute, we're actually going to start the very first round of this tournament. We have done a mild rename. Um, it used to be just called Swiss Days Round 1 to Round 6. But now the first two rounds, we're going to call them Calibration Rounds. The idea behind that is literally just that um, people tend to get a little bit confused over the balancing in the first rounds. And um, they... Um, they have unbalanced matches in the first rounds and then are really worried about the tournament. So we're going to call those Calibration now so that people aren't too worried about the, the future for the tournament in the rounds three to six, which usually tend to be much, much more balanced. Yeah, and essentially all these stages and all these matchups are the same, but again, we call them Calibration 1 and 2 because they tend to be a little more uneven. You are choosing two random teams to go head to head. You know, it could be a team that will make the top cut, could be a team that's newer who it doesn't have tournament experience. So calling them a Calibration round really gives it a, a better vibe, I believe. 
So the very first round, calibration round, is just about to start. So we'll have to see who are we going to host? Because of course, um, well, this is a stream, so you are supposed to be able to see some of the gameplay, but there are actually 27 matches running right now. So we have to decide which one is going to be something that might be bringing us incredibly interesting gameplay. And I'll go ahead and read off the maps that will be involved in Ink Theory December. So again, we have eight stages that are going to rotate all, all different modes. We have Humpback Pump Track, Kelp Dome, Macomart, Manta Maria, Piranha Pit, Sturgeon Shipyard, The Reef, and Wahoo World. Okay, I need another second. I can already tell you the first matchup is going to be Third Impact versus Barracuda. And while we are setting this up, I can also tell you, or actually Falco, could you tell our viewers about how Swiss stage tournaments work? Absolutely. So Swiss stages are a little different. Actually, they're kind of a lot different than what you, we normally see in a tournament, which is single elimination or double elimination. A Swiss tournament means that every team is going to at least play six sets of matches. And this is because we want everybody to have a full tournament experience, and we want to make sure that we are getting the best teams into the top cut. And the top cut is going to be the like a, a single elimination or double kind of a double elimination once we get to the top two or top four, but it essentially is a way to, okay, we want to have these teams have six matchups total and make sure that the best actually do make it into the top eight. And this is really nice because every team gets to at least play six, which means if you don't think you're a very good team or you're a new team, well, guess what? You still get to play the entire tournament and the further we move down in the tournament, you're going to play teams that are more at your skill level as well. Exactly. And there's also this, I have to admit, somewhat complicated system that determines how the positioning is going to be. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, so first it's the win-loss ratio of the sets. You know, if you if you go 6-0 and on your set and you're, at, you're comparing yourself to a team that went 4-2, and two, you're going to have the better position. Um, if it's a draw, it's the winner percentage or opponent's win percentage. So we want to make sure that if there's a tie, that the team that moves on beat better teams. You know, they, they kind of deserve that spot more. Um, and then if even that's a draw, it's the win-loss ratio of the game. So remember, we, we keep track of all three games. Even though you want to win the set, you want to win two out of three, we're still going to play all three games just so we can get that extra um, extra sample. And if you if you sweep a team 3-0, you're going to be in a better position than if somebody were to win a set 2-1. to one. Exactly. Okay, I'm still... Figuring out my capture card now. So I did test this before the stream. I'm starting to be a little bit worried because like nothing is working the way it's supposed to. It wouldn't be a tournament if uh, that didn't happen. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Okay. Yeah, today is uh, particularly adventurous because I was, um, let me tell you about my technological misadventures. Yesterday I wanted to plug in a new SSD into my computer and it turned out I had to like plug in and uh, unplug everything on my computer. And uh, now all of my writing, all of my cable writing seems to be a little bit messed up. It's a little bit of last minute configurations right before the tournament. I like Absolutely. it. Absolutely. However, on the flip side, there are also a lot of new changes to this tournament that have just been implemented. For example, there's a captain system now, so instead of pinging every single person in the server, now we only ping the people that are actually playing, which I am sure everybody else on the server is going to very much appreciate. And I hope that, um, yeah, that will just make things a little bit smoother, because uh, we have realized 
Tournaments that have so many players, so many participants, you have to be way more careful with those. And you have to be really careful that like nobody plays longer than they're supposed to and everything. So it's very important that we have that communication figured out. Yeah, absolutely. The more teams you have in a tournament, you know, you you're pretty much waiting for you're waiting for the last team to finish. And, you know, if you add more teams, there's a greater chance for somebody to be last. So these do typically take a little longer, but it's all running smoothly. Looks like we're getting ready for the first matchup, too. We very much are. And it is going to be third impact versus Paracuto. And we're going to yeah, start like with Splat Zones. Humpback, we are Splat track. Zones on Humpback. Can you, Falco, can you tell you, can you tell us a little bit about your experiences on this map? Yeah, so I remember when I first started playing Splatoon, I loved Humpback Pump Track on Turf War. And I kind of thought that would carry over a little bit into ranked, but man, it is a brutal, brutal, brutal stage, I think. You know, it's similar to Muscle Forge Fitness, where right in the middle of the zone, it's kind of elevated a little bit. So there can be a lot of surprise attacks from like splat bombs, curling bombs, any item that just kind of comes off the side and really surprises you. Let's see if we find any of those in today's match. Absolutely. Um, can you give me one second? I'm actually going to restart my audio engine, but it's going to take five seconds. Okay. Looks like we're still waiting on a few more players here. Yeah, those teams, they are speedy with their setup. They're going to figure this out. Okay, now I have to start the other audio program. Again, I have to apologize that all the writing has reset itself, apparently. And I know, like, I am I am sure that for the viewers... Viewers, can you tell me, is everything working for you? Because I think I am actually the only person in this, like, like 300-person experience <laughs> who is currently experiencing the tech issues. So it's not the worst thing in the world. I mean, I can just deal with, like, listening to myself with a half a second delay but I would prefer not having to. And also, the match is starting. Yep, Barracuda on the uh, teal color, and it looks like Third Impact as purple pink. And it looks like a quick yes. cap by Third Impact, but they quickly lose it. They are one player down right now. And we do not, not have game. game. That's where and I'm Barracuda quickly takes the zone, three on three. Two players down now from Barracuda. Let's see if Third Impact can capitalize. It looks like they do. They do take to the zone. Still two players down. For the mini or the heavy remix, can they get them? It doesn't look like they can get them yet, but Third Impact, they do take the lead. And uh, yes, there is no in-game music at the moment. Uh, my sound card seems to be crashing. <laughs> so uh, Falco, can you continue commentating this tournament while I figure out what's going on with my sound card? Absolutely no problem. Looks like we do have a 3v3. Barracuda does take the zone. 3v2 right now. It looks like they're going to try and do the lockout phase. They're really going to try and push up from the zone. It looks like we do have one player flanking. They were caught. One player from third impact is going towards the zone. And it's, let's see if they'll be successful. Barracuda does lose the cap. And third impact that takes the cap. Booyah Bomb at mid. Double Booyah Bomb at mid takes the cap again for Barracuda. Again, they don't have the lead. They do have their penalty points winding down a little bit. It looks like we lost a little bit of the game on the stream there. Um, but I'll keep you guys entertained here. I'll keep it going. <laughs> Barracuda still has the They just took the lead. No more penalty points for them. 4v4. Looks like Barracuda is doing a pretty good job at locking everybody out right now. We we tr we see flank attempts from third impact. They're trying from all angles. But right now, Barracuda is doing a very good job locking them out. Two players down from third impact. And we'll see one of them try to push up. Third impact really needs to build their specials if they want to take this. But it looks like Barracuda is going to get a semi GG booty bomb three on three. Can third impact take the cap at the last second? It looks like they can't. Barracuda takes game one. And that was a pretty, pretty nice match. It started off 
pretty even, but it looks like once that lockout phase happens, it's really, really hard to recover. Bayakuda did a wonderful job at taking it. So it looks like now we're going to move on to round two, which will be Kelp Dome and Tower Control. Um, Kelp Dome is an interesting, interesting stage, and I know that some people really like it, some people don't like it so much. I know I don't mind tower control on Kelp Dome. I, I much prefer tower to uh, Rainmaker on this stage, but it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting. There are the check the checkpoints I think are in interesting spots on this stage too. And it looks like third impact is ready, almost. So we have recovered the gameplay audio. Whew. Awesome. <laughs> Turns out there is a difference between digital in and digital out. <laughs> we have the sounds. All right, game two, tower control kelp dome. Barracuda has the set right now 1-0. So we see oh, a slightly see different that's, loadout here. That's Jamil's team, isn't it? You might know Jamil from like a lot of Twitch streams. He's a very, very strong Nautilus player usually, but it seems like today he's not picking that particular weapon. Yeah, Jamil's playing the mini right now, it seems like, and it might be a little bit of a, puck, or a, a pickle facing some Tetras and an Enzap. Right now, it looks like... Um, oh, yep, they did. Okay, they hopped off the tower. <laughs> <laughs> I was confused for a second. Third impact, yep. Oh, they nice did get a ball. slight lead, 10 push lead. Can you tell me, Falco, like, how close was the previous match? Yeah, so the previous match, it started off with both teams headbutting each other for probably the first minute and a half, and then once Barracuda got through and initiated the lockout phase, they really, really held on, and third impact had a hard time getting back in. So right now it appears to be a little different. Third impact is pushing. Let's see if they get to the first checkpoint. Going to be tricky with the rain. It is like in general, it's very interesting how a lot of of uh, Nautilus players they're starting to switch to mini splatling. They are. We do see mini more and more. It seems like. Now I was mentioning about this stage. These checkpoints are interesting because the first checkpoint is pretty close at mid and the second one is very close towards the end so you really you really have to be patient to get to those checkpoints and right now it looks like barracuda's making their first push they hopped on for a little bit they're hopping off right now it's a 2v2 and we do see an inkjet by barracuda and barracuda does take the lead getting to the first checkpoint it looks like they're not going to push through it right now they are down two players We see some more much, specials much by third impact. Oh, and look at that map control. The map control this is pretty, much, much pretty much crazy. crazy. It looks like a uh, third impact is doing a good job by the checkpoints. But again, you really have to get to these checkpoints if you want to get a good lead. It's really, really tricky in this stage. Three player, two players down now from third impact. There are a lot of people actually that say if you pass the second checkpoint on this particular map, you win the game. So by this logic, third impact uh, might as well go squid party now because they won. But I wouldn't quite rely on it. <laughs> it's going to be a tough match. Yeah, we're just over halfway over with this match. And two players, three players down now on Barracuda. Like third impact is gaining map control more and more. We do see Zero pushing up a little bit with the forge. Benny is on the tower. Let's see if they get finally get to the second checkpoint. I almost said third checkpoint, but no, there's only two on this stage. And it looks like they're inching closer and closer, getting all the and way to 42 players spot. down now on Bayarcuda. Tends to be the hardest to defend on. You can see how the tower is just moving forward and forward. Though there's only one player left for third impact, but that player is still left. Okay, they made it to 18 down. That's incredibly hard to take back the lead for Barracuda. 
Absolutely, and Barracuda now seems to gain a little bit more map control, especially on their side. They want to just have this tower ride back to mid. They don't need to be escorting it. They want to push forward, but it looks like Zero's going to try and sneak and jump on the tower. We do see the ends at Phoenix trying to contest Zero. Let's see who wins this 1v1. And four on four right now. Looks like both t players kind of retreated a little bit. There's a big battle at mid right now because Barracuda knows that they need to take mid if they want to try and take the tower. So Barracuda will finally take it over to third impact side. We do see a ray, and remember, rays are very, very good on tower control, especially at those checkpoints. Okay, I have to... Um, Chad, can you tell me if the audio is still all right? I uh, have to admit, I am still uh, desperately trying to resolve this audio issue, which I'm sure you can't hear, but for me is actually quite, quite limiting. So I'm so, so, can we all please? Oh my gosh, they're taking the lead though. Barracuda, Barracuda. Barracuda, can they take the lead? They do get to the second checkpoint. Let's see if they get past it. No, so, so close. Two players down now on Barracuda. Three players down. What a... And so right now, we're setting, yeah, getting ready for game three. Very, very good, um, <laughs> very good job by both teams, obviously. But, you know, third impact really, really holding on to that lead. That was crucial. So close for Barracuda to come back. But again, just couldn't quite do it. Next will be Rainmaker on Makomar. And I, I like Makomar. I think Makomar is a fan favorite among a lot of people. It's, I'd say, the most neutral stage. You know, nobody really yeah, complains it is, uh, when it comes up, and Rainmaker is a good uh, mode too. Commonly considered, many players' favorite in tournaments where you go a little bit more by by the team's favorite maps. It tends to be one of the maps that is played uh, left and right. It definitely is. It's um, I, you know, it's an even stage, and I think that's what people like about it. It doesn't seem like that there's one weapon class that really is really prominent. It gives everybody a fair opportunity. Okay, I'm going to quickly set up a workaround for the audio issue that I'm experiencing. Um, I apologize. I'll talk a little bit more about Makomart. Um, I, once you have control of the stacks that are kind of at mid, especially in splat zones, I know we're playing Rainmaker, but having control of the left and right stack are crucial. You're hot, more highly elevated. It's right in the middle of the map. And um, on this stage too, there are mainly, there are two ways you could really take the Rainmaker. Um, typically the longer way is taking it on the right side. It tends to be a little more smooth. Or you could take it on the left side, um, going up, going up the side. And we're about to begin. All right, and kind of similar weapon choices on the previous game, but we do have a slight difference. Let's see who gets the early pop. It is Barracuda, but they're not going to pick up the Rainmaker. Again, you don't really want to pick up the Rainmaker until you have the player advantage. They didn't get any kills on that pop, but Barracuda is down one player right now. They're down two players with two specials. It looks like third impact does take the Rainmaker. They're going to try and push right. They do have a ray for support, but it looks like Barracuda is armored and it's going to be a little tricky. And that Stinger Ray is really, really messing up the Rainmaker. They couldn't really get anywhere from that. Two players down now on third impact. Let's see if they try and pop the Rainmaker. It looks like Barracuda's going to pop it. Nobody's really going to pick it up yet. They know if they do, they would just bring it back to mid. 4v4. 
I wouldn't be surprised if this Rainmaker resets. It looks like it's blinking. It's probably going to. And it does. Again, still 4v4. Now we do see some more specials. We see a Stingray and an Inkjet from Barracuda. Barracuda picks up the Rainmaker. Looks like they're going to try and go left side, but now they're going to go right. But again, a ton of specials. Right when you see the enemy team pick up the Rainmaker, you are using your specials to make sure that they can't progress. Two players down now from Barracuda. Which, of course, gives Third Impact an excellent chance to recapture a little bit of the map. It looks like they do. Third Impact takes it back to mid, 4v4. We see some bubbles and some missiles from Third Impact. And it's a battle at mid. It looks like the Rainmaker might be trying to push right. We don't really know yet. 3v3. Ray on the Rainmaker. Ray got the Rainmaker. And right now, 3v3. The map is pretty even right now, but Third Impact might have the slight advantage pushing up. They, are, they do have a player advantage as well. 4v3. Third Impact picks up the Rainmaker. They are down one player. They have somebody bubbling. Let's see if they can push it up further. They're still down a player, and now they're down. They're down three. Barracuda gets, gets some nice kills there. Looks like they're going to pick up the Rainmaker. Let's see if they can get farther than their 45 that they already pushed. And of course, 45 on a map like this, not the strongest lead yet. Might not be enough not to actually yet. make this loss until the very end. Oh, I love seeing a duffel. I love seeing... Oh, wait, those aren't duffels. They're tetras. They're tetras. Never mind. I don't love seeing tetras. They take me down all the time. <laughs> 2v2. It looks like Barracuda does get the Rainmaker over over that stack on on uh, Barracuda's side. Or o over on third impact side. Again, it can be really dangerous or really fulfilling if you take it that way. Looks like the Rainmaker is going to reset. Yes, it is. Now Barracuda again so picks up the Rainmaker. If just in the very first round we have a match that is that close. Not even a KO in a Makamad Rainmaker match. I know, and again, this is why a lot of people like the stage. It's super, super competitive. We've seen so many specials being used. They are doing a really great job on trying to take map control, trying to paint over enemy paint, and building up the specials. 3v3. And if you do take a look at Barracuda, they also have that vanilla splatling, which of course has Stingray. Now, you usually know the GT Ray from Tower Control, but it's actually also a thing in Rainmaker. And um, it is probably something that Third Impact is fearing a lot right now. It definitely is. I'm sure we'll see the... I'm sure we'll see Stingray more at the end of the match, depending on who has the lead. But right now, Third Impact, they do want to try and push up the Rainmaker a little bit more. They have 40 seconds to do so. But again, Barracuda doing a fantastic job on hiding and protecting the Rainmaker. They don't want to pick it up. They want it to reset. They just, they don't want anybody to pick up this Rainmaker. They just want to have map control. Two players down now on third impact. Three players down. It's like Barracuda is going to pick it up. Third impact. They are two players down now. Yeah, Barracuda go, just means if push. they want to prevent a pop... No, there's only one more chance for Third Impact to save this. They're going to pick it up, but it's very, very unsafe. Jamil has the Rainmaker, but look, Raylet, never mind, Raylet. Raylet has a Rainmaker in mid, battle 3v3. Now they need map control, so you can see Raylet just paint and paint and paint and paint. Ooh. But they do get taken down. Yes. Very, very close game. Again, wonderful job by all players. Barracuda takes the set. Yes, this is a 2-2-1 two, two, for Barracuda. And Kenitsu is the player who was hiding at the very end just to sneak out and take down the Rainmaker at the last second. Barracuda takes the set 2-1. Okay, and I'm going to do my very, very last attempt at 
uh, emergency fixing my audio. Otherwise, I might actually uh, call in another commentator. So for the first time, there might be an ink theory without me talking and I would just be in the background, um, which would have the upside of everything on the overlay side being managed a little bit better because I could focus all on that. But for now, one more try. One more try. I'm going to restart my computer so the stream is going to be down for a little bit. And see you in a second. And Falco, again, I apologize for all the all the issues that I'm trying to fix on oh, the side. Oh, no worries. Hey, no worries. No, no worries. I'll try to fill in where I can. Um, I can read off the scores of games that are already finished. Let me pull it up. Oh, actually, feet. Falco, while I restart the computer, there's literally no stream, so you can just drink some water. Oh, okay. Well, I will be here. And Snow, you just let me know and I'm ready to go. Thank you. Can you hear both of us testing one, two? If so, if, if chat if chat is going to respond with an with a yes, then um, I am I am going to be the happiest woomy in the entire world. Oh my god, that was there we go. Oh my god, it was actually, it was the dumbest mistake, it was actually just a dumb mistake at the very start of my stream where I accidentally changed one, one slider, uh, oh my god, I, oh my god, that uh, was we, scary. <laughs> we all go through the, you're not a true streamer unless you have, uh, you know, quality issues. <laughs> or well, this is issues. going to be a, a story that I will tell people until the end of my streamer life how this was the scariest uh, <laughs> the scariest near stream breakdown that I have ever experienced <laughs> oh my god okay I will um, you will you will like for the for the upcoming few minutes you will probably just hear me uh, hear me breathe in in panic and and happiness a, a mix of both. <laughs> Oh my god, I can finally talk again. Do you know how painful it is to talk? Like, I mean, I was still commentating a little bit throughout this tournament. Can you, like, imagine the pain? Like, I, I'm talking and I can hear myself, but it's, like, delayed by half a second. So every time I say something, I, um, I end up hearing myself, but, like, oh my god, it's so painful. My, like, the human brain is not made for that. I can imagine you are trying to handle, like, ten things at one time, and the last thing you want to do is focus on a match that you're not playing. <laughs> yes. You know, I mean, well, you and want to be doing it, but you know there are so many other things that you need to take care of. But, Snow, we are glad you are back. We're glad everything is working. And again, it happens to everybody, but we, we're definitely glad we can hear you and that you don't get an echo anymore. Okay, and I heard, uh, not just is this like a an, an excellent experience on fixing audio, but also there's a tournament running, isn't there? Like, I think it's called Ink there Theory is. or something? I believe How's... so, and I think we're pretty much done with round one. If we would like to read off some scores, we can do that. Oh, very much. That would be awesome. Have we actually finished this round? Because, like, in theory... Yeah, so we have this rule that, like, if at the very end of the round, which I think we have actually reached, um, if we don't have a result, um, we actually just... Oh, I see, I see. Okay, the, the staff is figuring that out right now. So, yes, if you could tell me the results that we know about so far. Absolutely. So, it looks like Pasta a la Herald <laughs> beat uh, Cam Cambrain Explosion 3-0. Innocence beat The Gamers. Um, I think... The gamers may have not played. Their name is crossed out here. Um, Critical Inking beats Evening Chickens 2 to 1. Three Smurfs in a Smuff beat Friends 2 to 1. On Crack beat Mission Instinct 3 0. Strawberry Swisher beats Healthy Diet Food Groups 2 to 1. Castillo beats Inked Dragons 3 0. Tempo defeats Pure Divinity 2 to 1. As we saw, Barracuda defeat Third Impact 2 to 1. Reflection beats Pickup Name Generator TM. 3-0. Um, I love that name. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I do too. Uh, Myopsidus? Is that how you pronounce their name? Myopsidus is still in a match against um, Pims. I, I don't know how I should pronounce their name either. Um, Pain I had such a hard time with that, yeah. <laughs> Pain beats Inkjet is great. 3-0. Revolt beats Unstable Connection. 3-0. Liquid Zone beats Ultra Persistence 2 to 1. Da Boys beats Deep Fried Octolinks 3 0. Alpha Squids defeats 60% Fish Puns 2 to 1. Looks like System of the Splash and Demon Hunters are still maybe in their third match, or we're still waiting for the last match to be reported, but that's tied 1 1. Vision beats Trinity 3 0. 
Blue Ring Kraken beats Tidal Wave 2 to 1. Squidding Good beats Sea Boys 3 0. Reptile Gang beats Wolfpack 2 to 1. Solar beats um, Aquila 3 2 to 1. Deep Sea Cephalopods beats Pit Viper Piranhas 3 0. Um, Alacrity defeats 3 Squids 1 Illegal 2 1. Uh, Yo Bro That's Crazy defeats Ink Kings 3 0. And Arctic Moon defeats a Double Date 3 0. Wonderful, wonderful. There's actually this uh, this fun story about Double Date. Um, apparently they made a typo uh, while while setting up their team and they wrote, wrote them as Double double Date, D-U-B-B-L-E Date. And um, I was 100% convinced that it was intentional and even uh, commented to myself how funny that name is and uh, wrote that down everywhere in the overlay stuff. And then like five minutes before the tournament started, they were like, wait a second, you don't write double like that. And we had to, we had to change that all off. But uh, yes, they are called Double Dead and they actually have a quite, quite a uh, cute uh, team, team logo. We are also starting round two though. And um, Falco, can you tell me, I know we have just started, but are you hungry? Am I hungry? I think I'm hungry for some chicken and fish, if that's what you're asking oh, about. Oh, I see. You saw. You saw what we're doing. I see. Wow. <laughs> wow. Okay, Falco is reading the organization Discord. I see. We well, that is, I, I guess that's that's the way to go. <laughs> In 60% fish puns. Um, sorry, so sweet or, too. sweet or savory. Today we're going savory with chickens and fish. Though, I mean, like, if it's 60% fish puns, we don't know what's up with those those other 40%, of course. Yeah, what what are the other 40%? I, I really don't know. It could be chicken. We could get a double dose of chicken or something like that. <laughs> I mean, they do say there is this urban legend that um, McDonald's fish fillet isn't actually real fish, but uh, I'm not sure if I if I should believe that. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if it is kind of like how uh, Taco Bell, you know, beef is only 30% <laughs> ground beef and 70% other. But uh, that's that's besides the point. That's not relevant to <laughs> Splatoon. Again, it looks like, yeah, Clan Blitz, Manta Maria, Splat Zones on uh, Piranha Pit and Tower Control on Sturgeon Shipyard. I'm very much looking forward to seeing the very first Clan Blitz match of this tournament. Because um, I am actually a big fan of this mode. Falco, how do you how do you feel about Clan Blitz on Manta Maria? I really do like Clan Blitz. On this stage, though, it can be pretty tricky. You know, you can have a lot of surprise pushes. And, you know, I'd say the basket's kind of in a weird position. It's kind of elevated, kind of not. I'd say sometimes it's pretty hard to recover if you're coming from spawn because the players at the basket scoring, they do have the height advantage and can easily take down anybody who's coming out of spawn. They have, they have a very, 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 there's this very, very mean position where you can like jump basically right to the, right to the basket and it's very scary. It's something you always have to look out for. Absolutely. And I believe I'm friends with somebody on 60% fish puns. So I'll go ahead and join Oh yes, well. we already have like confirmation that they are. They are all getting started. 60% uh, Fish Punts, by the way, is a team that uh, we, we are friends with. Um, so there are a few players in this team that also many of you might actually recognize. For yeah, example, uh -huh. um, uh, some of you, you might feel like very, very joyous about one of the players, for example, because Joy is actually in 60% Fish Punts. It's the team that was started by Smashman, who also used to stream, but I think at the moment he is trying to focus more on his uh, work as a as a podcaster, actually. Yeah, and I was actually just recently on his latest episode of the podcast, the Moray Tavern podcast. It is wonderful. Oh my gosh. It, um, yeah, it featured me, AoJoy, Doctor, and Eyes of Ashes, and we basically played Splatoon 2 question and answer games. It's really cool. Go check it out. Oh, oh tell me all about it. Okay, who, who won? Who won? Who? Okay, no, it should, should be spoiler. <laughs> I'm not going to give any spoilers, but definitely go check it out. Um, you can check out the information on Smash Man's Twitter account and Twitch account. Smashman, he actually, um, he's asked me before if I want to be on his on his podcast, and I told him that I felt too shy to actually be on his podcast. But I think now I'm like this was actually my my goal for for 2020. I, you know, like when all of this this whole year started, which then like turned out to be a little bit different than we expected. Um, you know how we had goals for 2020. Um, 
my my goal for 2020 was to like talk more to people within the community. And um, hi Falco, um, <laughs> to be a little bit less shy about about these things. And um, so who who knows? Maybe I'm gonna bug Smashman if he wants to have me in his in his podcast. Yeah, and as the Splatoon community continues to grow, there's more and more awesome people who we get to know and get to hang out in their streams and get to talk with. And, you know, we've been very fortunate to have a pretty wonderful community. But I'd say that's a pretty good goal going into 2021. Speaking of wonderful community, um, I am starting to fall in love with the team names of our evening chickens. But Ooh. you will have to wait just a few, just a few seconds to see what has caused these, uh, these not quite romantic, but definitely quite amicable emotions in me. Ooh, I love a, it when teams bit, have beautiful team names. It's a bit saucy, we should say. <laughs> Getting ready for game one, <laughs> round two. So, fish punt with Dr. Joy. Smashman and Squidly, whereas the evening chickens, uh, barbecue sauce, hot sauce, chili sauce, and cool sauce. Uh, you you make your pick. Tell us in chat what your favorite sauce is while we keep you guys entertained with the uh, commentary here. It looks like there is a quick power claim by Smash. Is Smash going to try and go up the side? We'll see. We do see two specials against them, and Stingray they are it really hard down though. Mid. Two players down now on fish puns. It looks like the power claim is going to go away. Evening Chickens is starting to gain a little bit, little bit of control of mid. But again, mid doesn't really mean a whole lot here if you don't have the clams. But right now, three players down from fish puns. And it looks like Evening Chickens is going to score with a team wipe. We will probably see some oh, big what points a strong here. push at the start. Now Smash trying to flank through the side. And of course, there is the Blob Lover. Blob Lover has actually way more range than you would think. One of the strongest ranged weapons in this game. But doesn't quite reach it and then does get taken down. A Evening Chickens continues to push in more claims. They get all the way to 24. Right now, they're Ooh, they're doing a really good job tossing claims over the ledge. Um, hot sauce, tossing the chili sauce. Never thought I'd say that out of context. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, but this push is over. Here. It's all the way down to 15. That was a really, really strong push. I'm actually, I was, I was worried that this might be the immediate KO because, as, as we said, this is a calibration around where matters can be just a little bit more unbalanced than you would usually expect. But um, it, it seems like the fish puns are trying to fight back now. Looks like they are, and again, yeah, we saw. I was surprised to see a split set in round number one, and we could see it here. We'll see if fish puns can carry through. It looks like they do a good job at forming the power claims, but pushing to the basket can be pretty tricky. You see, on both teams, P teams are guarding, starting to get their specials ready. Now we're seeing an inkjet by Cool Source. Inkjet a very, very fun special. If they can get a direct that, that can be a huge advantage. But it seems like it's not quite working out, so we can only go for a little bit of paint. And now we have the fish puns with two specials ready. Actually, three, three, three. But the bubbles are not going to come because the Forge Boy just got taken out. Yeah, it looks like fish puns, so, they are kind of locked by their basket. They do have a power claim. Joy's holding it in the back. Remember, Joy's the ball pointed, but it looks it's like chickens is, they are going to push up and they are going to score. Fish puns doing a pretty good job blocking the basket, but Hot oh, Sauce is hot up sauce on top of the really slick nice spot. Position. Scores some claims in, three players down. But this time, they did actually get punished for this push. You know, in the first push, like, the astounding thing was not only did they get to push the power clam, they also were able to wipe the opponents. Usually it works the other way around. But this time, we're seeing a more regular push. Oh, cool source with the inkjet. Can they get it this time? Can they get it this time? Or to get punished. They're really, really damaged. Doctor drops the power claim so he can go up, and he does get a kill. Let's see if Doctor drops back down to pick up the power claim. It doesn't look like they are. Smash is the one who picks it up. But Squiddy's going to be pushing towards the basket, but getting caught in the mist. But Squiddy is... Mm. Yeah, oh yes, he was. they were triple teamed oh, there. Really, really I hard to come back. I think Smash was waiting for the super jump there, and then it did not quite work out. Now, Smash, you can see Smash waiting in the back, even though he is playing Sploosh, because he is waiting for the moment that he can super jump. Maybe another player should pick up the power climb here, but Smash now in huge danger and does get taken down. Yeah, it looks like Evening Chickens does have control of mid right now. Fish puns, they do, do have mind? their pity claim still, but they have to wait for the right time to pick it up. They still have a minute and a half to see, uh, to see if they can score. Exactly, it's just 90 seconds left. Let's take a look at the stats, actually. You can see how Hot Sauce, it's, excuse me, Evening Chickens, I, uh, no, no. Uh, the, the, the saucy team, they um, do have more splats than, 
than fish ponds, but only by a little bit. So you can see how it, it kind of does translate in the number of spots here, um, the scores that we are seeing. And of course, that also means that it is going to be really hard for fish ponds to to uh, now succeed within the last minute, especially since they did just get taken down. Two players are down and respawning. Yeah, chickens takes more and more of mid, and we've already have four armors used by used by uh, the saucy team. Evening chickens. We'll see some bubbles and some rain, but again, that that pity claim is still standing there by the basket. Uh, three players still alive on evening chickens, but they're just they they're playing very very conservatively, and that's really what you want to do. You don't need to be too aggressive here. You just need to make sure you have your basket protected because if fish punch scores they need a lot of clams oh smash with the emergency clam there fish punch seem to be getting a little bit desperate which to be fair i would be too at this point I, uh, if you I have a sploosh you can try YouTube. yep three players down now on fish puns chickens are going to push That's up sploosh versus sploosh. a little bit they, well, they're going to score right yeah they're going to score right now and again and now you all they need is a clam in over time one clam yep and there we and go. Could you see, like, there was actually Hot Sauce was waiting, waiting just before the basket. And what they did was, it was actually quite sneaky. They intentionally did not throw their clam and waited just until overtime started so that their clam would end overtime rather than still prolonging it. Exactly, because even if you score before overtime, the game's not over. You know, your basket could close. That could give the opponents an opportunity to pick up their pity clam or, you know, get a pity clam or whatever. But if you throw a clam in when you have the lead in overtime, then the game is over. So this game, it does have quite, like, surprisingly complicated overtime rules. And, um... It is very important, at least as a level, as a gameplay level as high as this, it is very important that you are aware of the rules, that you are aware when are we going to cause an overtime for the opponents, how do we get the overtime. A lot of matches are decided by that. They definitely are. You know, you have people who really don't enjoy Clam Blitz all that much in ranked, but they love to do it in competitive and love to play it in league because it really does take that team coordination. And both teams did a good job there. Absolutely. And we are going to see another, um, well, it is one of my, it is one of my favorites. Another one that, um, some people feel a little bit controversial about and for others is, um, is a very, very, um, beloved map. We're going to see zones on Piranha Pit. It is probably my favorite double zones map. Falco, how do you feel about it? You know, I would agree with you. In general, I'm not a big fan of double zones, but I have to say this one is pretty nice. You j I think you just have that bumper that's in between the two zones. I believe it's there for splat zones. I I like it. They're very flat. It's very even, I think. But this stage is interesting because, as we mentioned, I think, in the last Ink Theory, there's a lot of quote-unquote useless space on this stage. <laughs> yes. And there are also the ramps that make for a wonderful gameplay dynamic. Suddenly you have opponents just popping up from the top, and of course um, it, it can be somewhat hard to move while you're up there. Oh, we're seeing like slightly more standard weapons by Evening Chickens. Mm, looks like it. Okay, yeah, there are two bumpers, one in each zone. I love seeing cool, uh, cool Sauce with the splash, though. That's a weapon that you usually use to farm Ink Dead, and here we go. <laughs> it definitely is. They got a very, very early special, but they weren't the first to take the zones. It looks like Fish Pump. Uh, Fish Pump takes it going first. With the drop roll. So Cool Sauce absolutely going for. Uh, for the spam here. We're gonna see a lot of Ink Chat and I will I will be watching every single one of them because I'm a big fan of Ink Chat. Two and on two right now. Really Looks well. like nobody has the zone. Fish Puns may take it over. Smash is gonna try and paint it. Looks like they do. They avoid penalty points. Two players down now on Evening Chickens. And now Kusa's going for the... I think it was a bit of an accidental reset here. There is this strategy on Inkjet where you can actually fall into the water to then jump back um, immediately. You can finish, you can end your Inkjet very quickly like that. And it is sometimes an intentional strategy. I wonder yeah, if, if we'll be able to see it throughout this match. At you. Exactly. Two players down now on fish puns. We'll see the first cap maybe by evening chickens. They are very, very close. And, and they 57, do get that cap. is... You might think, okay, 57 is like half of the points, but actually in zones 57, not necessarily that strong. It can very, very quickly rush down to zero, the counter in this mode. 
No, and as, as we've seen before, zones can be a pretty, pretty campy mode. Uh, you know, you have the lockout phase, which is really hard to come back from if the team defending the zone builds their specials and covers it at all angles. And keep in mind, we're going to see a lot of those specials right now. Fishbones, also we three are people are down. And this is going to be the deciding. Like, you might think, okay, three minutes left and everything. This is going to be the deciding stage of the match. Will fish ponds be able to return now? Or are they going to be stuck in the spawn? You can see they need to coordinate now. They need to not die. They need to not feed. Blah, blah, blah did not make you it. Know, Here's the lead for the um, evening chickens. Joy's going to try and flank. And with the ink... Oh, yes, takes down the ink jet with the jet squatcher. And then it's going to ray two players down. But it looks like fish... It looks like uh, evening chicken still has the zone... Blah, 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 going for very dangerous, uh, very dangerous flanks there. It's the second time they're going through the side. Oh, they're trying the bomb rush. That, that, that doesn't work, it doesn't work out. It doesn't work out. Even fish punch three down. This might be, this this might actually be unwinnable at this point. I don't, no, never mind. They are coming back. Smash man, can smash man take this on? This is very important, but they are a very, very, very big risk. Yeah, smash is now just running around trying to keep painting, keep painting, build the special, but it's, but it's not going to work out. It looks like Evening Chickens may take back the zone, avoiding very, very crucial penalty points. Let's see if they can do it. With the threat is 3v3. Stingray might make the difference. They're also armor ready. They need to armor right now. They might make it. They might make it. They might make it. Oh, still not. <gasps> Nobody's okay. been having the zone for a minute by now. 40 seconds or so, which is crazy in splat zones. Typically, caps happen instantly. And there finally is a cap and a wipe. Evening chickens wipes fish puns. This could be GG's. We'll see. They're in huge trouble now. At this point, I would just go to, like, save it last second. Try to not rush in until the very last moment. But again, the very last moment is now. And Smashman is down. The Smashman does not stop it. Here we one, go. Very last chance. Luckily, this is double zone. Down. Evening chickens takes it. And as Chad is pointing out, <laughs> the source is real. The chickens have no mercy. <laughs> I guess we all we will all have to buy the KF console now. Um, I'm sorry, it's Ink Theory. Ink Theory prices are cancelled. Winning team is going to win a KF console, courtesy of no, no, not really actually. But uh, I I don't know. Have you heard about it? I have. Um, I've heard it's more of a more of like a computer than a an actual console, but. Um, you know, it, it does seem interesting. If hopefully it comes with a free copy of the um, that KFC Lifetime movie that came out this month. Oh, did, did it? You hear about There's that? also the KFC game. There is what's it called? Like some it's dating like game. It's the Colonel Sandi Sanders dating simulator thing. Yes. Is that what it is? Yeah. I, I think so. I think so. And like a, a saucy, or not like a, a a spicy, like like hot sauce background image. I want to see. Um, I I don't know. I can't wait to see the first reviews of the Kentucky Fried Console. It should be good, and what should also be good is Game 3 Tower Control on Sturgeon Shipyard. Again, Fish Puns, they had, they played a little stronger in Game 2 than Game 1. Remember, they, they actually took the objective here for a little bit in this Game 2. Um, Snow, what are you looking forward to on Tower Control? I just, like, honestly, I want the tower to turn into splat zones, and then I want to see this one minute absurd exchange without anybody making any progress. I want to just see this again, and well, I mean, honestly, we're probably not going to see a surprise zones here, but in tower control, maybe you can have something like that. After all, Sturgeon Shipyard, a very, very balanced map, also one of the one of the team's favorites, uh, where on the middle, it is actually somewhat hard to to steamroll this this game. So we we, we might be able to see another like very long neutral phase in this game. Yeah, I would agree. There's a lot of walls on this stage that you know the tower kind of has to just finagle around a little bit. So this one isn't. I, I think it's going to take a little longer but I could be surprised. In general, so far, we haven't had a lot of cursed map mode combos. Um, there's actually a mild change that we have applied to the to the way the map mode combos are generated in this game or in this tournament. It used to be a way, way uh, smaller map mode pool, actually, um, where maps only were played in certain modes, whereas now any map that is played during this tournament, there are eight maps that you will see overall, um, just like the past times, they will now be played in every mode, actually. So you will see a little bit more variety. Same number of maps, but way more map mode combos. There you go. Getting ready for game three. Evening chickens up 2-0. Let's see if fish puns can get a win. Charger this time. Yeah, we do see our first charger and a hydra as well. Looks like Joy's playing the hydra. 
And who's on the hero charger? You... It looks like it's hot sauce. I had hot sauce and... today with my chicken. Um, <laughs> right now, we're still battling at mid. Again, very, very early missiles. You hate to see that. Oh, NZEP 89, very early missiles. Okay. Hot Sauce was in the charger spot, and two players down now on fish puns. Nobody on the tower. Looks like fi the the charger's gonna take the tower. Three players down now on fish puns. Very two players risky, on the tower. Very risky splash down on the side of Kultos there, but I um, I feel like they knew they were somewhat in the safe there, especially by throwing their burst bombs. And we're already seeing the tower advancing forward. Of course, huge map control advantage here by evening chickens. And again, these Tenta missiles at checkpoints are really, really brutal. You pretty much have to hop off the tower if you want to avoid those. So I wouldn't be surprised if maybe later in the game we see a GG Booyah Bomb, GG Missiles, GG any special, really. Nice, nice. Tower's going to go back to mid right now. And then you can also see on the side of Fish Ponds, like those streamer teams, they tend to go for slightly more adventurous loadouts. Um, so we're gonna ha we're having the uh, blah blah blah. We're having the ends up 89. We're having a blaster which you don't see very much. That's true. Looks like Joyce all alone at mid right now. They we do have somebody jumping to them. Squiddly does make the jump. Can can fish puns get to the first checkpoint? Here is the first chance for fish ponds to maybe recapture a little bit. They're now reaching mid. Doctor, of course, can't really paint a lot, but might be able to take uh, a chunk of uh, of squid lives if his blaster is able to hit. Here's the thing. Uh, here's the, the, the ink jet. Doctor is still alive, of course. In some risk, cool sauce does manage to survive with the ink jet, with the splash down though. Yeah, and again, they do get to the first checkpoint. It looks like Squiddly hopped on when it was a four v four, but they did have their suction rush. But right now, three players down again from fish puns. So right now, chickens, they're probably going to push up, get a little more map control, and we'll see them push the tower here and see if they can get past their first checkpoint. So they far, were so I feel close, like, they got three-fourths of the way there. I feel like Fish Pond's, uh team composition isn't really working out for them at all. They had huge changes in their team comps, and I wonder, maybe, maybe they should have stayed with their recipe in Zones. You know, it's really hard to tell if when you're already down two games, um, two games, you you might be more inclined to be an adventurous just to see what works, see what doesn't work. But again, they're Fair. definitely course, not out of it. It's it's the closest we've had out of any of these three games. Is what the score says. But honestly, if you look at the number of splats, I feel like I feel like they're just they are being outplayed a little bit here. Blah, blah, blah. So far, no splats. Hydra ends up. But Doctor on his blast are being very scary. That's absolutely true. Evening chickens, their they're, they're bottom, I'll say their bottom fragger, their six splatter is what's the most on fish ponds. Well, now the uh, blaster has seven, but they do get past the first checkpoint, get all the way to 30. And now fish ponds are going to take it back to mid, possibly stay on the tower and continue their push. This is like slightly better now for, for the map control. And Doctor, of course, he does have this ink chat. Uh, people tend to forget there is a blaster with ink chat, and it's the custom blaster. Here we go, it's the checkpoint. I, I can't believe they're actually advancing. They are, but again, that ray, you gotta hop off. You have to also hop off for the Booyah Bomb. Again, I'm sure we'll see both of these specials in just a minute as well, if uh, it continues to go this far. And that is a wipe. Evening Chicken's gonna ride this tower a little more. The 2v2 fish puns were not was not quite able to survive. They were somewhat stuck in the paint that was painted by the Booyah Bomb. Oh, nice splat there by Chili Sauce too. I'm seeing Booyah Bombs left and right. Chili Sauce really painting a lot too, I guess. Chickens just about got to their second checkpoint, but aren't on the tower. They are two players down right now. They're probably not going to continue pushing it. Looks like Cool Sauce is hiding, waiting for somebody to come out from the other side, and then they're going to strike. Let's see if they get the blaster. Oh, they're still hiding there. Maybe they'll hide for the G a jump, maybe towards the end. But Cool Taking Sauce is still Doctor just is hiding there. Definitely the, the crucial strategy at the moment in this game. And I have to admit, oh, there he is. He's in the air. And keep in mind, as an inkjet, you are somewhat vulnerable. But Barbecue Sauce does not make it get directed by Doctor. I think first direct we've seen nope, so far we... in this stream. It, I think so, too. And three players down, just about five seconds. It looks like that, that's going to be GG's. Evening Chicken's gonna GG splash down on the tower, <laughs> and that's gonna be the set. Evening Chicken's takes it 3-0.
What we have seen, uh, I would say, was a fairly dominant showing by the evening chickens. Uh, it has been it has been pointed out that uh, seeing a chicken with a knife and below it it's just saying KO is somewhat menacing. And I would I would agree. It looks <laughs> the, the KO chicken uh, is definitely <laughs> somewhat somewhat scary. It is, especially since it's a little little baby chick as well. <laughs> but a, a good effort yeah, by fish puns. Who wants to be a, a baby chick no more? Yes. And oh wow, there are still a lot of matches that are playing at the moment. Yeah, there's still a few. Um, this one, this set seems to be a little more, uh, there seems to be more sweeps than in round one. Because there are some matches or some sets that are finished, but again, still wrapping up a little bit. Taking there a look are, at there the There are team. some sweeps, yeah. But I feel like Taking... the matches that are playing, excuse me, the matches that are playing right now, they're probably the ones that um, are currently fought for the hardest. I would agree. And I mean, if you look at this game, um, Evening Chickens versus Fish Ponds, this was a, <laughs> a ritual sacrifice. Oh, no. Uh, this was <laughs> like, I mean, it was a 3-0. And I would say Evening Chickens did show us a stronger performance. But if you look at um, if you look at the second match, for example, in zones, that was exciting. Like I would like I would have a good time if I was one of the teams here. So even a 3-0, like, of course, like, in a tournament like this, like we're streaming and everything, but it's not just about the viewer experience. For me, it's also important that the teams that participate, that the teams that participate, that they have fun. And um, <laughs> I guess being being sacrificed against a bunch of hyper violent chickens can be surprisingly enjoyable. You know, it certainly can be. And like you said, zone, that zones match was probably fish puns like. That was their closest chance at taking a game. They played a wonderful job and they should probably get some wins later down the line. But it looks like right now we do have some matchups that are finished. Some of the teams that are undefeated, they're 2-0. We have Arctic Moon, Squidding Good, Strawberry Swisher, Barracuda, Solar, Tempo, Pims, Reflection, Revolt, Pain. All, all these like single word teams, those are the, always the scariest. <laughs> they are. And those are also the teams that um, that sign up the latest. It's actually like there's this pattern that I have observed in previous tournaments. It's always the teams that sign up at the very end that end up being the strongest, which means by that logic, I guess the Strawberry Swisher, they sign up three minutes before sign up closed. Um, we, we might as well just give them the, uh, the the winning the winning place because um, they they sign up so late. It have to it has to be a very dominant team. So keep that in mind for Ink Theory January. If if you want to win the tournament, you have to sign up um, un with under one minute to go, and then you're guaranteed the win. You heard it on Snowpoke's channel. Y'all, if you do that, you win the tournament, but you you you're not gonna win my heart. I'm I'm just saying. <laughs> I was <laughs> I was not having a good time uh, signing up all of those last seconds teams. And yeah, for those of you who don't know, there's so much work that Snowpoke does behind the scenes, even like before the tournament, when every whenever anybody team registers, she has to get their logos and their names coordinated so they could potentially fit on screen. Guys, you guys don't know how much work she does <laughs> every and, month. And for sometimes this sometimes I do work behind the scenes that actually does not break the audio. Um, that's that's going to be my goal for next tournament. But yes, it is. So I'm actually um, one of the one of the biggest uh, workloads for this. Oh, my gosh. Have they just all finished? I think so. I think every match is done. Yo, we are ahead of schedule. I mean, we're not ahead, but we are ahead of schedule for this round. That's awesome. That is. <laughs> yeah, especially with uh, some of the, the glitches that we had early on may have delayed us just a tiny bit. But yeah, we are done. Snow, would you like me to read off the scores? Oh, I would enjoy that very much, yes. Oh, great. All right. So Pure Divinity defeats Inkjet is great, 3-0. Revolt defeats Alpha Squids, 3-0. Castillo defeats Yo Bro, that's crazy, 2-1. The Boys beats Innocence, 3-0. Vision beats Blue Ringed Kraken, 2-1. Inked Dragons defeats Cam Cambrain. I want to say Cambridge. <laughs> Cambrain, 2-1. Uh, Ultra Persistence defeats Mission Instinct, 3-0. Strawberry Swish Swisher defeats um, Alacrity. Did I say, was it Alacrity? I believe that's how it's called. 3-0. Um, System of a Splashdown defeats Unstable Connection. 2-0, or 3-0. Three, three, oh. 
Squid and Good defeats Liquid Zones 3-0. Reflection defeats Reptile Gang 3-0. Health Diet Food Groups defeats Demon Hunters 3-0. Again, a lot of 3-0s here. Sea Boys defeats Deep Fried Octolings 3-0. Solar defeats Deep Sea Cephalopods 3-0. Barracuda defeats Pasta a la Herald 3-0. Snoobs beats Snowpoke Imposters. Hmm. 3 0. Uh -huh. <laughs> Pickup Name Generator defeats um, Myopsidus. 3 0. Tempo defeats three Smurfs in a Smuff. 2 1. Arctic Moon defeats Critical Inking. 3 0. Do Double Date <laughs> defeats the Ink Kings. 3 0. <laughs> Trinity defeats Pit Viper Piranhas. 3 0. Aquila 3 defeats Wolfpack. 3 0. Third Impact defeats three Squids. 1 Illegal. 3 0. Pain defeats On Crack 3-0. Friends defeats Tidal Waves 3-0. And as we saw, Evening Chickens beats Fish Puns 3-0. So how many of these were not sweeps? I'm counting that up right now. One, two, three, four. Four out of 26 of these matchups were not sweeps. Oh my gosh. Well, there's a reason why we call these rounds Calibration. Because, uh, because well, there there still has to be some some calibration still has to be done. And now the third round going to be a little bit more balanced, but still. So the way Swiss Swiss tournaments work, basically, you're always paired against another team that has the same win loss ratio as you have. So of course, after those two matches, um, that doesn't necessarily tell you too much. So for example, a Snow Bros team, the Snowpoke Imposters, a team that is uh, made up of uh, people actually within my computer uh, community. Um, Snowbro, um, he has been he's been making sure to get attention for the fact that he is trying to trying to create a team that apparently uh, apparently is participating under my under my trademark. Uh is what seems to be happening. Okay, okay. <laughs> but uh well <laughs> Well they're now gonna be playing against Milana's and Dude's team, so that's gonna be quite an experience. But that's actually not the, the match that we will tune in. Because there are still there are still three more rounds left, so I'm sure I am I am sure there will be enough time to be to be impostered. But there are actually there are a bunch of teams that um, you might not quite recognize the names, but you might recognize some of the names of the of the players within. For example, oh it doesn't let me click here, but there is System of a Splashdown, who have a lot of community members. So I think that's also the team that um, Shell, for example, Chattering Snow is in. But there is also... Okay, wait, just open another overview. There we go, now I can click on names. Cambrian Explosion. Falco, have you have you seen the video? No, I do you know, know the one reference? player who's... No, actually, I don't. I need to do my so... research. I just know one player on that team. I, I saw that they were streaming earlier. Uh, yeah, Connor. Connor is, is streaming. Also, who cares is streaming. So that's 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 two streamers. Yeah. I think yep. Aribon was also in the team for a while, but it seems like she's not going to be able to play. Um, it's based on um, a video called "The History of the World," I guess. <laughs> and okay. it is a. It sounds it sounds like it was made in five minutes, but it's actually an incredibly incredibly good video about well the history of the entire world, and it gives you a really really good wait a second wait a second oh my gosh i um so did it choose i posted team, something <laughs> something that should have been posted into the organizational channel i posted into the announcements so that's well it's, it's just so everyone can see who's going to be playing yeah right 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 i can delete that message if you'd like <laughs> or you're gonna leave it yeah no i'm gonna leave it and i'm just gonna okay. gonna celebrate my yeah. mistake there there you go. Yeah, and um, organizational staff was was very confused and wondering uh, what what we're gonna be streaming next. <laughs> and if the viewers are wondering what are we what are we gonna be streaming next, um, it is going to be. Um, I can tell you in a second. Um, on crack versus ultra persistence. And um, ultra persistence is a. Like so, you might you might kind of feel like like it's it's kind of the name where you feel like wait this name rings a bell, but only only to some extent. And um, it is a mashup team between the Ultra Squids and a team called Persistence, who have both of whom has have participated participated in a lot of previous Ink Theory tournaments. 
and um, I think what we are what we are seeing there is um, the first case of teams that have realized wait a second this is a really really bad date for a tournament but have uh, tried to turn that into their advantage and merged into even even stronger teams that yeah, are then since, actually able to play. Yeah, and since uh, today's Ink Theory is on a Wednesday, you know, you might have a team that typically you play every Saturday, but you could have two of your four members that they're not able to play. You know, they, they might have work, school, other obligations. So it kind of makes sense that they would merge with another team and be like, hey, um, why don't we just play together? It'll be a nice Wednesday afternoon, evening. We should have a good time. So yeah, and so, we, have, we have a lot more pickup teams this this time around. This very time much so, very much so. And and so I guess we are we are building new new friendships is what I hope is what is happening. I have even I have even heard that um, um, some people are actually having exams today and tomorrow. Ooh, so like that that's rough. that's some people who of course I guess won't be able to participate in Ink Theory. Um, if anybody if anybody of the Ink Theory participants right now um, is having an exam tomorrow. Um, Good luck. I like. I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if I am convinced of all of your all of your life decisions. But good luck. Yes. No, but I, I hope that not too many to of you. Tomorrow, too. Yeah, Falco, you did work today, didn't you? I I did a half day, and r right now it's only two fifteen in the afternoon for me. So I I did a half day, but I I still work tomorrow as well. Um, you know, a lot of us <laughs> are probably going to be working, but that's fine. We're happy to be here this time around the holidays, like the week between. <laughs> Christmas and New Year's. It's always, I never know what day of the week it is. I never know, you know, what calendar day it is or even what time it is really, but it's always a good time. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad that you have uh, decided to like take your, take your day like half off just to, just to commentate in this, in this little tournament. And um, I am sure that the viewers um, will, will make sure to celebrate your ex Wait a second. Now Falco is not in the lobby. That's unfortunate. Um, oh. Because um, they are actually on crack and ultra positions are actually trying to get started. Oh. Okay, that's fine. I'll hop in for game two. Mm, we'll we'll have to okay. see how how this is going to be communicated. Because uh, we have actually somebody in the staff who is um, like trying to make sure that everybody okay everybody makes it into the into the room. But of course, I mean, just just to be fair, like since you basically took over for the last uh, 30, 30 minutes for the first thirty oh. minutes of this tournament. Um, um, I might just, <laughs> I, I might just be able to like try to solo commentate a little bit. Um, no worries, but I'm we will standing see, we'll by see at how least this, right now. How this goes? You're standing by. Okay, that's yeah. that, that's good. That's good. <laughs> I have to say, um, I'm a little bit, I'm a little bit nervous for for on crack here because ultra persistence, of course. I mean, just listen at that name, ultra persistence. But also, again, persistence, very strong team. Ultra squids, very strong team. This might be this this might be a pretty tough matchup, but I wanna I wanna see how it goes because in the end both teams have won and lost the same number of games, and so yeah, these, by both teams are one and one, one and one. Okay, okay. So both have also lost a match, mm -hmm. and uh, well, that might change by by one soon as those two are going to clash. On crack versus ultra persistence, and we're seeing Inky at the moment. He's trying to get their their first splat here. Carefully looking at the rainmaker. Oh, that was. <laughs> but so far, we're not seeing we're not seeing a lot of snipes or anything. Both teams having a charger. Both teams having a junior. And there's our first carbon roller. Wow, Inky the sniper does get sniped themselves now by the spider scope Muna, who is now picking up the rainmaker. So whatever I said about on crack having a hard time, it's not happening. The rainmaker is being moved by them right now but only makes it to 40 to 74 and on crack is being punished immediately as three of the players are going down. Oh, oh, there just is a, a large anonymous donation. So um, the uh, donations that are happening during the Ink Theory stream, I will assume are um, meant to go to the Ink Theory price pool actually. So I will explain that in a second after this match. I know the, the message says uh, sponsored my channel, but it is during Ink Theory, of course, it is going to Ink Theory. And um, charities will be happy, but uh, we can detail on that in a little bit, because as 
uh, as is on crack, picking up the Rainmaker for a second. They have a huge amount of map advantage and also are moving forward. Still have the lead, but cannot advance further than 4074. Uh, again. We do have a very even matchup, though. 2v2 right now. And I like Omega, seeing still like somewhat, somewhat careful here. Trying to find a really good position to Shark. And I think they have... Do they have Haunt? Because they can see somebody through the walls, which I am not quite sure if they're aware of. Because if you're the player being haunted, you don't always know that the other player has haunted. <laughs> look at look at Omega, just waiting for the right moment. And here they are going. They're going now, but it doesn't. they don't get the splat. And here's Art of Resistance. First push, they do get the lead immediately. Now trapped in a really, really dangerous position, though. Do not make it further than 53 points. So they made it up this little this little street area here. And now being careful, carefully like moving backwards, just trying to be safe so that Oh no, the suction bomb. So that on crack can't move any further. So far, I think every single time that on crack has tried to move past this spot, there has been an explosive that stopped them. But now they might actually be safe. Some are very close to the rainmaker. And there's the charger. They're taking the jump. And it's not enough. Remaining 56. There's just a three minute, three point gap between the two teams. Oh, Chad, I think we're going to see this game go through full time. We already have 11 kills, too, by um, but not on, 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 on crack, which is pretty incredible. Oh, wow, that's really impressive. It's one of the one of the few players who has decided to stay stay true to the Nautilus and not switch over to mini splatting, and it seems to be rewarded so far. Panda now picking up the Rainmaker, trying to pound the paint the path again another time. Maybe they're gonna go for a different path this time, because it seems like what they've gone done before not been too successful. But they are being stopped immediately by a Timo. But map control squarely in the hands of Oncrack. Which, of course, makes it harder for Ink to just move even even a little bit further. And, of course, they also have to worry about being flanked from the sides. But they do take the risk. Do move forward. And do even stop somebody from stumbling out, from jumping out. And there's there's the flank. There's the crab. But it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. As Ultra Persistence is moving in forward. Stormy, Stormy taking down the Rainmaker down to 19 points. That is now a huge lead. And it's going to make it really hard for Oncrack. As they, so far, still have not made it past 56 remaining. And they are now trailing in map control too. You can see that carefully trying to get their specials. Three specials ready now on the side of Oncrack. Of course, that's their attempt. Oh, Tumol! Tumol going for the flag. It does not, it doesn't quite work out. They do get traded, but there's only one player left on Oncrack. They have an armor, so it's not quite not quite worth it pulling it at the moment. And we have only 30 seconds in this left, in this match left. Which means Oncrack has a little bit of time to get some map control. Samakoto getting a nice splat here with the Nautilus again. And also gets the Inkjet splat. Now two down for Ultra Persistence. This is the very last chance. Stormy trying to throw try, trying to throw some splat bomb to get some range advantage. But it's not quite working out yet. Panda being very, very dangerous though. Panda taking the front with the Rainmick. And that does get punished immediately. Does get sniped. You have to be careful with that. You want to have people in front of you if you're moving the Rainmaker. But of course, if there are only a very few seconds left, you have to panic a bit. And it's not enough Ultra Persistence winning this game. Well then, uh, this was much, much closer than I expected. Yeah, got really, really close at the end. But a good, a good finish by Ultra Persistence. And we can also see that represented in the number of splats. Very, very even. So, oh, uh, right. yeah, I said that. Yay, welcome, Falco. I said this this whole thing might end up a little bit closer than we'd like, but it seems like judging, judging on this, and keep in mind, like Rainmaker is a is a mode where you like you can get you can get KOs sometimes. Um, on, on the reef, okay, the reef is not the most like steam steam piley steam rolly steam piley steam rolly I think um, kind of kind of map, but that was an exceptionally uh, back and forth match. Whereas next, what we're going to see is Wahoo World Clam Blitz. It's the second Clam Blitz match for this tournament, and we're going to see Wahoo World this time. Paco, are you pro Wahoo World or are you against Wahoo World? I'm, 
neutral pro Wahoo World, I would say. Um, it's not my favorite map mode combo, but it's definitely got its gimmicks and it has it has its time and its place. I do like it. I'm looking forward to this match. I think I think on crack can maybe push back a little bit. I want to I want to see what else they have in store because I think they could get the win. I'm realizing the viewers are currently betting on the outcomes of this match, which I have to say is actually kind of a fun idea, of course, since there are since there is a channel currency in this stream. Um, have fun, have fun betting. But there's another thing that I'm actually looking forward to besides this match, which is uh, telling you about the prices in this tournament and also thanking um, the anonymous donor of $50 uh, into the Ink Theory prize pool. So we now have a prize pool of $100, and the way it works in this tournament is um, the players actually don't get to keep the money for themselves, and instead um, they get to choose their own favorite charities, and that's where the money is being donated to, which of course, especially around Christmas, like right now, um, is something that everybody feels very passionate about, and three lucky teams in this tournament will get to do their uh, their Christmas donations um, through the money of this, of this tournament, and... Um, based on the generous donations by uh, Spydog and by this anonymous donor. So we're having a uh, $100 price pool. Um, I also threw in $20, as I, as I do always. And that's how we how we got this pool. And again, like any, any donation during this tournament um, will extend this amount by a little bit. Or by, by a lot bit, depending on how, how, how passionate uh, uh, the, the donators are. I have to admit, Falco, um, like there were some people who said they, they would be willing to um, um, like to donate for the prices beforehand. And I told them, OK, maybe wait a little bit because this is a Wednesday tournament. Like there are probably not going to be that many teams here. So uh, let's let's get all of the all of the energy back for for the January tournament. And I am somewhat eating my words right now. Falco, do you know how many teams <laughs> we have? Oh, man, I believe we have. I don't know. Did we say twenty six matchups? So that would be, would that be fifty two teams? I know some yeah, I have already so. dropped out. But again, I can guarantee it is much more than what you expected going into oh, yes. even. I mean, twenty four hours ago. Do you remember how many teams were signed up? Uh, like twenty teams less. Exactly. So it it almost it, you could say it doubled basically within twenty four hours, yes. which is crazy. Yes. <laughs> and I had to we sign are... them all up, and I. We're getting ready for game two. Claim Blitz on Wahoo World. Oh yes, we're getting started. So Uncrack's chance to make this even. We do see a Squiffer now. Um, I'm a big fan of the Squiffer. It's such a hard weapon to use, but it is a lot of fun. Really, really satisfying when you get the snipes. I, I respect those a lot, yes. And we're also seeing two Nautili now. We do. We see it one from like each team. The Nautilus performance last match has been inspiring. So we have two Nautili, two juniors. Absolutely Somewhat balanced agree. matchup. Two charges, like both teams. On crack, on crack takes the mid first and gets two kills, pushing against Ultra Persistence. No power claim is formed yet for their team. And it looks like one clam for Ultra Persistence is going to decay, going to go away. But now on crack, it does have a clam pushing up with specials. Are they going to score? They are in. There's the immediate clam, but can they take it further? Because of course, in a competitive situation like this, it's not enough to just throw in one clam. They need one more, one more clam. They're going to make it past 60, which would be really strong. And they do it. And it looks like they, they do. They do make it. It looks like they do. Oh, now two players down. They did have a full full stack. Three players oh, down now. Oh, they're coming. And they're still pushing. 35, that's a that's a very good push. That is a really, really good making it past the 40 line. So you kind of have to, like in clamps, you kind of have to go in steps of 20. 20 is one power clamp. So now ultra resistance will need three power clamps and they still they still would not quite have the lead. And that's assuming they get them all in within one push. But again, this is competitive. Exactly. Now so it's... you can actually have that kind yeah. of coordination. Two players down now for Ultra persist Persistence, but they have two specials. They're going to retreat a little bit, let their teammates come back to them, and then maybe push with the specials. But On Crack is pushing forward. They have two clams. Can they make their way in? Three on three, they get another one in. And there's this Jumps really, really cruel jumping spot on the platform. Um on the platform in Wahoo World, where it is surprisingly safe to throw in a clam. And this is how On Crack just got another clam in. But now we can see Persistence going for the same platform. 
Unfortunately, they couldn't follow up because the Charger, who was the only one alive, they did have a power claim. They had to retreat instantly. But Ultra Persistence, they are going to push up. Let's see if they can get their first score. They have two power claims and a special. Okay, they get one, one in. in in just the Inkjet, just the Knot is alive. And that one's going to be in huge trouble once they land. Are they going to make it? They, they're not making it. They did not. So power claim, no follow up. Very, very strongly punished push here. Um, by the way, I'm not sure how many of you are aware, um, but if you're curious, like, how do you know whether this platform is going to open or not, because there is, like, some kind of rhythm to it, um, you can actually see it based on the uh, based on the signs uh, next to them. They, uh, You see at the moment it being green, but there's another push now, and this might be KO. That was a big push by Oncrack, but now they are wiped, getting all the way down to four. They just needed two more claims to take the win. Ultra Persistence is going to push up, try and get a little more map control, trying to get some clams. And they really need to make a strong push. But yeah, going back to that timer, it's the little little squid thing on the side, and it has this little bar exactly. that counts down. Because that's yep. that's apparently how street signs, what street signs look like in Incopolis. And at the moment it's saying, uh -oh. don't go, there is no platform, so they will have to go to the middle, and they do. No, looks like there is a score. Another Booyah Bomb. Can the Junior score the Power Clam? We'll see the Knot is flanking a little nice bit, but they don't have any list. clams to keep the basket open. Unfortunately, it's going to close. Ultra Persistence still have not been able to fight the right timing for their for their push. And you've got to keep in mind, again, this is a merger from two teams, so maybe they just have a different kind of communicating. Can't quite figure out clams. Who knows? Yeah, and again, Claims very, very team-oriented, but Ultra Persistence, they did win the first game. They did win Rainmaker, but Claims is very, very different. It is such a unique mode. And that's also why there are actually some teams that, like, try to specialize on Clams. And uh, maybe that is what is coming to Ultra Persistence demise right now. Here's another push potential for Oncrack. Doesn't quite make it, though, but look at the, look at the map control. Semikado, not quite making it anyways. But uh, Omega, can still, they might still be able to pick it up. Don't, don't go for it, though. Don't go for it. They're pushing back now. <laughs> Backing up. Omega was tagged. They knew that if they went for the power claim, it was going to be over for them. But again, you just need a power claim and five clams to win the game, I believe. Which, of course, means with only 40 seconds left, you are kind of inclined to just like try to try to like go for the go for this one clam and just hope the match is over so that they can't take a comeback, especially after losing the first game. But um, well, exactly. sometimes you have to be a little bit more white and actually back up and you have the it. game go its full length. Especially right now with Ultra Persistence pushing up, they are—they do have a player advantage. Three on two, they are going to push up. They do have a power claim, and they finally have support this time. So they're going to get more. Oh, they get two, two power claims in. They have forty, but two players down. Squiffer doing does everything they can to stay alive. Stormy trying to rush, but Stormy might not be fast enough, especially since there's no ink. And on crack, and in this gets match, their first win of the set, tied one to one. Ultra Persistence just was never really able to get map control over the area, like right in front of the basket. And that meant that they were they were able to, to get close to the basket, enough to throw in a few, few power clams. But then they never really were able to survive near, near the basket and actually um, make it, turn it into a persistent push. Ah, next match. You see the map mode combo? I do. Splat zones on Kelp Dome. It is such an interesting stage because there are so many times when I think we have the zone and I always forget to paint the little plateau on top. And I'm just, oh, yes. you know, I'll try and chuck splat bombs up there or something, but I'll go around the perimeter and think, why don't I have it? Why don't I have it? It is yeah, a, I, I it is actually, a one. I try, I try to paint it with my little gluggers, and usually I do get punished for it. Uh, that top area really hard to paint, especially. I mean, I guess if you're like an explosion or something, it's somewhat cozy. But other than otherwise, it's uh, it's it's really tough. It is, and especially on a stage like this that has so many greats, we might see a lot of run speed, especially from splatlings that play. Usually, that's something that you you see mostly in Rainmaker. But you're right; it's still like. As there are so many grades, like on a map like Cap Dome, on a map like um, Shell and Dwarf, it can still be advantageous even on weapons where run speed usually doesn't help you that much. Exactly, and since we're tied one one, we you know we played the the mode that arguably might take the most coordination, and we saw that we'll call them the pickup team. They they lost that one. Let's see if they can recover on game three. Zones usually the mode where coordination is not quite as crucial. 
Though that, that being said, I mean you ha do have to coordinate your your comebacks and everything. But for players that are in X rank, and um, I am pretty sure all of the players here are, um, usually you do have like kind of a good idea of what to do in a in in a certain situation. The playbook for zones is not necessarily that complicated once you figured it out. But whether our teams have that, uh, we are going to see now as this game is getting started. Let's move to Capdome again. By the way, Charlie, Game thank you for three. the raid earlier. I'm I'm sorry that I couldn't Game. say thank you because I was having a uh, having a mild 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 case of panic there. But uh, <laughs> let's go. Game three, winner takes a set. We see a junior on both teams. We see a not on both teams, and we see a chart. Wow, three of the. Four weapons are identical. Um, <laughs> the only different ones are a Ten Attack and the Neo Splash. That's pretty crazy. Well, the teams teams really really being inspired by each other. But of course, like you can you can plagiarize the weapons. If it works out for you, there's nothing wrong with that. And there's so it looks the like Oncrack does take the first cap. Now this is, a, a, I would call it a trickier stage during the lockout phase because it's such it's such a boxy stage. There are so many ways that you could flank. It's really hard to cover all areas. And we'll see two inkjets pushing forward from the knot and from oh, the double inkjet. I'm I'm not a fan of double inkjet to be honest. It never really works out. And this time they did use it to pain, so of course that kind of well at least it gives them some pain advantage. But you can see they didn't really get any spats out of that. It's very hard they to synchronize like two inkjets. On crack keeps the zone, avoids the penalty points, and just gets past 50 remaining. And you're absolutely right the there. Junior. It's a very, very favorable way to push in through middle. Through this little block. It's so much quicker, but it's it, it is always hard, and we saw them trying to flank from all directions. Oh, let's see if they can cap, let's see if Ultra Persistence can at least Oh we know they're three players down. That's gonna be really hard. Seven, right, six, five. Inkline. And, on crack and that was a short win. match. That was. Was that what you were expecting, Snow? Uh, that was how I was expecting all matches to go, but for ultra persistence. So um, I am. I am now learning that uh, on crack is a team that is very strong. I never heard of them, but uh, definitely uh, now have entered my memory. And I will next tournament. I will make sure to uh, consider them to be one of the the monotorious games. I mean, look at that team logo. It's so scary. <laughs> will they be a team that we see in the top cut? We will find out. We are actually halfway through the Swiss stages right now. We are. We've reached round three. Next one going to be round four, which also means that um, there uh, will be the first the first swap out in the background. Um, so for this round, we actually had seaweed. So, so for the first for the first for the past three rounds, we had seaweed um, doing the overlays for their for their very first time. So. Um, Thank you so, so, so much for that, Seaweed. Um, if you would like, chat, um, wait, I'm gonna, I don't have the command ready this time, but I'm gonna post a little, a little Twitter link for you. Oh, actually, wait a second, I know what I can do. In the coming up screen, there are uh, the accounts, the social media accounts of all the, the background staff people, and Seaweed just followed, uh, just got to, uh, finished their task, and they have a wonderful Twitter, because Seaweed actually, um, one of the artists who provided artwork for the past Ink Theory, um, as as one of the prices and so please 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 make sure to follow seaweed's twitter yes absolutely wonderful art seaweed thank you again we appreciate it and again to all the support staff in the background you can see their names in the bottom of the screen the bottom right uh thank you guys all you might not see them in chat you might see them in chat but they are working hard behind the scenes it's actually this time um i i was worried that like we might not like like one thing of course is like I was right there might not be enough participants but then of course like for the staff members like just as as you said like you um you had to take half a, a, off half a day at work um it's it's tough to find the time and so um it was looking as if the staff members had to do overtime but then luckily uh seaweed jumped in and said hey I want to I want to help and um that made things luckily a little bit a little bit easier for us and this entire tournament a bit smoother, which after the audio issues at the start was very much what we needed. So um, excellent. I'm very happy about that. And yes, of yes. course, among the staff also, Witty and Hakan. 
they are part of the communication staff. So they're actually the ones that you will get to interact with a lot if you um, actually participate in the tournament. And sorry, Falco, yes. you were about to say something. Oh, no, I was going to say, yeah, Witty's sending out the notifications to all the team captains about um, about each round starting and when they should be finished and whatnot. So thank you again, Witty. We appreciate it. I sadly had to um, limit Witty's excitement a little bit this time because um, instead of pinging at everybody during the tournament, um, instead she only gets to ping the captains. So... Uh, <laughs> It's always like, as a streamer, I don't know if you feel the same satisfaction, Falco, but as a streamer, it's always so much fun to ping everybody. And then it gives you the little warning. This message will be sent to 600 people. Are you sure you want to do that? And then with, with much satisfaction, I press yes. And then everybody knows. And yes. uh, yeah, this time we're only <laughs> pinging the captains. <laughs> yeah, it's... Uh... It's it's harder to set up the captain's role. I know we you had a, a lot of last minute assigning of of that, but it's you know again to prevent spam and players who don't necessarily need to see those notifications. It helps limit that. But I do know the power and excitement of tagging uh, at everyone. Oh wait, there's a little um, Falco question. When I say gear can use the same can change their gear does that include weapons because i think gear includes weapons um but oh, i will specify that in the next what, what do you think tell me tell me Falco. honest honest opinion you know yeah if you're saying gear as a whole i would say that could include your weapon now i wouldn't be mad if somebody didn't think it you know um but you know it, that might be something that should be specified later on yeah, that definitely goes into the to-do list. Um, I sometimes I mix up the terminology. Like, for example, there is this um, uh, set match game, and I always, I I always mix up match and game. Cause, oh like, yeah. They 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 kind of they kind of sound like the same, but match yeah. is actually like the entire thing. Mm -hmm. Or like this, like then and then on the other side, like match and set are also the same in the Swiss round. And, oh my gosh. They are. Well, it sounds like you need to play some more tennis then. Oh yeah, you maybe to, that's... You, oh no, please. You need please, to play some more uh, Mario tennis or, or something like that. Oh no, the tennis counting system is the worst. <laughs> I hope we're never going to do that in, in Splatoon. <laughs> I remember that's how I learned how to uh, keep score in tennis was through Mario tennis. And I mean, honestly, the same with golf. Uh, the original Mario golf, I think on the uh, N64 was uh, how I, you know, learned about birdies, eagles, um, bogeys, and stuff like that. Oh, I learned about that by, um, through through your requested stream, actually. Um, golf oh, with golf friends. Golf with your friends. Yeah, that's yes. a wonderful game. Or, you know, people were, who were my friends back then, and then thanks to golf with friends, uh, were, of course, my mortal frenemies. 40, <laughs> 40 love to Snowpoke, yes, yes, yes. I was, I was so bad at that game. It's a hard game. It, it's it's a different, but it's it's fun to just mess around with friends. That's why it's called golf with your friends, you know. Mm -hmm. No, but I, I have to say, like, I mean, there were, like, what surprised me is, um, what what surprised me is that there, like, the maps were actually very varied, um, but also my computer couldn't deal with it at all. You like, you would be you would be surprised how a golf game can actually uh, have such a stranglehold onto your computer. And like oh, it takes goodness, a lot of optimization, yeah. which, for example, in Splatoon, I'm very glad that we that we have. Oh, this this song is very loud, isn't it? Oh, whatever. Who 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 needs to hear me, anyways? Um, <laughs> no, I think it's it's we're, we're back to normal now. We actually have a few new songs in this tournament um, that Ooh. weren't in in the past tournament. Um, thanks to Magic Magic Jellyfish, because uh, Magic she's actually like she seems to play a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh. And there is a Yu-Gi-Oh game that takes place in Egypt. And that's of course that comes with exactly the kind of music that you would that you would want in this in this tournament. Oh also the this round is over. Paco, could you tell us the results of the matches that we have seen? Yeah, absolutely. Let me pull it up. Um a few more splits this time. And it looks like one of them is still going on. Maybe we're waiting for a score to be reported. But we have the boys beating Tempo 3-0, um, as we saw on Crack beating Ultra Persistence 2-1, Sea Boys beating Trinity 2-1, uh, Cambrain beating uh, Myosip My I I, me I like messing it up more and more as we go. Um, Myopsidus 2-1, to 
reptile game. I think game so. It's be- a- be- okay. <laughs> I actually like that beating- name a lot, but sorry. I it, it is it is nice. It's it rolls off the tongue when you say it correctly. <laughs> uh, reptile gang beating Double Date two to one. The Ink Kings beating Mission Instinct three zero. Pure Divinity beating Pasta a la Herald three zero. It looks like that one was a partial forfeit, but we might get more info on that. Um, Innocence beating Alpha Squids two to one. Vision beating System of a Splashdown 3-0. Reflection beating Solar 3-0. Um, Alacrity beating Third Impact 2-1. Three Squids, one Illegal beating 60% Fish Puns 3-0. Barracuda beating P- Pims, Pins 3-0. Arctic Moon beating uh, Castillo 3-0. Revolt beating Strawberry Swisher 2-1. Aquila beating Critical Inking 3-0. Pain beating Squidding Good 3-0. Ink Jet is great, beating Deep Fried Octolings 3-0. Liquid Zone beating Inked Dragons 3-0. Seep Deep, Deep Sea Cephalopods beating Demon Hunters. Or no, that game is still going on. Reported 0-0. Wolf Pack beating. Oh, actually, I I reported it as a tie, I think, because there was no result. Oh. Gotcha. Okay. Wolf Pack beating Pit Viper Piranhas 3-0. Blue Ring Kraken beating Evening Chickens 2-1. Yo bro, that's crazy, beating Pickup Name Generator TM 3-0. Tidal Wave beating Unstable Connection 3-0, Three Smurfs and a Smurf beating Snowpoke Imposters 3-0, and Friends oh. beating Healthy Diet Food Goops 3-0. Oh. <laughs> oh well. Oh well, we would go healthy, healthy diet. I, I love I love some of these names. Healthy diet. I'm sure they will they will they will make it past past the friends too. It's so hard, like if you have crew pressure and stuff, you know it's like, well maybe maybe I'll eat some of some of that pizza, I guess. Yeah. And it looks like we have seven teams who are still undefeated. Seven teams who are 3-0. That is Pain, Reflection, The Boys, Vision, Arctic Moon, Barracuda, and Revolt. Lots of teams with short names. You're absolutely right. And a Strawberry Swisher seems to have lost a, a match so far. That was the one we were looking for um, last time since they were the last team that... Oh yeah, they lost against Revolt. I see. Whose team is... Well, let me check out some of those names actually. Now, like if you if you already win so many matches, um, let me see who those players are. Lots of players that I don't recognize. Excuse me. If you win lots of matches, you get looked at by Snowpoke. Oh yes, 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 that's exactly, <laughs> exactly. Um, Kofer, Olim, Funny, Yariku, Termi, and Toyoban. Um, I have to admit, I don't fully, I don't fully recognize those names. Um, need to need to learn more about about the competitive scene. But they they seem to be doing really well right now. But as far as the next match is concerned, um, I I finally took the bait. I mean, like, like, with a name, like if you name your team Snowpoke Imposters, like I I try to not be partial, but like, I I need my I need my memes. I don't know, Snow. And... Some some uh, players on this team are looking a little sus. But we'll find out. I would, I would, I would say so. I hope they're not going to be venting. We'll see. Currently, currently waiting for them to open up the lobby. But uh, yes, in fact, this match is going to be something that we will know about soon. At the moment, okay. Let's go back to the to the starting soon screen. But it is going to be um, Inkjet is great versus uh, Snowpoke Imposters. So both teams that I think uh, were like I mean I know about about the Snowpunk imposters of course them being a pickup team uh, made up of people in my stream so um, I'm admitting <laughs> for the Inkjet team I love Inkjet it's one of my favorite weapons I think Inkjet can so, be super super deadly when you have really good aim and snow I know you play Guga, Glugas you kind of rely on your aim it's a hard weapon I think it's I think it's a hard special too. It is so, so satisfying to get a direct with Inkjet. Um, I had this amazing situation a few weeks ago, I think, where I got a quad in the air with an Inkjet and um, my life has been fulfilled with happiness and satisfaction ever since. That is incredible. That's amazing. I think I actually put it into one of my YouTube videos just to just to brag about it. <laughs> So Snow, I don't know if you saw earlier, we had a poll going on about this upcoming Splatfest. Uh Team Mushroom and Team Star. Can you give us any information on what you are going to do for Splatfest? 
Oh, I'm going to be team superstar. Um, I am tall enough. I would like to, I, I would, if there was a pocket star, I would totally be that team. But um, since a pocket sized snowpoke seems to not be happening, um, I will instead take the invincibility. How about you, Fargo? See, I actually chose team mushroom. I, I, uh, I chose team mushroom because I think the star is just kind of overpowered. They're, the star's kind of boring. You know, you can rush through your enemies and that's all fine and dandy, but man, a mushroom, you, you actually have to think about how you want to utilize it. You know, you're bigger. I'm looking into this way too much, obviously, but <laughs> the star, I think the star's just so boring. I am on team mushroom, so go team mushroom. Fargo, if you take the star, you're literally sparkly. Do you know, do you know how many five-year-old girls dream of being that sparkly? Of course, there are also lots of five-year-old boys, I'm sure. But in particular, lots of five-year-old girls, like, that would be so glad to be sparkly. And, you know, maybe, maybe I would, I, like, honestly, honestly, okay, I mean, invincibility is nice. But do you know what you can do if you are all sparkly like that? You can take the super mushroom, then apply to be an, a teacher, sorry, super, superstar, apply to be a teacher in a kindergarten, and then impress all the five-year-olds with your sparkliness. You're going to be, like, everybody's favorite teacher. But also with the mushroom, you are big and strong. Isn't that what we tell little kids that they should be growing up, you know? Drink Do your we... milk to build strong bones, be big and strong. Oh. I am on Team Mushroom. No regrets. Oh, yeah, you're right. I mean, that, in that case, though, you should be you should be Team team Milk, Team... Uh, was there a spat fest about that before? I'm not sure. Team Drink I... Your Milk and Put a Lot of Butter Under Your Bread. <laughs> was that a spat fest? Wait, what? I, I, it I'm, should I'm be, it should gang. be. I don't know what Milk Gang is, but I, I do like milk. Um, please, please make sure to follow Milk Fiend, by the way. Um, oh, yes. I wonder what is stopping our teams at the moment, though, to open open up the lobby. But of course, oh, we can check by now if we have. There we go. We have our, our team names. And um, yeah, the Snowpoke imposters are doing an excellent, excellent job at their impostering, even taking my, my Discord logo. So is it an identical logo or did they, did they do like any alteration to it? They honestly, they should have. They should have like. <laughs> Draw like a little uh, But no, it's or an something. it's an identical identical logo. Yeah, right. I did that okay. actually in my Splatoon three video. I'm not sure if like many people called it out because it was somewhat, somewhat hard to notice. Um, but there was like one section where Pearl was dancing, and I was at the same time I was talking about people want a male idol. So I put a must a mustache on Pearl, and I actually meticulously made sure, like while she was dancing and hopping around like crazy. That the mustache is always exactly um, where her where her upper lip was uh, for for perfection. So um, I am now an expert in attaching mustaches to people where they they should not be. So um, everybody in chat who is not planning to grow a mustache soon, uh, please please stay away from me because I because uh, because you know. And if you have a Snowpo Max IQ, um, go ahead and spam that too. So Snow does have a mustache sometimes, just sometimes. Oh. Yes, if I if I turn into Einstein, um, Snow for Max IQ. In fact, wait a second, I can show you. It should now be in in chat. Yes, if you, I think it's like my my ten thousand bit emote though. So um, not sure, not sure if there will be lots of people. I I realized like I am not a big fan of Kappa. And yet here I am with Snowpo Cult and Snowpo Max IQ having two emotes that are kind of like Kappas. Well, okay, Ridley I really has can't there. find this lobby. There yeah, we go, the Ridley. We're still waiting on uh, joining the lobby. It seems like we're having a little bit of trouble. But again, looking forward to this, we have Tower on Makamart, Rainmaker on Manta Maria, and Clams on Piranha Pit. We did it! I found the lobby! It exists now. All right, hopefully I can hop in too. <laughs> yes, so this tournament so far has been much, much, much smoother with the with the lobbies. Oh, password is incorrect, okay. Well, I guess we're still having issues with the lobbies. <laughs> <laughs> we need Dodo codes in this game. But uh, yeah, I have been do. making sure to bug the teams much, much more than last time to make sure they sent me requests, friend requests. And I do actually have like everybody from Snowpoke Imposters are in my friend list. Um, but setting up the lobby is a challenge. 
It is. It certainly is. And again, having uh, Dota codes or battle arenas similar to Smash, you know, potential things that could be in a future Splatoon, uh, future Splatoon game. And Snow, I believe you have a recent YouTube video that may uh, may talk about what you would like to see in a future game. Is that right? I should totally have I should totally have added that to my to my video. That's not so good. Like it's just like I wrote the script like half a year ago. I know you want me to share for my Splatoon 3 video, but let, let me first point out how many things I missed in my Splatoon 3 video. Um <laughs> I should have totally added that. And uh yes, if you are if you are curious about my ideas for Splatoon 3, which I'm not sure is uh well, they they exist. I don't know what people think about them, but I do have 200 upvotes, so um uh, if you disagree with my my questionable ideas of adding items to Splatoon, then uh, yeah, you could uh, you could be one of the first downvotes by watching my video. So let me send you the link in this in in a Twitch chat for a second. Okay, it should now be in Twitch chat unless I unless I don't know don't know I my own it. commands. Yay! Yep, still waiting on the lobby. It seems like um, Snow found the lobby, but the password is incorrect, so we're trying to work that out. Yeah, this will actually be one of the cases where we get to see the um, the rules on on matches that don't quite make it in time um, during within our stream. Um, do you, like, Falco, can you explain to us the, the system, like, this uh, this somewhat complicated system on how disconnects or, like, matches that start a little bit late are managed during this tournament? Yeah, so it could kind of go hand-in-hand hand with DCs, but I'm scrolling up to find where those rules are. Because <laughs> um, um, I, I so, don't know them off the top of my head. No, of course, of course. So basically, the somewhat odd thing during this tournament is that if you... Ah, oh, lots of people that sent me their friend request late, but I'm, I'm also trying to figure this out on the side. So um, if you um, aren't able to finish all matches in time, then this, um, like, then basically um, you don't actually play all matches, and instead the results are going to be made based on the result on the matches that have already been played. And if there are disconnects, you don't play the you don't replay the match immediately, and instead you skip the match and continue to the next oh, the game. Excuse me, you don't play the game immediately, and instead you skip it and go to the next game, and then only replay the previous one if there is enough time. So that's the the somewhat complicated system around that. Yeah, basically skip it for now. If you can get to it, you get to play it. But again, that's to just kind of speed up the process. We we don't want to prolong anything and. Again, the more teams we have playing Ink Theory, the more opportunities there are for things to be prolonged a little bit. And we want to try and escalate it, get you guys through here, because it's already a long day, you know? Um, mm -hmm. we, Snow has had multiple people ask about, oh, could this be a two-day two, two day event? But, you know, I, I'm like you, I like keeping it just one day. You know, you don't have to reserve too much time out of your weekend or weekday in this case. Yeah, the tournament is capped to 64 participants, so it can stay as a one-day tournament. I can imagine doing a longer tournament, like maybe like once a year or so, like a special, a um, like Grand Assembly, basically. Ink Theory Monthly Grand Assembly is like something that keeps floating around in my head. But um, so far, I am, I am plentifully uh, entertained by hosting the one-day tournament. Okay, we might actually be able to make it into the lobby now. Wait a second, it's yeah. saying joining private battle. We did it. Uh, they forgot to add Wait. you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> they were so oh, excited well. when they saw me. Uh. <laughs> like, I literally, my name popped up in the lobby and it was like immediately pop <laughs> hostess deciding teams. Here we go. So, um... <laughs> Well, Snow, you enjoy I that will... one. <laughs> oh my gosh, let's go! I mean, I can, I can, I can do that. I will, I will need some water go. because apparently I get, I get like overly, overly excited um, when I solo commentate because, like, like you know, I like I try to make up for the lack of a second commentator by just shouting and like t t talking way too fast. So um, I will take this chance to drink some water, which I will desperately need. There you go. I'm trying to join. I'll let you know once I do. Joining. We will be playing uh, Tower Control and Macro Mark, by the way. So we've seen Macro Mark before. I think that was Rainmaker. 
But now instead of Me Rainmaker, so. it's going to be the tower that will be moving all across the stage. Yeah. And I'll take this opportunity to uh, refill my water, so I'll be back very soon. Oh my gosh, drinking water after two, thousand, uh, two hours of Ink Theory feels so good. <laughs> it certainly does. I'll be right back. How long is this round anyways? There are 16 minutes left in this round. Okay, this is gonna be, this is gonna be fine. Anyways, we are getting started with the first game, Tower Control in Makomat. Inkjet is great versus Snow Imposters. I'm gonna see how many Inkjets there are this time. Okay, I know all the Inkjet weapons. Oh, Glugas. Okay, let's go. One, two Inkjets. We've got two Inkjets. The Nautilus and the Splash. Whereas on the side of the Snow Imposters, we do also have one Inkjet with the Glugas. So I hope we are going to have a lot of in-air battles. And uh, yes, the players in these teams. So we have Snowbro, we have uh, Oddish, we have Vlad, we have... Um, Viv seems to be um, seems to be waiting and like hopping in in the next match. And who is our, our fourth player? Is uh, Stan, yes. Stan, Vlad, Oddish, um, Viv and Snowbro. So all of those might be names that you could recognize. So far, Matt's starting a little bit slow. We're 40 seconds in, but there are now three people down on the side of the Snowpoke Imposters, which is, uh, of course, uh, gonna make it really challenging for them to return. Snowpoke Imposters having a particularly hard job here being a being a pickup team of players that like don't necessarily have that much competitive experience. So they are facing an uphill battle here. Or like I get a downhill, I guess a downhill battle because that's where the tower is. And Stan did make it onto the tower, but like incredibly, incredibly dangerous. Jump right into the enemy ink. And did in fact not make it, not make it very long. It, they seem to be feeding a tiny little bit here, jumping into enemy ink a bit too much, and don't make it back to the zone. Oh, those snipes! Those snipes! So did you see that? Um, I think it was Oddish with the roller um, jumping into. Jumping close to the tower, because of course at that point like, you, you have to be like somewhat just desperately jump in. And um, they, I think it might have been Vlad actually, and you do get uh, punished immediately. Uh, so yes, that was a uh, that was a, a slam dunk. All right, it looks like I'm in now. Excellent, excellent, Falco. I'm not sure how go. much you could experience. Yeah, this is like the good news about the good news about this is that. Um, if this if these matches are all that quick, then uh, we actually get to play all three of them despite there not being that much time. So I'm honestly like, <laughs> I mean, sometimes you can like you can enjoy like dominant gameplay, and this was certainly dominant by Inkjet is great. Um, I mean, honestly, we kind of should that see, should have seen that coming considering that they clearly know the best special in this game. Um, Inkjet currently actually kind of in the meta. Faga, what's your favorite special? Well, you know, playing a junior, I really do like ink armor. I know ink armor is ah. pretty polarizing, but the Tenta missiles are fun too. You know, I, I use Tenta missiles when I use my K shot and spamming Tenta missiles, I'll tell you that that is a lot of fun, especially on a mode like power <laughs> control, spamming at checkpoints. It can be pretty deadly. Yes, yes. I've done streams before where I've spammed Tenta missiles. And let me tell you, I have gotten feedback from my viewers about that. People have feelings feedback. about that. Oh, yes, feedback, feedback. So at least uh, with Inkjet, um, like it is considered, I think, to be a somewhat, somewhat respectable special. But that also tends to, yeah, zombie, I saw that snipe. That tends to, um, it tends to change very quickly depending on what is popular at the moment. So maybe I shouldn't point out too much how popular Inkjet is at the moment, because uh, in that case, people will quickly uh, start to dislike this special. That in uh, a strong player's hand can be quite, quite devastating. Now I stepped away from that match. Um, did every every player on Inkjet is great use an Inkjet weapon? Actually, no. There were only two Inkjets. It was oh, okay. one Nautilus and one Splash. Ah, gotcha. Okay. And then the well, we'll Snow Imposters. Excuse me. And we'll see what we see uh, on Rainmaker mate, to Maria. Um, Rainmaker, like. Tower control tends to be a very difficult mode for Inkjet, to be honest, because like with the tower already, you have like this extra, um, this extra, ob this objective that is like stopping, stopping your shots already. And like you would think that uh, shooting an Inkjet onto the tower is a good thing, 
but it actually isn't necessarily. It's like really hard because the hitbox is very awkward. So on Rainmaker, it's a little bit better because like at the... Sorry, the music kind of sounds like there's somebody humming in the background. I'm like, what is Falco doing? <laughs> um, <laughs> but um, in the end, like a Rainmaker, if you get that one direct on the Rainmaker, then you've got you've got what you need. Definitely, and especially so, with the uh, the pull on the tower too. You know, it, it, you can avoid an inkjet. You just gotta just gotta find the right angle and where you want to hide. Exactly, exactly. And with your rainmaker, that uh, might not quite be an option. So we do see we do see Glugas on the Snowpo Imposter team. Yes, we do. Same weapons, but Viv have swapped in and is now playing Dapple Doolies. All right. Inkjet is great going with double end zaps, by the way. Interesting choice, especially Again, for Rainmaker. Early missiles from the orange end zap 89. Three on three right now. Battle at mid. It looks like Inkjet is great. Could take, pick up the Rainmaker pretty soon. They they definitely have the advantage, but they want to push forward before they pick it up. Three and this time three. we're starting a little bit more even. I'm also realizing um, Inkjet is great actually has you snipe in their team who is a very strong sniper that I run into a lot in X rank. Yes, I do as well. Three players down from the imposters. Inkjet is great, is going to get the pop. They are going to maybe pick up the Rainmaker. Yep, Lucas picks it up. They take the lead. We see a Stingray. I think it is sound here for the uh, for Inkjet is great to play a little bit more aggressively. Though then again, like they the do have weapons pick that... Up the Rainmaker. Viv in huge danger though. Like it is very hard for Stone Process to get the map control here, having the less painty weapons. It oh, is. they're going for the lead. I see. Yeah, the imposters did take the lead. That you know, the, it's hard to kind of make it over that little jump there. But when you do, you can get quite a push, which is really nice. They needed that. Fifty-seven to seventy-seven. Inkjet is great. Is going to pick up the Rainmaker again. It looks like they're going to take it to mid, but the curl. Ooh, curling bomb just misses them. Two players down now on the imposters. And it looks like they're going left, going up the wall, going around. You oh, don't see this often in Rainmaker, but it seems to be working out really well. Snow Imposters really weren't in a position where they could defend against that well. That's always an incredibly unexpected mm -hmm. drive to take. And you can see that Lucas is actually making it very, very close to the pedestal. Just remaining eight now. They did. Yep, remaining eight. Ooh, the Imposters try to pick up the Rainmaker, but are down immediately. And right now, if you're the oh, Imposters, nice you want to pop this Rainmaker, you might not want to pick it up but you do want to pop it you know you though. need to get it out, out of there but i'm pretty sure they wanted that ko and that did not happen now snow push down they did just jumping out the rainmaker which i think probably the thing to do it. here yeah and this is one of the stages where you can reset it there are some where you can't but um you know pros and cons of certain stages map control really goes to inkjet is great right now they they definitely have it they don't need the push yet but like you said i wouldn't be surprised if they are going for the ko wow what a snipe yeah snowpick imposters can't really catch a break here struggling as much as i do in some of my matches and there is no bro no rainmaker is a pretty challenging mode for me it, I, I struggle with it but again, map control is, definitely because the inkjet is great right now. It is actually my favorite, so I hope that the snow imposters are enjoying Rainmaker as much as I am, as as I do usually. And you snipe been struggling a little bit more than than before with their snipes, but as long as they're able to keep the map control, it doesn't really matter that much if they get their snipes. And if you look at mid, like everything is just owned by inkjet is great. Stan going to grab the Rainmaker. Stan does grab it, gets over the ledge, but is down immediately. Again, if you look at the map control on Inkjet's great side, take a look. I can see where the end zap is working. They are building their missiles. <laughs> I'm kind of, I'm kind of cheering though for the Snowflake Impostors to survive the last, the last 80 seconds of this match that I'm now saying. But look at the number of splats here, the end zap and the charger with 13 splats each. I didn't notice you snipe with the charger was getting that many splats. You know, I didn't notice either. That's what you really, really want with a sniper. You know, their goal is to snipe. You know, you're not really painting with it. So they are doing a great job so far. Just under a minute left now for the imposters to make a good push. I'm impressed by how aggressively they're playing though. They're like spending a lot of time in mid. Okay, Stan 
trying for the jump again, but does get just barely stopped with the very last shot that could hit with the ends up. And then the 1v1 battle Viv versus the ends up. Not quite, not quite to Viv's advantage. I think actually technically, um, technically, Dooley's would win that interaction. So um, very, very risky for um, for the ends up. But they still managed to make it past this interaction. Now we've only 20 seconds left. It is. You know, I don't, I don't picture Inkjet picking up the Rainmaker at all during this push, but it, they are down, they are down. <gasps> no way, that's a complete team wipe. The okay, imposters Oddish. are taking it. Oddish, paint, 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 paint. Let's go, but okay, Vivus going there. But the Charger, the Charger is so much trouble. Oh, just sniped by you, Snipe. Oh my oh, goodness. no way. That's a that's a situation where you need to be so patient as a Rainmaker. It is so hard. You, you don't want to get ahead of yourselves, but you know, you're like, oh, I can go, I can push. But you snipe being the fantastic charger they are, snipes the Raymaker with two seconds left to end the game. And you can also see Snowbank Apostas' ranks a little bit higher in Rainmaker than they are in um as they Excuse me, pressing the wrong buttons here, as they were in tower control. Um, but that being said, Inkjet is great, is taking this game. And also, as per our time rules, we actually do not have time for the for the next round in this game. So um, usually the way I do it is that if, if a match is streamed, I I try to um, like cut them some, like give them some extra time. But I am also um, trying to set a good example here because um, it's actually like in a tournament as large as this is something that we realized during our um, our previous tournament is that um, like since there are so many teams, you have to be really, really, really careful with the timing and absolutely make sure that there aren't, uh, that like teams aren't playing longer than they are supposed to, because otherwise the entire tournament is just going to take way, way, way longer. And yeah, I'm saying it was a really clean, clean snipe at the end. So let me quickly communicate that to the staff that um, this yeah. match, basically the way it works in that case is um, since we can't like enter incomplete matches within Battle Pi, we just complete the match based on the previous results. So this would now be a 3 0 for Inkjet is great. Exactly. With a tournament like this, you're only as quick as, I'll say, your slowest matchup. So escalating the tournament, you know, getting on to the next match, super, super important. And as we set up around five, again, we're communicating the message to the uh, to the staff. OK, excellent. The staff, the staff was actually faster than me. I was just about to just about to describe of like uh, how, how things could look. And that is exactly. <laughs> Good. I, smart, smart stuff. I'm, I'm very glad. I'm very glad. Because of course, like, um, like I write, I write the rules and stuff, so I'm aware of like all the, um, all the details. Uh, but apparently, like, so, so is the stuff of this tournament. Everybody like being so well prepared. I am, I'm glad. I have to admit, like, if I was, if if I was, if I was staff, I would, uh, I, I would like, like read the stuff that I that I have to know about and like nothing else because I'm like a little bit messy sometimes. Um, but uh, the people that have decided to support me and like you know us during this tournament um, are very very motivated, and I am I am glad to to see how 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 well that is going. Exactly, the staff so, members are making our job really easy by uh, by helping with everything behind the scenes. Again, all the stuff with the overlays that's not Snowpoke doing it. That's uh that's that's our organizational staff team. So. If you think Snow is doing multiple things at once, but um, the overlays is not one of them. So thank exactly. you, Steph. So there are a lot of like preparation tasks. So it's basically, it's a, um, it's a website that the staff can manipulate. And so they, uh, they then like edit all of those text fields. Um, there's actually, oh, no, I am switching between the overlays. Like what I can do is I press a button and kaboom, now it shows the schedule. But what I don't do is, um, is change the text. So, for example, when it says "time up" or when it says "three o," um, those things I, um, I I don't I don't change. I, I could if I wanted to, but um, no. <laughs> like I can I can put memes into this overlay, but um, that's what we do before the tournament, not during the tournament. <laughs> yeah, I, I tried to post the entire script of the B movie as one of the teams, and it probably. I know. Broke... <laughs> I had to remove. I had to remove the script of the B movie out of the team list later on because everything you added automatically gets added to the team list. And so I had to clean that up. Oh, I didn't know it automatically got added. Oops. Oh, well. 
Um, yeah, um, it was just because I I forgot to uh, to tick that that particular that, that particular checkbox because I had to write to rewrite the entire overlay after losing certain files, and so um, there were just a few a few things that still had to be added. By the way, um, the matches so far like they're actually we are. Um, surprisingly far advanced. It's only one game that is currently still going. Myopsidus versus 60% fish puns. Yeah, and they have the one only more. Ones finishing up. Exactly. So um, let's take a look at the results actually so far of these rounds. Um, we've got still one, two, three, four teams that are undefeated. We do Vision, Reflection, Arctic Moon and Barracuda. Remember, we saw Barracuda in the very first round. They looked very, very strong. So they we did. wouldn't be surprised if we see him in the top cut. Do you do you remember who they played against? They played. Um, let's let's check it out. It was. I'm scrolling down. Okay, I don't remember. Oh, Evening Chicken. No, no, no. That was that was Fish Puns. No, cause, I, hmm. Yeah, because Evening Chicken won won that one. Yeah. Okay, and also the last match has just ended in time, so I am very happy about that. And um, in the background, as we are announcing the, the other results, um, round five is actually about to start. Round five is about to start, and we'll get those maps headed to you shortly. Again, four undefeated teams. So by the end of calculations, there should be one undefeated team. Is that correct, Snow? Uh, exactly, exactly. That's how it usually works. Um, there was actually last tournament, that was, that was not what happened, even though mathematically that's what should have happened. So I think what caused the, uh, what caused things to be a little bit different were, um, oh, they played against third impact. I see, I see. Uh, was that like teams dropped out and that kind of changed, changed the system a little bit. But, uh, yeah, technically, um, since the number of teams that, uh, wins or has won every match, like always halves, um, there should only be one team left since there are six rounds. Exactly. And so if you go six and oh, you're going to make it into the into the top cut five and one. That's we're probably going to see the rest of the teams, the other seven going five and one. But we still have two more rounds to figure out who those will be. And since this tournament has a top eight system, actually, I can show you when I want to see if there's anything pre-filled. Let me see. Oh yes, there it. <laughs> oh no, 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 wait, 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 wait. So three Smurfs, one Smith is not is not already in the top eight. Don't get me, don't get me wrong. It's actually <laughs> just um, I tested whether they fit into the the, the text box, <laughs> and I might I might not have cleaned that up before the tournament. Uh, but yeah, basically um, this is a, a top eight uh, final final round. So the eight strongest teams in this tournament will make it into another into the quarterfinals, into the into the semifinals, etc., uh, etc. Et which of course with um with 50 players is still quite a challenge and i think last time three smurfs and one smurf who like if you're not aware like why we talk about them so much um actually we didn't yet but we will soon um spoiler they are <laughs> the team that consists of a a few players that you you might have heard about so there is dude that yes that srv2 dude there is Milana, there is Mudcup, and there is Barry. So four amazing streamers. Yeah, they're all they're super super talented. We we showed one of their matchups last Ink Theory, and it was it was pretty good. They did a really good job. I remember they lost, but it they lost to a team that did make the top cut. Exactly, it was a very very close match, and um, I am sure they will be they will be fighting hard this match to instead make it into the top eight this time, and so to observe their adventure. Wow, this is dramatic music in the background. I hope this is not how this match is gonna go. Um, I would like us to take a look at how this match is going to go between three smurfs one smurf against the blue ring kraken and um falco have you heard of the blue ring kraken i haven't i was just about to check to see who is on the roster no 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 not the team the animal have you oh, heard the of animal. it oh oh um it's, it looks scary i'll just say that <laughs> it, looks very scary. It, it does 
It does. Um, I have heard, if I'm not mixing things up, um, so un unresearched biology, not facts with Snowpoke. I think the blue rick kraken is actually like the most dangerous, like the most venomous, venomous kraken um, among among the, the squid kraken universe. And uh, it's, a, it's a pretty cool, it's a pretty cool team name. I am certainly intimidated. So if you see blue rings in the sea on, on a kraken, um, I would say run, but like if you run on the sea, then that's an entirely different story. Um, but but the swim, swim fast. Swim very fast. They look like they're deep sea creatures, but we'll see. <laughs> Again, this is going to be a really good matchup. We have zones on Sturgeon Shipyard to start off. Again, it's very similar to Muscle Forge, where, it, you know, you're going to see those surprise coloring bombs, surprise, I'll say side attacks, side flanks. Impossible very much and chargers. it's also wow this song is dramatic okay i'm i actually i did check like every song before i added it to the list <laughs> this one this one is brutal this one is, is more it, more more than i expected um <laughs> i so the berry already plays elita and um i think he's probably also gonna go for elita this match because stewart and shipyard zones i i feel like it's a really good map for elita where you have um the, the grids like this this like big block um after dropping down from the street at the start of the map um you can stand up there really really well and it's very hard to get it uh, to get a player as they're standing up there and you have all the all the overview over the entire map you certainly so do. you there really want to be an editor in this game that is exactly right there are a ton of places where you can stand and where you can hide and luckily there's enough walls too you know you can get cover you can refill your ink and you can definitely watch out for flanks too Absolutely. And then uh, Blue Ring Kraken, though, um, they have spooky team tags. So they are a, a, a team that I assume has already existed for, for quite a while. Now, of course, three smurfs, one smurf. It is their second Ink Theory tournament. I'm not sure if they have participated in any other tournament since, but that does give them some experience. And of course, the streamers, you also play together. But they are playing against a established team with Blue Ring Kraken. And we're getting started now. And there's the editor. Absolutely. See, Mudcup has the junior. Yep, Barry with the E-leader, Milano with the K-Pro dude with the gal. And yeah, two K-Pros in this match. Ooh, and it looks like everybody from Three Smurfs are going to go on their left side to try and take the zone. One player down already right on Blue Ring Crack. And three Smurfs, Smurfs and a Smurf take the zone. They're down two already players. Already at so. a mild advantage. Barry in the nice middle of the zone. By oh, Barry. Now they're chasing Jerry. I almost said Barry. Barry and Jerry. <laughs> Oh, oh no, there's a disconnect. Really, oh, there's a disconnect. There is. So, Snow, what are the disconnect rules? Um, I think 30 seconds in, this this this, this match itself is going to be skipped by now, for now. And if all players um, are waiting. Okay. Exactly. And then if there's enough time, it would be replayed. All right. So, so it, I wouldn't be surprised if we have enough time to replay it. I think so. I think so. But we should like, see. Like, this was pretty smooth. Yep. yep. So, are in the meanwhile, we can actually... <laughs> They almost did. Sorry. We can actually, and also this, in this case, it is, of course, um, you can squid party. That is very, oh, are they going to, uh-oh, 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 wait a second. Uh-oh. I, I don't think they're throwing oh. it at the zone. The, I was, I was looking forward yeah. if, if the inkjet exhaust can get them here. I know. Okay. All right. So luckily that one was a little more smooth. I, I'm still thinking back to two ink theories ago when I accidentally got put in a match and we had to throw oh, yes. that one immediately. Um, <laughs> did not go that smoothly, but... Uh, regardless, this match will be skipped. Will probably be replayed because we seem to ready up pretty quickly. And, you know, luckily mm -hmm. these teams, they knew what they were supposed to do to kind of escalate the match. So we will move on to game two. But again, I wouldn't be surprised if we replay game one at the end. So then, um, also, I'm just realized I'm not sure if I've, if I've uh, prepared the script, the overlay script for this particular scenario. So we might see a few glitches. Uh, programming programming oopsies upcoming but um i also wanted to take a look at where those teams are standing at the moment because you know um since this is a match between two like higher level games uh, higher level teams it would be interesting to see how they've performed so far and like, i'm seeing three smurfs both... and a smurf is yep, on position number 10. One. yeah both are three and one exactly blue ring kraken on position 14. three smurfs one smurf on position 10. So they are, oh, they're replaying this game. Okay, 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 okay. That's not quite how it says in the rules, but I am okay with that. Yep, I 
would be surprised that. if we still finish within the allotted time, so we'll get going again. Again, exactly. same weapons for both teams. And I have been informed, by the way, by our organizational staff, that Milana is sending cute GIFs within the Battlefy system. So um, they are having a good time. Very important. If you have... I didn't even know uh, you can send is... cute GIFs, but <laughs> that's a thing. I, I didn't know either, but it looks like it's going to start off a little different. Ooh, I was going to say start off a little differently. Blue and Kraken was going to take the zone, but three Smurfs and a Smurf do end up taking it. It was very, very close. And now three Smurfs and a Smurf will start their lockout phase, guarding from all sides. Again, being very... Oh, there's another disconnect. Okay, this time, this time, uh, this match the counts. Match, the match. Yeah, this match counts. You only get one, one do-over. So it's the same player. It's the heavy remix, but um, they need to play this one out. And it looks like they are. Um, again, if you have a player, if you have a player disadvantage, it's going to be really hard to win, especially if you're already down. So we might see this go very, very quickly. Yeah, this this looks really really tough for the Blue Ring Kraken. Now they have they have won three matches, so I assume that those uh, connection issues that this player seems to be experiencing, um, they are they are a bit newer. Probably haven't been playing as three players throughout this entire tournament. And I mean they are still trying, of course. Let's see. I don't know. Oh, nice plus, nice plus. Ooh, Ooh, that was. <laughs> And this is a KO for three Smurfs, one Smurf. Yep. So that same player who disconnected, they, they obviously can join for the second match. But again, since there had already been a disconnect, if they somehow disconnect again, the match will still have to go on. Exactly. But well, at least this means that uh, all of the games will definitely be able to be played in time, despite there being a replay for the first time. The daily 2130 disconnect <laughs> uh, from Blue Ring Kraken. Wait a second, Kyo, Kyo, do you know? Do you know things that I don't know? Tell me, tell me the, the tell me the deeds. <laughs> is wait, is this a German team? Like when I when I see disconnects, I usually think German players, because uh, we have we have adventurous internet sometimes. And I actually used to have a particular issue where my internet would always drop at exactly 9 p.m. That is interesting. And we went through that on stream, and it was so painful. It was always so frustrating when you're streaming and exactly at nine o'clock your internet just drops and all your viewers are saying, oh, this isn't working well. And uh, yeah, it was it was very frustrating. And I could imagine that for Blue Ring Kraken. Uh, this is also this is very, very unfortunate, of course. I think they might be. Wait, do they have another player? Do they have somebody they can swap out or will they have to? Will they have to like try their best in in this situation? Wait, I want to also see those cute gifs that Milana is sending in chat. Wait a second. Oh no, wait, that's a cat. Oh, that's a cute cat. Is this her cat? Oh no, that's so cute. I'm sorry, I don't have screen share doing this. Aww. <laughs> yes, Again, so this is why you want to join. <laughs> Go on. Sorry. Um, I, oh no, it's sorry, okay. Sorry, I, 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 I wanted to say two things actually. One, like, if you want to join the organizational team, this this is why okay cute cute gifs in the in the battle because everyone in the organizational team actually can now go and see those cute gifs so um there is there is already um one important reward for being part of the team but also they do actually um blue ring kraken have more team members so i would imagine they are now trying to find a teammate a team member to swap out with so they have six players in their team um ben thorboy milo noodles jerry and key we're seeing ben noodles and jerry in the battle right now so we still have milo and key who might still uh pop in and i imagine uh that's exactly what is being being managed at the moment exactly. i imagine some desperate pinging in discord channels <laughs> yeah it looks like they're trying to find a player to fill in the slot you know if it takes too much time we probably will have to resume and continue on and it may just have to be a 3v4 but um We'll see if that happens. Hopefully they can find a sub. I hope so. I hope so. We've actually, we've had a 3v4 before on stream and the team with three players actually won. It, they did. it can happen. They did. They, oh. one of their, um, I believe their fourth member, they couldn't join until maybe the third or fourth round of the Swiss stages. And so they just had to do their first few with a three, three player team. And they, they knew that going into it. They knew they may be at a disadvantage, but it is what it is, you know? Exactly. And I mean, technically, you do have to be four players to actually join this tournament. I do not recommend... 
Um, sorry, I was just checking something you have to ask. Um, I, I do not recommend, um, like, intentionally signing up for tournaments, planning to play as three players. I, I would not be a fan of that. But, of course, like, if you're a very strong team, you would be able to play with three players and still have a good time in the tournament. Yeah, and what always is best, too, is, you know, you have your solid four, but it's always, always, always really nice to just get those subs just in case something comes up. If somebody even needs a break for one match, you know, if they're tired or if an emergency comes up, again, you can have up to eight players on your roster, but you could have the same mm -hmm. four players, your primary players, play the entire time. But the more players on your roster, you're going to be in a better position pretty much for everybody. Milana confirming they're having a good time, so I am I am glad about, about that. Um, I would imagine, since they're all streamers, um, they are way... Sorry, I'm... Now, you see, <laughs> you see, if you're streaming a match with streamers... Now, everybody is in every stream. Okay, uh, Blue Ring Kraken uh, has just had their, their final player join. So we can now, we can now resume. Um, okay, so everybody is... Uh... <laughs> I, I think everybody in this stream is currently watching like five streams at the same time, or, or I don't know how, how this is working out. I hope, I hope you all are not like uh, straining your internet too much. There are quite a few people streaming. Yeah, I do see, I do see Dude and Mudcup are both streaming this right now. Wow. That's, that's fun. It's, it's very satisfying to have so many, so many like um, high level and like serious players be focused on this tournament. Because of course, like I am, you know, I'm just a, a wee little streamer and like I'm not the strongest competitive person. So it's kind of cool that I like do this competition thing and like people take it seriously. As they will in the upcoming match. Tower yes, control on the reef. Tower control on the reef. We'll see if we see the same loadout. It's the same exact for three smurfs and a smurf. A little different since we have a new player for Blurring Kraken. Oh, and I'm seeing Tetras. We do see Tetras. We see a Kenza Rapid Blaster as well. Or Kenza Blaster. Oh, Mark having huge so we'll danger there, but does actually a... manage to survive. Right now, everyone's just kind of dancing around the tower, up and below the bridge. Two players down now on Blurring Kraken. And it looks like Barry's going to take the tower for three smurfs while the rest of his teammates push up. Barry using Stingray on the tower. Ooh, and they're really locking out Blue Ring Kraken. Doing a great job getting the flanker, too. Again, these and sides, just... you, you really do want to flank and you want to protect those areas. Oh my gosh, Blue Ring Kraken, a huge danger here. Of course, dude being in a very, very safe position, able to flank here, taking one spike. But now Barry taken down from the tower. And I'm not sure if dude can Barry's make it back down. or if he's... Just ballering out. Dude's... I think dude's just gonna baller out. Maybe try a baller... A baller jump from the bridge, but nobody was really there for them to get. Looks like Milana gets back on the tower for three smurfs. And again, this stage has three checkpoints. We've seen stages with two and three. This one, I'd say, is a little more standard. These three checkpoints are split far enough apart where it's nothing too unusual. They do get past the second checkpoint. Get all the way down to 37. Nobody on the tower right now. Two players down now on three smurfs. Luring Kraken still though has been able to stop those pushes from going all the way. But they are again at a numbers disadvantage. I kind of like their team cup honestly seeing the Tetra, seeing the Rapid Blaster. I'm, I'm kind of a fan of Rapid Blasters to be honest. You don't see them that much. You really don't. I, I do enjoy them as well. I like facing them. I'm really bad at using the blaster. Tower is now sitting at mid. Two players down now on three smurfs. Let's see if Blue and Kraken is... Let's see if they finally take the tower. And it looks like they are. Looks like the junior the Milo is on too. as they approach the first checkpoint. And I do feel like the first two checkpoints might be viable now. Looking at what the map's looking like. Also, Gary protecting this uh, this little street there. Now, Mudcup co coming through mid, though. And Milana from the side. Ooh. Dude protecting her. Yes, Mudcup sneaks up. Mudcup gets him off the tower, is still alive, and maybe gets a kill. Three players down now from Blue Ring Kraken. And that's a team wipe. So, Blue Ring Kraken gets past the first checkpoint. Three Smurfs will take and escort the tower a little bit. They're going to want to push up and maybe paint a little more before taking the tower again. A bit worried there about noodles being somewhat stuck in that. Like I saw that in the in the last interaction that like they all they always stuck in the same corner and then dude could just take them down. I feel like noodles were kind of running the same trap again. 
it's of course like one sign of a very strong team is to for that you're able to force your opponents into unfavorable positions. And here's the last checkpoint for three smurfs, one smurf. Yep, they get to the last checkpoint. It looked like the Blue Ring Krakens, they didn't know which direction they really wanted to go, but we do see Ben flanking a little bit, taking down, I believe, Milana from the tower. Blue Ring Krakens now take the tower and they have a four, now it's a four on four. And here's the baller again. By the way, what special does the does the rapid blaster cancel blaster have it again? I think it's hammer, isn't it? I oof. I do not know off the top of my head. I haven't seen it I'm yet. Well, like, no, they've used three. Yeah, I'm. I'm like, um, wait a second. Where's the hammer? Oh, but now, of it course, has baller. Just... I believe. Yep. Oh wow! I, you see, I know nothing. Three on three. Okay, I know nothing. Well, I mean the weapons. Oh my gosh! Look at how damaged there everybody often, was for a second know. here. Everyone was super damaged. It looks like Blue, Blue and Kraken do get to the second checkpoint, but can't really capitalize on it. They are three players down right now. Just the blaster, who is coming out of spawn, just under they a minute were, left. They were so close there. Actually, like had had the, like one spat gone differently i think they might have been able to like turn this into an advantageous position um, but in the end the number of spats did decide here and again blue ring kraken in this corner but this time dude knows okay i can't win they against really... two players shooting at me mm -hmm. and barry's trying to catch the people who might want to flank barry doing a really good job at protecting let's see if they can win the 1v1 versus the k shot the k shot gets to barry three players down now from three smurfs and blue and kraken they're going to take the tower it's going and to go back to mid, what... but then they really want to push up for these last 20 seconds. Exactly. This is essentially going to be their very last chance. And they also have to take control over the part of the map that usually is controlled by uh, three smurfs, one smurf. You can see Noodles dashing forward a little bit here. As this is exactly where they have to protect. Is anybody still in the tower? Yes, Gary is now. Gary's they need this they're they not getting the it. They're going to pop it. They're going to be on the tower. Okay, splashdown incoming. One play Ooh, two players down now. Important and, three, oh, and Barry no. hops on. Barry is saving the game there. It was starting to really look like uh, Blue Ring Kraken might might save this. Look at the map. Like there was there was a pathway. Yeah, there was there was a chance there at the end. Great job, the three smurfs and a smurf. Nice attempt by Blue Ring Kraken. Sixteen kills by Ben the K shot. Fifteen by Dude. And this also means that this match is now going to three smurfs one smurf however uh, we do play every match actually every game every game within a match again i can i, I know the <laughs> difference between those two yes yes because um for a for an eventual eventual um um like in within the swiss system what is it called again a tie tiebreaker within a tiebreaker it is important to have this number of one games too because um what you experience oftentimes is that people have the same number of rounds that i won same number like same like opponent average mathematical thingy and then it's actually the number of games that decide so blue ring kraken still have to do their best here if they want to have a chance at making it to top eight and they've got the chance to do that now because this match got ready immediately yep every game counts rainmaker on wahoo world i think we've seen that one before again, haven't this... we we have, yes. Both teams keep a pretty similar comp. Early, early pop by three smurfs. They are not going to pick up the Rainmaker yet. They're going to push a little bit. It looks like they're going to wait for Barry to pick up the Rainmaker, which is a good idea. You know, a lot of teams will have their back. Oh, Milana picks it up. Two players down now on Kraken. Ooh, dude is maybe going to paint a path. Milana is going to now take the Rainmaker up the left side. And she dude, does get a kill there. Which paints better. Oh my gosh, Milana. Well, be there, there's the quick. path, there's the path. She's still surviving. Oh my gosh, how is she surviving that Ooh. much? Milana survived so much, so much pressure there from Blue and Kraken. Are they going to pick it up? Can Mud Cup get on? No. It looks like Barry's staying back and using the Stingray to distract and maybe pop the barrier. And here's but the flank getting to nine is very, very nice. And that's working out. That was a very, very important flank here. I, I like to call it the loop-de-loop, -loop, where you like take a loop around the entire gameplay to then surprise everybody or in the back. And that was exactly what was necessary here. And Ben did take the necessary action to make this game just last a little bit longer and give them another chance. 
Absolutely, Blue and Kraken, they're now at mid. They have two players working up top, two work, two playing in the back, but dude is dude is around back. He's sneaking, he's gonna try and flank and get the Rainmaker. Dude does get the Rainmaker and cancels the splashdown. What a fantastic no double way. kill by dude, That's and they are wiped. With the Booyah Bomb, they were trying, I, I respect that, when teams like Blue and Kraken actually try to take down the Booyah Bomb. I feel like people do that way too little, because like, if everybody tried, then we would actually have like Team Symbiosa to take them down. But they tried, and it didn't work out, and instead they did get splattered, so I'm a little bit sad about that. Absolutely. Noodle's now an incredible Two dangerous situation. Three right now, three on three. And Dude here getting this back while jumping, despite Kraken only here. running a little bit of MPU. Looks like three Smurfs are wanting to pick up the Rainmaker, but they gotta wait for all these torpedoes to go away. Right now, Blue and Kraken, they're waiting for them to pick up the Rainmaker. They're just waiting. Milan is gonna pick it up again and slowly push with Barry. It looks like Dude, Dude and Mudcup are both down. And now just Barry. Sometimes what you want is... And they're chasing um, him. <laughs> they are, they are. What you want is you want the player, to, you want to just wait until your opponent picks up the objective in a time where it is favorable to you to then stop them. And that's kind of what happened here. They waited until until uh, Smurfs picked it up so that they can just, just take down the entire thing. That's true. And we're now starting kind of to see... Cracking can do. Okay, nice straight here. We're 2v2. But the Stingray though, Barry. What are you doing to those poor squids? <laughs> and right now, map control is definitely going to three smurfs. Just about two minutes left, three on three. Milana takes it again. Milana's really been picking up the Rainmaker. And she is down. But again, three smurfs, they have mid, they have control there. Blue and Kraken will want to push up a little bit too before picking up the Rainmaker potentially. Looks like they're going to armor to before picking it up. After that survivalist action by Milana that we saw at the start, I kind of wanted to pick up the Rainmaker more. Because he's really doing a great job it with it. It was a very, very good... It was. It was a wonderful opening push. Just about a minute and a minute and a half left. Again, that first push we saw was definitely the biggest. And the Rainmaker, it's in an interesting position down below. Um, I feel like whoever picks it... Oh, they're probably going to let it reset. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, Ben. Ben from Blue and Kraken does pick it up. And we see a baller by Dude. And oh, no, dude that was so well ben. placed. And they do have a situation right now where I think the... Does the carousel rotate at all in Rainmaker? Because it is not rotating right now, but I feel like it does sometimes. It, it does very slowly, yes. It, it, it's going okay. right now, I believe. Oh, yep. it does? Okay, well, I... Oh, yeah, you're right, you're right, you're right. Because, of course, that can also hinder your attempt at moving the Rainmaker when the, the, the ground is moving faster than you are. Absolutely. Do you want to go with or against um, the Rainmaker round? Typically, you want to go with, but let's say the Rainmaker is in a perfect spot. You just got to grab it sometimes. 30 seconds left. It looks like three Smurfs. They're doing a really good job locking out. Two players might... Oh, they were going to go chase after Dude, but Barry's staying back. They're going to not pop the Rainmaker, but keep the explosion they have a number close of advantages. to their side, they have but it's to... too late. They have to make the most out of this now. This is their one chance. Numbers advantage, of course, you want to see yep. at the very last moment. 10 seconds left. And look at the paint. There is paint. Oh, but Barry on the charger. Oh, there no is. way. Milo this time being extra careful to them. not get sniped. Barry taken down, actually. But, oh. but so is everybody. And oh. Game three goes to three Smurfs and a Smurf. They take the set 3-0. And this means that in this tournament, they might actually make it to the top card as they have now won four matches, lost only one of them. And that's usually, that's a pretty good win-loss ratio um, for like looking at a top eight, top card. I would agree. So you're we're seeing in a, a lot really of good, on the stream. You're in a really good position going into the last set of Swiss rounds in potentially the top card. After all, whereas when we started, there were only four teams that um, made it to the top cut. After everybody has decided to participate in Ink Theory, um, we went for the for the top eight, um, as was actually suggested. There are a lot of... So um, here's, here's one tip for anybody who participates in tournaments. Um, within Battlefy, there's actually the system where you can give feedback uh, right after the tournament and do that. Like, I read that feedback very meticulously, 
And uh, like they're also nice graphs. Like you know, like other other tournaments have like a feedback channel. But the nice thing about the battle fight thing is there are nice colors and graphs, and it makes me happy. So um, I I check always check out that feedback. And one of them was to introduce a top eight system. Actually, it was like a feedback in multiple ones. And then once the tournament started growing, I felt like I felt like yeah, okay, maybe we should actually do that. And that of course means that way more teams get to now make it to the top eight. And especially in a tournament as large as this, it's actually very necessary. Imagine only four teams making it. Oh man, it would be a potluck, because you would have one team that goes undefeated, and then, you know, you'd have so many teams that would be 5-1, and one, and it really just depends on who they face. You know, they can't really choose who they face, but here, mm -hmm. it is it is more fair, it's more exciting, it's just overall a better experience. Yes, if you're, like, towards the cutoff, of course, it's still, it's still very tough, because it does depend on, like, who you who you play against and then to be fair like who you play against depends on your previous performance so it's all kind of connected but um for for your for your sake it's usually better to just win every match that that makes it more likely for you to make it into the top cut exactly and we're still waiting for a few more matches to finish up but we have two teams who are still undefeated they are both five and oh arctic moon and barracuda and we have how many teams are four and one i believe we have six of them and a few matches are still fishing up, so let's say seven. Let's let's just say that um, half of them will go, probably go five and one. So we might even squeeze one or two, four and two teams into the top cut, but we'll have to wait and see. Yeah, but that means there are still so looking at three Smurfs and a Smurf, there are still nine teams that have the same or a better win loss ratio. So they have to like it's it's not going to be easy this is like this is not the guarantee for them to make it into top 8 of course it would be convenient since i already accidentally pre-filled the top 8 slot apparently but um of course as we move into the top 8 um there will be baggage actually in the staff who is going to update all of that for you but uh yes the teams that are 4 in 1 right now is still not guaranteed to actually make it and yeah, this the four, round. four and one teams right now are Vision, Reflection, Friends, The Boys, Three Smurfs and a Smurf, who we just saw, Revoit, Revoit, <laughs> Revolt, and Yopra, that's crazy. All four and one. Exactly. So this round is actually just supposed to, to end. So let me see if all matches are over or if we will have to press. Oh, I will have to press a button. Okay. Pain versus Solar has not finished yet. So. That's a and that, tie. And that's important because they're both three, two teams that are three and one. One of them will move up to four and one, and we we could maybe oh, we'll want to show their hurts. match. We'll see. That hurts though. If if that was if that was those two, because I mean, as a tie, of course, it's a little bit it's a like it's a little bit harder to make it. I I feel a bit bad for them, but the rule is like you have to you have to report your result or like you you must not start a match late, because um, I mean, if you start a match like in time, it will always be done in time. But uh, yeah, we have to be very strict here with the time cutoffs. So please, 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 please make sure to uh, to not start start matches after Witty sends out this this ping message. So then, round six though, and um, usually what I try to do for round six is I try to find a matchup that might actually decide over whether or not the teams in that matchup are going to make it to the top eight. So let's see if we can find something like that. Let's see, we've got Reflection, Friends, The Boys, Three Smurfs on Swift, Revolt, Your Bro. That's actually IPS's team, by the way, Your Bro, that's crazy. Um, IPS, you might you might recognize, has played a lot of tournaments before um, in the Ink Theory series. Yeah, lots of wonderful teams we could choose from. And again, Snow mentioned that we want to showcase a team that is probably 4-1, and, and they're just right, we call it the bubble. They're right on the bubble of making the... I almost said the playoffs. This is, this is very sporty. Right on <laughs> the cusp of making the top cut, making the top eight. Again, we know that there are two teams that are undefeated. We're not going to show that match because we're, we'll probably see both of those teams in the playoffs anyways, in the top cut. Okay, I think we found, we found something nice here. Also, two teams that actually registered overnight and again as a reminder for how this works actually let me show you the schedule of this tournament right that's not the schedule and that is the schedule we are now in 
round six of the Swiss stage, which is the final round of the Swiss stage. So for most teams in this tournament, Okay, sorry, I just got a got a message. Um, uh, round six of this of this tournament um, for many many teams is going to be the very very last round. So they played eighteen games, and um, which of course like is already very very exhausting. So like usually when I participate in a tournament, I am I am very glad with my with my eighteen games. Wait, why is everybody sending me private? private messages. This is the help desk. Y'all, 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 there's a help desk channel. I, I, <laughs> I mean, Snow, you're only, you're only running a tournament. You, you Why can't you help me out too? <laughs> I mean, to be fair, to, oh, okay, now it's in help desk. To be fair, I mean, like, in most tournaments, like, you don't always, you, you don't also commentate. That's like, you know, it's like usually not a good idea, uh, as you could see literally today. <laughs> So it's it's, it's understandable that you would send send me messages, but uh, in this particular configuration, it does not it does not work out. So yeah, basically, um, eighteen matches is what most teams do play. But for um, for eight lucky teams, lucky in huge air quotes, uh, they will have to play even more, and it does get very exhausting. Which is also why we recommend having like players that you can swap out with. Absolutely, and we there are some small breaks, you know, that players can take. But again, a lot of these players, they pretty much have to play for five hours straight, and it can be very, very exhausting. I have to admit, like I've had tournaments where, towards the the very late stages, um, I am absolutely sure that I would have played better if I wasn't that unbelievably exhausted. Which of course is also a chance for the for the teams that usually have a harder time in tournaments. If they do their very best in the last rounds, they might be able to topple teams that are usually usually stronger. Exactly. So that's it is what a... we really Yeah, that's what we really, really like about Swiss setup, uh Swiss organized tournaments. You know, again, it doesn't matter how well you do, you will play all of your allotted matches. It's not double elimination. It's really great experience. You know, if it's your first tournament and you go 0 and 6, hey, that's okay. You got great tournament experience you played you played against other competitive teams that you are very different than league you know league you play the same map you, maps and modes for two hours here it switches and you know is involves a lot more coordination so it's really really important and that's why i like swiss setups Yes, we are waiting to get our players in our lobby. Snow, this is weird. We're actually one of the first. We're the first three in the lobby. That never happens. We're normally the last yes, two. Yes, we um, are. I hope. I, I hope <laughs> everything is going going all right there. Yeah. Oh, I'm just glad I got see. in for game one as well. Because there seem to be. No, I think both of both of these teams have have all of their players ready though. So um, that is that is fine because we had that last time where um, we wanted to stream a match and then they they didn't have like they were they were missing a player and so had to drop out in that from the tournament and so we were sitting here just trying to entertain everybody for thirty minutes uh, which we already had enough in the Snowpoke Imposter game so um, I, I hope these things are gonna work out work out well today. Um, there's actually like many tournaments have emergency subsystems where like there's a list of emergency subs that you can um, that that you can then like pick up for your team even if you don't have enough players in your own team. But this tournament doesn't have that yet. I hope to be able to set something up like that in the future. But um, yeah, that's something that we're looking at for, for for the future because like we can only add so many new things like for each tournament without it turning into a total disaster. So uh, yeah, this time no emergency subsystem yet. I hope we're gonna have something like that soon. Also, um, Locom, 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 um, or chat, chat, Falco, Locom is being nice to us, um, and oh well, thank and, you, Locom. Um, Oh wait, no, Lokom is being nice to the participants. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Falco, I misread. Um Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, no, but but thank you, thank you to all the participants to uh that you're participating in the tournament. And of course the more teams there are, the more 
<laughs> the more the more exciting these tournaments are and the more balanced the matches can be so it's a it's a win-win for everybody it absolutely is thank you guys again um it's been fun like it, you know we thought it would be a little slower paced tournament being on a wednesday i know we keep mentioning this and you're like okay falco we know you thought there weren't going to be many teams who signed up but you know like we really are surprised we really are thankful that all teams could participate and the staff are free to help us out falco don't look at chat for a second <laughs> <laughs> Preventing fun. I guess. I guess everybody was was hoping for me to crash the entire thing in the first thirty minutes. Um, I am. I am very sorry that I didn't mess things up too much. I know people love people love me crashing my streams, but uh, just just today, I would like to take a break from from messing everything up. Thank you very much. <laughs> also, by the way, I think we can we can already tell you which teams are going to be playing this match. It's going to be friends versus vision. Friends versus Vision, both teams that are five and one, both teams would are four and one, both teams that would love to get a win to move to five and one and potentially make top cut. Yes, the team that is not going to win this match has a has a uh, very very sorry. The uh, the team that is not going to win this match has still a tiny little bit, a sliver of a chance to still make it into top cut, but uh, most likely won't. So this is a an all deciding match basically for for those teams. Um, there are a few teams. So I think Friends and Vision like they're not at the very end of the of the tiebreaker list. Let me quickly check that. And again, the tiebreaker list can even change around a little bit after these match because tiebreakers based on your opponent win percentage and for the set and then for each game. So even exactly. if they are at a lower position now it, it could very well change but yeah starting with clams on humpback this is a really really interesting clam stage i think because if you flank and score or if you're on the team that is being scored on and you accidentally drop down and you have somebody flanking and scoring up top like you have to like you have to jump back to spawn to get them essentially or take a very roundabout way it is a hard hard map mode combo i believe Mm, it's it's very tight, isn't it? It is. I think it's one of those where like uh, dynamos are very popular, ballers very popular, um, explosions are very popular. But those are all things we haven't. I mean, we've seen ballers, but like dynamo explosion, I think we haven't seen at all so far. And of really course, it also kind of depends. Yeah. Yeah, it's like I mean, there has been a blob blob blobber actually by uh, thirty percent fish puns. But other than that, not been a very slotty tournament so far um we do see we do see the the return of the inkjet though and um also i'm i'm still i want to point that out because we had this one ink theory tournament where they were like everybody was playing cds so uh thank you everybody for not playing cds though this time <laughs> this time i think there are like have been hardly any We like CDS, but again, it, it is always nice to see a variety of weapons. Waiting on one more person to ready up, but it looks like it's going to auto auto fill for them. Falco, have you tried CDS before? Because I know you usually play other weapons. I I have, and I used to play it ba back in the day when I was a little little baby like B ranker. Um, Aww. It was it was fun, you know. I uh, splat bombs and rain, I believe. Uh, yeah, but duels yes, are hard. Yes, custom exactly. Yes. But we do see a tri And there's a blob and, lover. Yep, there's a blob and a Kenza Slosh machine. So kind of a different different loadout here. Makes a lot of sense though on this map, I think. Especially the sloshing machine um, with those arcs. We'll have a really good time um, throwing throwing absolutely. those arcs from the bunker. Yes, ab absolutely. Two players already down now. It looks like on Vision. They don't have, n neither team has team tags, so I did, I did double check that. Oh yes, that's that's true. They probably all pick up teams. They were just like they probably trying are, to, yep. to figure something out. with an out. early, early push with specials and clams, getting all the way down to 44. But no more claims. There are some clams back at mid, but you know, you don't want to be that person who has to go back and get them. You always want to fight and stay by the basket. Push. And look at all the specials. There's still the bomb rush trying to push back Vision. 
There are, and it looks like the slosher is still going to keep scoring. Is this going to be GG's? It is. What? <laughs> Again, both that of those teams quickest... are 401. <laughs> yeah, quickest claims match we have seen so far. Friends takes it 1 0. Though I have to, like, I have to say, I want to actually double check if we've got the team assignments right, because, like, neither of that's, those teams have team tags. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm like, how do we even know? Yeah, oh, just two friends, kills friends, from friends, Vision. Friends, Again, friends. we. Snow's double checking that we have the teams correct. Um, it's it's a little trickier when there aren't team tags, and you know you don't need team tags when you play. But so friends are Isaac, Happy Legend is Cat here and Ocard. I think that was that was the team that won, wasn't it? Um... I think so, because they were Team Alpha. But yeah, this is basically, this is a very interesting situation, actually, because Vision is the team that among the 401 teams, the teams that have lost only one match, is actually the strongest team. So if Friends wins this match, maybe in a 2-2-1 two, 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 situation, then Vision has the highest chance to actually also make it. So, um, like, we have the scenario, is if this is going to be a 3-0, it's going to be hard for Vision. If this is a 2-2-1, two, two, Vision might barely scrape into top, uh, into top 8. And if this is a 1-2-2, two, two, so if Vision wins the other two games, then Friends will probably not make it into top 8, but Vision will. So Friends, um, them having to... Them, them having like this first win, this first very decisive win, is very important for them. Absolutely. And moving on to game two, we have Splat Zones on Makamar. If we thought Claims was quick, let's wait and see how Splat Zones can go, because I, I don't know what to expect here. It's really hard to judge a match or a set based on a match that lasted a minute and 30 seconds. <laughs> true, true. And again, like Vision is supposedly, according to the numbers, the stronger team actually. So um, that was that was very surprising. And um, we'll see if they can do this again. Dry Slushers. Yeah, some different weapons. We do see Nozzle Nose and a Neo Splash along with a Mini. So it looks like friends they're trying to take the first cap. It looks like they might, not quite yet, but Vision is definitely pushing up and preventing it. And now, now Friends does, they do take the cap. Two players those, down though, so it might be a quick one. This immediate bomb rush, oh, wow, that's bad. Uh, this immediate bomb rush was probably um, something that helped them this time to capture the zone and to get control. But also last time you could see how the immediate bomb rush really made a big difference uh, by the blob blubber. That's right. And now Vision is trying to lock out Friends, but Friends is pushing up a little bit. Two players down on Friends, three players, just the blob. Vision still has the zone, and they take the lead. And now, with Vision leading, they will try to lock out uh, Friends, but Friends still getting fairly far, and you... Oh, will the bubbles... Oh, okay, they let the bubbles live, but Isaac taking a huge danger now. Are they gonna make it? Survive the bubbles at least. Throwing out their own bubbles, of course, but you much smaller. Ooh, just the mini alive. Friends takes they're it. They're almost zone. done with their penalty points. And now they resume their count, getting below 80. Yeah, I still feel like like Friends is Friends is doing doing very well, much better than I expected. Um, I am I am very impressed to see this like high level blah 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 gameplay like. That was such a geometric spat that we had earlier. Um, I I wish there were more people at a high level that made blah blah blah. I think we would see some some astounding splats. And again, there's another one. Definitely. And in zones, I think it's a very it's a little different because you are. Oh no. It's very spammy. I think um, even with a special like a, the suction bomb rush that the Neo Splash has, you know, blob. Is oh pretty look at Vision barely preventing the lead though. Ooh, so, and so this close. would have been a, a strong lead with a with a nice penalty, and you can see how Friends is able to get it back immediately. So this lead would have been would have been crucial, and they're not quite able to get it though. Now Legend in huge danger. Is they are they gonna survive the missiles? Yes, they are. And I think um, Friends has double suction rush the blob and the neo splash. Is that right? That is brutal. Uh, yes. Two players, yes. three players down now on Vision. That's such a good team comp. I like this. And then keep in mind, like, the splash also paints a lot, um, like, way, way more than people expect. 
and he has the lead. Friends takes the lead now as they continue the lockout phase. They are down one player. It looks like three players from Vision are trying to push right, but Friends doing a good job locking them out still. The big issue that you have to keep in mind now for Vision is like Friends will be able to like capture the zone fairly easily, even if they're at a huge disadvantage, just because they, wow, the bubbles, um, just because they are able to, <laughs> Just because they are able to um, to throw those bombs, so even um, like even now, wow, <laughs> I, I like what I'm seeing. Even now, like they can just capture it, even if they just get it for like a split second. That's enough to stop any push. So that's a huge advantage that France is at at the moment, because all you need, like if you're leading, all you need is just stop the push for a second. Exactly. And now I might Vision be about really, to eat my words. They saw the zone, but just the squeezer alone pushing them back. Friends re retakes it, 34 penalty points. No words eaten so far, and they do have the splat down, the splat bomb rush ready. Legend probably just waiting for their moment here, and now they're pushing away everybody. Yep, two players down now on Friends. Vision trying to keep it alive, but they can't. And this is a, a much more competitive match than our claims was in game one, three on three. Yeah, it does really feel like those. It does really feel like those teams are like neck, neck on neck. Is that a term? Yeah, neck and neck. Okay, because yeah, Tetris, Tetris tournaments meme. Um, whatever. <laughs> you you see you see the intense back and forth. I, I I oh my goodness, it is so intense. I just hear bomb after bomb after bomb. Two players are down now on Vision. Two players down now on Friends. Friends has his own, but both have a lot of penalty points they need to work through. Vision really needs to work with that player advantage, but it doesn't look yeah, like honestly, they're, yeah, they're still holding out a little bit. I, I, I like I like how much they're trying, but I feel like Vision is going to have a really hard time keeping the zone for such a long time. Getting it, no problem, but keeping it is going to be tough. And here's where they have to go now, 10 seconds. They have to get them a lot of spots because otherwise there's just going to be the special rush. Armor now coming, here's the special rush, I think. Ah, uh, not quite. Ooh, let's see the special rush. Do we see oh, bombs? this is so close, see not a lot of time fans? left. No one has the zone Overtime. yet. Ooh, two on they two, have to two on two. immediately. They, Look at how close they are. If nobody caps. Yep, yep. And just they like just that. They just needed one more splat at the end, and that would have changed everything. I know, Friends barely takes that one. Again, way, way different than what we saw in Clan Blitz. They are up in the set 2-0 over Vision. And that also means that Friends is probably going to make it into the top eight of this tournament, and Vision who has been on position number three so far, they now really have to fight. They have to win one game at least. Otherwise, I don't see... I, I'm seeing a, a bleak future for... for I, I envision a bleak future. Here we go. Why, why not go with the pun? It's tower control now. I doubt we'll see as many bomb spams, but, you know, I could be surprised. Tower control, man, to Maria. I mean, not one of my does... favorite map mode combos, but... Okay, okay, I like it personally. What do you not like about it? I think they're, um, I always just get sniped somehow. There's always a sniper or a splatling that just sneaks up on a corner or a ledge, and I, I don't see how high they are up, and they always splat me. So, it makes it pretty tricky. Yeah, I also feel like, I mean, I, you're right that, like, zones in particular was very favorable with the Section bomb rush, but I feel like there are like a few areas in Manta Maria where suction bombs would be really, really nice. Um, like for example, you know the street, like this this small narrow street where then the tower control go, the tower goes through. There are so many spots there where you can just have a lot of fun. Absolutely, looks like both teams are ready, getting started for game three. Yes, also the real match has already been decided. Um, M started a poll, which do you like more dogs versus cats? Uh, dogs winning by sixty percent. <laughs> Right. So we'll see if dogs make a top cut. No, I'm joking. Um, <laughs> all right. Yep. Game three. <laughs> and the kids have changed, In but there are still two bomb rushes for for friends. Yes, yeah, still two bomb rushes. And like you said, we'll see if they use the bomb rush in the streets or if they find different places to use them. Our one player already down on a vision. Looks like the Kenza sloshing machine. We're on three. And we're also seeing the pick that um, both teams now going with Inkjet. Still, like, honestly, this is neither the best Inkjet map nor the best Inkjet mode, but it is, after all, still a very strong special. 
Definitely three oh, players down a... now on Vision. Let's see, Frenz takes the tower. It looks like Isaac is going to get on. Isaac Might building this their very special as here. they're on the tower. Probably going to rush at the checkpoint. Let's see. Checkpoint seems very safe so far. But now the pressure is coming up from both directions. Again, three checkpoints on this stage, and they're all they're split pretty evenly. Three players down now on Vision. And here's and the street that I was talking about. Push the tower. And this is. Yep, we see the street. Yes, the and keep in mind, friends, the team with the suction memory, so they don't really, they're not even relying on it. How is this game, how is this going so well for them right now? I don't understand. It's hard to tell. It was 2v2. They really want to push this tower to the third checkpoint. They can't get it right now. Friends down two players. Vision at full strength. They have ink armor ready as well. And this time the suction memory could not stop it any further. Of course, like, it is still nice, even if there are three players down, it is still nice to be able to prevent vision from the map recontrol, from the map painting. And you can see, like, they are not trying to paint, but they are already being greeted by a very strong team friends that do Yeah, keep, we'll see vision um, really pushing, really pushing with their specials. Two players down now on friends. Vision, let's see what kind of push they can make if they can get to the first checkpoint. But first they have to avoid the suction rush. Honestly, if They're I was Vision, I would be point. equipping, I would be equipping all of my bomb defense up. I, I hope they did. I do as well, especially after watching that first and second game, especially the second game. So, so, so many suction bombs. You'd really be inclined to add some suction rush. Just about halfway nice through, starting. it looks like, yeah, Vision did push to 90, 92, but you know, you need, you need a little more than that. They are down two players, down three right now. Friends will probably take the tower. We're now starting to see, or we started to see Vision taking over a little bit of control, but it's already, already Friends living in the spawn area of Vision with another suction bomb rise. Yep, Vision down two players right now. Friends, they are going to push further than they have before. They are at the third checkpoint. I think they will get past it pretty quickly. Looks like the squeeze is going to go in the on the side to flank with bubbles. And it oh, doesn't Isaac take down the bubbles Isaac. Too. It, Isaac survives it, and that is almost a GG. Not Three players down. it yet. It, that's a wipe. There but we go. But this is so safe. Okay, okay, okay. There you go. And Friends um, takes the set. In a 3-0, that, that must hurt for Vision. They were so close to making top cut. And now they Absolutely. might just not. Absolutely. Friends moves on at to 5-1 and one in a very, very comfortable spot to make the top cut. I don't see why they wouldn't make it. Um, having one 6-0 team, I'm going to guess five 4-1 teams. Or five 5-1 five and one teams. And we'll have to see who those lucky 4-2 teams are. And uh, Falco, do you know though who the real winner of this uh, of this matchup was? I believe it's a Connor Manning with the raid. Yes, I was about to say it, it is. It is probably Chad because they now have all the wonderful people from Connor Manning here, um, and uh, it is a Connor Manning because uh, you all you all get to see awesome gameplay now. We just finished the the first six rounds, and there's also another raid from Zombie Impaler. Um, thank you so, so much, both of you and all of your teams, for participating in this tournament. You can now lean back, relax a little bit, and um, watch the action in the upcoming rounds. Yes, for there those are of actually you coming still... from... Sorry, go on. No, no, you can. Sorry. Oh, I was going to say, for those of you coming from Connor in Zombie stream, this is the official Ink Theory tournament stream. Snowpoke and Falco Flyer here about Hi. to start the top cut. We're waiting on a few teams to finish up, and so we can tell you who's going to make it. It's been really fun so far, we'll tell you that. Yeah, we've had, like, overall things were surprisingly smooth, um, and surprisingly, I mean, surprisingly balanced, I don't know, like, over time, of course, you you expect you expect things to be um, more, more and more balanced. But yeah, things have been smooth, uh, not as many disconnects as usual. I think everybody's getting their internet back in order. And we are having a having a good time. We we're not gonna talk about the third the first thirty minutes of this 
of this stream, um, which if, you, if you're curious about how I messed everything up, because I assume there are now a lot of people who like just finished participating, who didn't see the start of the tournament stream, um, there will be a YouTube, like I, I upload the entire streams always to YouTube so the teams can also see their gameplay and stuff. And uh, yeah, the first, the first 30 minutes were definitely a, a time. And it looks like the matchup between the two 5-0 and o teams is over. Um, Arctic oh, Moon oh. is 6-0. and o. They beat Barracuda 3-0. So Arctic oh Moon gosh. guaranteeing their spot for sure. Um, again, Let's we'll see, still have a few. Team? We'll have to we'll have to see. We we do we do have a few few teams that are finishing up. I believe just maybe one or two matchups. But I think um, how many are done? There's probably still plenty of time though, because this matchup was like this match went fairly quickly. Yeah, I'm mainly looking at the teams that are have two losses or less. Um, because right now we d I won't read the names off because we don't know how the final positioning will be, but we do have four teams that are five and one. I guess I could read those teams off. We might as well. So, um, first of all, we saw friends win, so we know they're five and one. We saw we know Barracuda lost because they were undefeated. They were five and zero. Now they're five and one. Reflection and the boys they both won their matches, so they are five and Farco. one. Farco, Farco, Farco. We just yes. got a triple raid. A triple raid. A triple oh my raid. Goodness. Lily, yes, from Magic. Splatoon Lily. Yes, from Splatoon Lily, Magic and Reflamish. Thank you so much. Hi there. And Smash Man. And Smash oh, it Man. keeps coming. It keeps, it coming. keeps coming. Hi everybody. Hi, hi. Um, I'm Snowbroke. Snow, Snowbroke. Wow. <laughs> She's one of the imposters. I, you see, you see, Snowbro, Snowbro is imposturing me, so I might as well imposter Snowbro. And um, my wonderful co-commentator, who is regularly saving the stream, Falco Flyer. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and again, welcome to the official tournament stream of Ink Theory. I know a lot of you guys were streaming and participating, so thank you guys so much. We are getting ready for the top cut. We're still waiting for a few matches to finish, and we will let you know who is moving on once we know. So actually, I checked who is in Arctic Moon, our currently leading team, and I recognize a few of those names. So Shockwave, I think, I have lost to in ranked a lot. And Toon is, um, I think that's 2D. So I mean, there are two players called Toon. I think this one is 2D. Um, also very, very strong high level player. As you might know, um, there is no skill cap in this tournament. Like you can play as a team of any strength. So towards the top end of this tournament, like it gets, it gets really sweaty. It certainly and does. And you, yeah, we're gonna see a lot those... of these teams too. Exactly. Because we kind of intentionally made sure to not show too many of the super strong teams in these matches so that they can stay uh, for the top eight matchups and streams. Certainly, and so what's a little different about the top eight, which I don't think we've mentioned, is it's actually a best of five instead of a best of three. Exactly, exactly. So again, oh, actually, for... I'm sorry. If I may correct you, there's another difference because the first the first six rounds were a play all three, so every three games were played, even if there was already a dis uh, even if there was already a winner. Um, but now we're going to have a best of three, which means that if you win your first three matches. The game is over. The other games don't matter anymore. Exactly. So, Since it's single elimination, we there's really no reason to play all five or even all seven later on. But um, we, I mean, there have been times we've seen the last game multiple times, right, Snow? Wait a second. I, I I feel like you're referring to something, something, something adventurous that happened in the past. There is, there are deep. <laughs> deep, deep memories. Oh, wait a second. You're just talking about all the best of five and best of sevens we have, right? Yeah. Yeah. So the last Ink Theory, even in the grand finals, the the last one and the one prior to that, we, we went to game seven. It was incredible. It was a blast. It was exhausting, but it was so fun. I was wondering, like, there was probably also, I feel like there was one match where we actually had to replay something. And so we literally got to see the last match twice. I feel like something like that happened at some point. Um... But I hope we're not going to have to do that uh, this time. <laughs> and as you can see from the schedule, we are close to being on schedule. 
Uh, this round starts uh, ends 15, 17 minutes in, which is literally right now. So um, we have to end the. Actually, I'm gonna be nice. I'm gonna get this. I'm gonna give this matchup. Oh, actually, they just reported the results. So Pain won against Revolt, um, two to one. And we now know who is who. We now know who made it to top eight. Ooh, Falco, if you do. could uh, read out our top eight participants. Absolutely, I will do that. Let me pull it up here. So as I mentioned before, we it was going to be a, a headbutt to see which four and two teams would make it. We knew all the five and one teams would make it. We knew the six and O team would make it, but there are actually two four and two teams who are moving on to the top cut. So starting at the very top, ending six and O is Arctic Moon. And then we have, this is an order of their rank, by the way. Um, so position number two through five, these teams are two through six. These teams are all five and one. We have Barracuda, The Boys, Reflection, Pain, and Friends. And then in position seven and eight, both teams are four and two. We have three Smurfs in a Smurf and Vision. Vision made it in after all. That's exciting. I'm kind of happy for them. Vision did make it in. Their over their um, opponent match win percentage is just a tad higher than the other teams that ended four and two. So again, that's a tiebreaker. So it's super, super important to try your best on every game. You know, some people even say, well, why do you pl do play all three if a team wins 2-0? Well, it's for two reasons, really. Number one, there's going to be other teams who are already playing that that last match, so you might as well play it. And two, the more matches we have, the more calibration we can have to make sure we are getting the best eight teams into the top cut. Every game matters, even if even if you lose a set, you'd still really want to try your best on that last game. Exactly. And um, the matchups are... So it also matters very much like which particular position you have within those top eight, because the higher your position is within those top eight, the easier your matchups are now going to be. Because, um, Doctor, thank you very much for the gift sub. <laughs> and um, yeah, the easier your matchups are going to be. I want to see if the top eight overview is already already done. Oh, we're on it, we're on it, we're on it. So you can see Arctic Moon on position number one is going to play against the uh, the person who scored eighth in the Swiss matchup, which of course means that for this team that uh, scored eighth here, uh, this is going to be a little bit harder. Mm -hmm. And it was Vision who we actually just saw play. We just saw them versus friends. Oh, here we go. We go wow, wow, this is, this is fast. Here we go. So yes, we have Arctic Moon versus Vision. Um, Reflection scored four versus Pain on five, so that's like the most even matchup basically. We have Barracuda versus three Smurfs and one Smurf, number two versus number seven. We have the Boys versus Friends, number th three versus number six. And so one of those, one of those we can now, we can now stream. And um, I think we have seen neither Reflection nor Pain so far. So that's I was, think yep. that would be... Oh, you're already... <laughs> yes, 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 okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was working behind the scenes. I was telling Snow who I think we should broadcast because we've seen. And I didn't see it. <laughs> we no, we've because we've seen um at least one of the teams from the other three matchups. We haven't seen Reflection and Pain yet. True, true, true. And so even in the even in the upcoming rounds, it's still a bit of an advantage to have placed highly. So um. Like let's say in all of those in all of the games that we're seeing right now, um, the team that scored higher is going to win. In that case, we would have Arctic Moon. We would have Arctic Moon the first place versus Reflection the fourth place, and then Barracuda the second place would play against the boys on the third place. So Arctic Moon by making fourth place, sorry, by making first place, now has the chance that even if they win, the highest ranked player, the highest ranked team they will have to play against will be on place number four. So they are somewhat in an in an advantage. Advan advantages, advan advantages, there we go, position. Advent I should just yeah. replace myself <laughs> with like text to speech. It stumbles way less over her words. I mean, especially when you've been talking for um, almost four hours now, you know, your mouth might get a little dry. You just might reminded me drafting. water exists. I should install some water into my system. 
Snow, you mentioned you wanted to get, um, I don't, I don't know if you guys have it in Europe, but a soda stream. So it's like the yes. thing that makes carbonated water for you. Exactly. Um, they're actually very popular over here. You can get refill, refill bottles for your soda stream like everywhere over here. Um, the issue is just that for me at least, I... Wait, let me see if this is... Ah, wait a second. I'm pressing buttons. As I said, I completely redid the overlay for this stream. Oh, okay, 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 okay. There we go, there we go, we're getting there. Uh, my button didn't do what I expected it to do, but I can just I can just press the button manually. And uh, Snowbro, thank you so much for the for the gift sub. What was I about to say? Uh... Soda stream. Soda stream, exactly. So the issue for me is that the tap water that I have actually tastes kind of nasty. So even if I make it bubbly and sparkly, like the way I like it, um, it's still based on meh water. So what I need to get first, like more important than turning it into sparkling water, would be to get a really good uh, water filter. Also, I realized, I think I can already join the, the lobby for this match. They're all like, in these like high level teams, they're all like super, super fast at setting up everything. Uh, so that yeah, means they, that they I'm kind of the experience. slow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they, they're speedy. And of course, in a round like this, uh, where there are only four games happening at the same time, um, that also means that, um, like, you know, if everything moves very very smoothly, um, this round might actually end faster than expected, which kind of everybody wants right now, because of course they've been playing for such a long time. It could, but also at the same time, it could take a little longer because remember, it is best of five, which means we could play all five. So at the very least, oh. we're playing three games. At the most, we're playing five. So, you know, those right. teams that do finish 3-0, they, they might get a little bit of a, of a break in between their next match, and, you know, that, oh, that would definitely help them out, too. Yes, yes. This is, um, we're getting to the point where this is definitely um, exhaustion management, and especially for the very strong teams, keep in mind. Like, this is, like, we're right now, we're at the quarterfinals. Let me show you the top eight overlay again. We're at the quarterfinals. And um, there, so we have quarterfinals, then we have semifinals. And then, like, if you make it to the semifinals, you're already guaranteed to have another game because it's either the bronze match or the, the grand finals. So that's like another hour of gameplay. And these are the hardest games. So you have like the hardest games just as you're the most tired. Absolutely. And we're starting with Rainmaker on Piranha Pit. We both mentioned we like this stage. We mentioned it for Zone. How do you feel about on Rainmaker? Piranha Pit. Um... Wait a second, Piranha Pit? Wait a second. Oh, we're, we're not, not supposed, supposed to, to play Piranha. that stage. That is correct. <laughs> Yo, actually, it's supposed to be Kelp on uh, Rainmaker, but we have the wrong... We're not even playing this stage at all, so Wait, we'll let me see to... if I... Wait a second. No, 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 wait a second. I'm the dum dum. I am the dum dum. Wait, They're playing oh. the right map. <gasps> they are. Okay, never mind. So just ignore everything Snow and I have said for the last minute and a half. But uh, they, yes, they I are see, playing I on the correct map. Yes, they are. There we go, there we go, there we go. <laughs> now, now the right maps are showing. These were the semi-finals. We gave you spoilers already. Oh, okay. All right, well, they're ready, so I'm glad we got that fixed in time. <laughs> and let's dart to top cut. Reflection versus Pain, best of five. Winner moves on to the semi-finals. Oh my goodness. Look at this. Oh, snow. Look at Payne's Beautiful. Weapons. Beautiful. Those... I am in love. <laughs> and this is well, how you play top cut. Let's go. This this is, uh, I, I don't think I've ever seen a meme team in the top cut. So we'll see what happens. Quick Ray right off the bat from one of Payne's members. Um, I... I, you know, if the pain means Stingray Payne, I totally believe it. They... I'm just kind of speechless, but let's see what happens. I Yes, I understand now. I, I understand. <laughs> Looks like Reflection does pick it up a little early, and they are down two players. They push it to 89. We're going to see so many Stingrays, and this is a pretty good stage to use Stingray on, if I say so. <laughs> I can't believe they even went as far as, as picking the same kit. What's the sub? Oh, yeah, right. It's... Uh... 
Oh, it's burst all the special charge up as well. Pain does Aww. finally pick up the Rainmaker. They are going to try and make a push. The thing is, the Jet Squatcher doesn't really have painting power, and Stingray's not a paint painty special either. It's like, it's so interesting. But they do push to 54. I mean, I can't, I can't blame them. They, they are take, they are taking the lead. They are winning. One Double thing that Ray. I always find, found kind of fascinating is how, like, it, like Jet, Jet Squatcher, are like it doesn't even paint that much. But then again, like you get the Stingray so quickly. You definitely do, and it definitely helps with their special charge up that they have. Two players down now on Reflection, two Rays they have ready. Or I'm sorry, Pain. Reflection is gonna almost take the lead. Oh, did I mention you have four GG Rays now? You do have four GG Rays. It's interesting if they're gonna keep this up on games two and three, and potentially later on. It's a. Uh... I'm just really interested to see what happens, There's the but lead, though. it looks like there, there is the lead. Reflection takes it. But Reflection, it. they are safe nowhere because everybody in pain has so much range. All, but the, what they do need, of course, is like they need to get close. Once they get close, there's a chance. But as long as pain can keep them at such a large distance, they just save nowhere. And there's the stinger, which of course goes through the entire map. Mm -hmm. It looks like a looks like a member of Reflection was going to try and flank and push the Raymaker just a little bit, just enough to take the lead, but not quite there yet. Ooh, that is a good pop, and oh, they already had the lead, but pushing it to 34 is nice, almost to the conveyors. That's a really good push, exactly, and like making it to the second conveyor even. Now they're probably not going to make it even down, further. Down but this is already another choke point that Team Reflection have made it pass. Even though, of course, um, Team Pain is getting all of the attention right now with this particular kit that they have chosen, it is Team Reflection that is leading and that has played, that has uh, shown us the stronger gameplay so far. Um, otherwise, though, the number of splats, though, what's going on with that? That is interesting. They're doing a really good job with their splats. It looks like um, Reflection's not really getting their specials through, obviously not as quickly as these GG rays. You know, I'm interested too if, if um, Pain used similar comps in their previous matchups. We'll have to ask them and their opponents. I'm sure the opponents will tell us. <laughs> I, I'm sorry, Ink Theory does not does not provide psychotherapy for people that might need it afterwards, <laughs> but... Uh... Looks like Arroy is going to try and flank a little bit, but they are caught. Pain has just over a minute to potentially take the lead. Now we have one Stingray at 17 splats. I need to add that up at some point. I wonder, I wonder how many of those are assists. Like, are they like working together with their Stingray and everything? Because I mean, if there's a Stingray all the time, of course you get a bunch of assists, but like 17, 18, never mind 18. And they, they do not have the lead. Sometimes you they don't do need a bunch of splats, it, I guess. But they're doing a good job pushing up, but they finally get caught. Two players down, 45 seconds left. Okay, I'm already being told they did use Quadray every time. The feedback from the opponents came immediately and swiftly. <laughs> but yeah, Looks the like big disadvantage. With just 30 seconds left, the big disadvantage that Pain is at right now is like if somebody moves the Rainmaker close to them, they can't do a lot because the weapon they use isn't very strong. And that seems to be exactly how Reflection have made it so far, so far despite getting exactly. started all the time. Exactly. They and have to keep their distance. They can't really frontline with the Jet Squatcher. I mean, somebody has to, right? But these rays will help out. They, they'll help out if you have the lead, but when you don't have it and you're trying to make that push, here's the last push by Pain. Let's see what happens. Looks like a roller. Pryor's going to try and flank, and Pryor does get them, giving Reflection for the win for the first game. With a Flingzai roller, of which we, honestly we've seen way more than expected. But now, again, like if you haven't noticed yet, look at this splat number that you're about to see. Look Here we go, splats. 20, 20, 14, 12, 11, and so many Stingrays. There were 21 Stingrays in that match. Oh, excuse me, I muted the wrong source. Um, beautiful. You know, like, Reflection might have won this game, but I'm sure it was Pain that had all the fun. Also, look at the team logo. Now I finally get it. The team logo is a Stingray. <laughs> of course. I was going to say, looking at it before the match, I was like, that doesn't look too intimidating, but I, I do like it. Clam Blitz, Sturgeon's Shipyard. Um, 
you know, how do you use the squelcher on this one? What? Well, I, I mean, I know how you use it, but how do you use it as a team, like four players using a squelcher? Yeah, Stingray, I feel like would have been, yeah, yeah, like is even harder on, on clams. But the Death Squelcher itself, of course, like you do have some nice um, rangey positions where you do profit from your range a lot. Um, I, I would even say that this is one of the map's friendliest towards, towards um, Jet Squelchers. I would agree. But there's a lot of height and clams. You, yeah, there's a lot of height advantage you can get in this stage, but for clams, it is it is a little different. Then again, they have made it through the first six rounds, so they probably do have some kind of strategy. Um, considering the high number of splats that I imagine... Wait, I might even be able to check the number of assists here, because I have... Oh no, I forgot to turn off the the flashlight on my phone yesterday, and now my phone is all empty. But we have 3%. On those 3%, I'm going to check how many of those splats were assists. And then we know how much they coordinate there, or like in what way they coordinate their stingrays. Oh look, we have a nice party music. Oh, it seems like as the spectator I do not get that info. Yeah, okay. you, you unfortunately don't get that information. Moving on to game two. Again, best of five. So Payne will need to have a good comeback here if they want to win. And oh, they switch oh, it up oh. a little bit. They actually switched up. They, they have they been challenged. They 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 have been challenged. They know this is legit now. <laughs> they do have two jet squatchers still, um, but then they have an explosher and a dynamo. And I'm guessing no, no, that's no. prior on the dynamo. But but Falco, do you know what specials those have? I I absolutely see. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yep. We're still doing this. Oh. Yep. For some reason, I thought Pryor was on pain, but no, Pryor is on reflection. Okay, so, um, yep, still all Stingray, but slightly different weapons. But whereas pain might have the Stingrays, reflection at the moment, never mind, they had the clams until now. But they're still owning a lot of them up, of course, which will... They do have a power claim. They're keeping it back, keeping it with the heavy remix. And now the heavy remix is going to get a little bit of height advantage. And that's probably good for avoiding the stingray. You know, typically a ray is the most deadly when you're on the ground, because chances are they are on the ground as well. Oh, beautiful clam throw, though. I love that. But then is Pryor actually going to be able to pick it up? No, Pryor is not able to pick it up. And with that, nope, this clam is no lost. Score. But they do have another claim. They they took they took their power claim all the way back to to their base. So it looks like they're still gonna pick it up. But right now, Pain is gonna slowly push forward. Maybe we'll see the first score after a minute and a half in. That's a really good throwing position. Oh my gosh! The auto bomb. The auto bomb. Auto bomb. So 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 close. The chickens are still. They are still hurting, even after they all of are. this. Two players down on pain right now. Refuction is going to push it to the right side, but the one Drac is right there waiting. It looks like Johnny and is there in. We go. So the first score of the game after two minutes of play. And it is made by Reflection, who has already won the first game. But can they keep it up? There's There are a few clams in. Again, though, there in a, a competitive in. scenario. They, I want them to have one more. Oh, but look at how nice they are, like right behind the basket. There we go, there we go, they, they are, got the clam. They are, look Look where the, um, wow, I don't know how the uh, remix even got up there. I didn't know if you, you saw there right behind the basket. That was a really interesting position, but the basket is still open. They got all the way down to 50. That's a pretty good push. So again, now Payne is slowly pushing forward. They do have a lot of claims they can pick up. They are using two, three of their stingrays right now. Oh my goodness! I, I love it. I love it. I it is it is insane. It looks like they're slowly getting the kills, slowly slowly, picking up those clams. They do have a power clam that they might try and score pretty soon. Three on three. And um, of course, the armor that uh, reflection have is useful sometimes. But now this is the chance for Pain to get in their first clams, but they're not really close. This is a way, really for, a way stronger defense that Reflection is showing. 
Yeah, Reflection did a good job at defending the basket and just avoiding the Stingrays, making sure no players from Pain could get to the basket. So we're still seeing squarely a slightly, just ever so slightly stronger performance by Reflection. But there is enough time with 90 seconds to get in a few more clamps, but then it is actually Johnny from Reflection doing just that. It is. Looks like Pryor's going to try and take their claims to the basket, but they're down. Two players down now on Reflection, but they're still scoring. They're, they're really, really pushing this basket, which Koma's is also still trying. Oh, but they just barely, barely get splattered. And they keep trying. Like, usually I would expect them to, like, stay back and, like, recover, but they didn't go for that, and I think it might have actually been a mistake. Look at how much map control Pain was able to gain here. I know. They now own so much of the map, and here's the push. This push might have been a huge here's mistake a by Reflection, actually. Here's a push, they went too Pain, far. Pain doesn't have any, Oh, they still have two specials. 61 remaining. They'll need a few more clams. Reflection is waiting by the basket. Pain are... They're okay, very nice defense now. And they were wiped. Soft wipe there. I was about to say Reflection might have flown a little bit too close to the sun, but they were actually able, with their with their strong attack power, they were able to keep Pain away from the basket, even though Pain was in a really good position. They certainly did. Reflection now with the advantage. 20 seconds left. They do have a power clam. They're gonna maybe keep it alive, maybe slowly push forward. They did have mid, but now it looks like Pain is pushing up a little bit. Pain does have a power claim that they're taking. Pain quickly takes control of mid. And they have two power claims ready. <gasps> but can oh they have plenty the Tetras, of watch the Tetras handle that power claim. No, don't no way, it. no way, no way, no way, that failed. But <gasps> oh no way, they're still going, they're still going, they're still going. They're still going. They are wow. Of course, the counter clam. <laughs> Wonderful management by reflection with that power clam. Uh, in the meanwhile, chat by the way has uh turned to physics discussion about this whole reflection thing. So the question is, should the race, should the race, the race bounce back or should they not? And also, why is there not more ink armor on the side of reflection? Which actually makes me think that like, it would be kind of an interesting dynamic if, like, if ink armor would actually not just defend you against the ray, but also reflect it in your own. Or like maybe, yo, that's how you could nerf ink armor is like if you make it reflect the enemy ray, and so like it would still be tough for your team. Or I, I don't know. Maybe that's a dumb idea, but it sounds kind of funny. It's always fun to think about that stuff. Reflection taking the lead 2-0. If they win the next one, if they win game three, they will move on to the semifinals. Again, it's best of five. Um, Pain needs a reverse sweep in order to win. And we're already seeing the first results, by the way, of um, some of the other matches that are going on right now. So I, um, I did hear um, during during this match um, that the three Smurfs and the Smurf are having a really hard time against Barracuda, but they were actually able to win their third match, their third game. So Barracuda is currently leading 2-1 two to one against three Smurf and a Smurf. We have Arctic Moon being the first game, the first team to be confirmed in the semifinals. They're winning the 3-0. Let me actually... There you go. Arctic Moon defeating Vision, 3-0. The boys are currently trailing against friends, friends leading 1-0. So that is, uh, that is the only match so far where the team with the weaker position is actually leading. It's again friends. They were also surprising us last time. They were. We're just about to get started with game three. The Reef. And now, if Pain does not win this game, then that would be the 3-0 for Reflection. And wow. Well, that's still all Stingray, but, um... Well, I mean, they're still using that, too, Jets Crisis. But it's fun they to see are. all the weapon variation. It is. Um, you know, it's good to see... Good to see a Splatling, too. Honestly, this whole thing kind of makes me want to do team practice, but, like, like this. <laughs> kind of a half meme, half meme with your specials. <laughs> exactly. I'm gonna exactly, make everybody yep. play Inkjet. And it looks like Reflection takes the early cap. They are pushing down their score. But again, these rays, these rays are so deadly. And I know we're going to keep bringing it up. And I'm sure if we go on to game five, four and five, we'll talk about it more. But it is a uh, The problem is, is those rays don't paint. Rays really don't paint. That That's right. But three players down right now from Reflection. I'm actually surprised that they paint at all. They don't paint in um, Splatoon 1. But okay. This yep, might two be... Two right now. 
Payne's chance to maybe bring back the zone. But the timer keeps running, and like, look at how much trouble Ref uh, Payne is in right now. They, they certainly are in pain, and even when Reflection went three players down, Pain couldn't cap the zone. They finally do get the first cap, but barely just enough to give Reflection 39 penalty points. So Pain now oh, in this we... awkward position of having 99 plus two penalty. So um, technically they just reverse gained points, but um, still, of course, it's very important that you do stop that timer. It certainly is, and nobody has the zone yet. It's been neutral for a while. Again, three specials ready for pain. I wonder what those specials are, but <laughs> they, they don't get the cap. <laughs> um, Reflection takes the cap just barely enough to chip away a tiny bit of their penalty points. Two players are down now on pain. Cryo not quite making against the Stingray, but it is still Reflection at a higher number of players that are alive. And look at them trying to like aggress against those Stingray, against those Jet Swishers. You can see that they have realized, okay, as long as we get close to them, there is nothing to fear. Exactly. You really have to find a way to flank, find a way to get in front of their face. You know, don't... You want to make sure you're at the advantage there. Don't try to attack them from a distance. Again, the zone is neutral. It's been neutral for quite some time. Oh, two no. three players down <laughs> on reflection. Yeah, if you have two stingrays pointing at you, you just, just jump out. It's fine. Exactly. Now it's Reflection actually having the having the zone though, but I... Oh, that's actually a lot of map control. Yeah. So I was just about to yeah, say, paint. I think this is not going to be too strong, but like, that's a lot of map control. Okay, okay they're trying to, to approach now. So Reflection and is going And the bomb rush is ending it. Two minutes left. Very, very close. Pain has yet to take the lead yet. Maybe we should actually take a take a look at the specials that Reflection is running, because of course they also have their specials, and their specials actually make a lot of sense for Splat Zones. They have a Splashdown, they have a Booyah Bomb, they have a Bomb Rush, and then of course the Armor. But they have they three do. specials that paint, not just paint a lot, but also paint very, very quickly. That's true, and sometimes Booyah Bomb can be a little tricky with the bridge, you know, you don't want to accidentally throw it on top of the bridge, sometimes it's hard to get under right where you want it to be. But with that reflection, is going to take the zone now, again, chipping away at their penalty points. Really, this is kind of a slow zones match. Um, Which you don't see very it, much. You really don't, you really don't. Both teams are really just trying to get the kills before capping. Two players down now on reflection. But you also have to say, and like, if you are Team Pain, you wouldn't want to go with a quick cap because, again, you can't really defend yourself. So I think it's, in t to some extent, it's a playstyle that is being forced by by Pain right now. Reflection with their three painty specials probably would like to play play much more aggressively. Oh wow, that's a wipe against Reflection though. This could be huge. It is. It could be huge. We could see Pain taking the lead for the first time this match. Pain is gonna maybe. Oh, we see Arroyo flanking a little bit. Let's see if they try and go to the zone just to prevent them from taking the lead. Josh sees them though. Josh from pain. Can Josh... But you have to... This was this was another disadvantage for the Stingray though, because while... Okay, they're going to get the lead though and they're only 20 seconds... No, are they, are they not? Yep, they, are. they are, they are, are they, they are. Okay, okay, they are, they are. I was about to say, you see, while everybody is Stingray, you can't paint at all. Not just does the Stingray not paint, you're also like, you can't do anything about the opponent's painting. It's actually somewhat a, a huge disadvantage. But it still worked it out for them is. in the end. It made me really nervous. Again, it can Pain hold on to this for the win to move on to game four? No one had the zone. Pain wins. So this match is not quite over yet. We're going to see a match four, at least maybe even a match five. And um, I am hearing there is already one confirmed match five um, happening in these uh, quarterfinals right now is at least what Chad is telling me. Because Barracuda versus uh, three Smurfs and a Smurf. Yeah, they're at a 2-2-2 two, two, two right now. And they are playing their fifth match right now. So that is is quite, quite, quite fascinating. And of course, we might see just the same scenario in, in, this, uh, in this matchup. As, like, as we can see that Pain still um, with all of those Stingrays. Like, one thing you have to say is they have a lot of experience with their special. They um, absolutely do. 
And Snow, looking to game four, if you have Stingray as a special, what mode do you want to be playing? Oh, how about a mode where the objective moves in a predictable pattern and in straight lines, and the opponents are forced to be close to that objective? That would be kind of convenient. Oh, if yeah, only I, that was I a thing, so. right? Yeah, ah. I, you know, we'll be, we'll see what happens, but um, I could see Pain taking this one. I don't want to say quickly. If I had to, if I had to think who's going to win, I think it's going to be Pain. I think we will see Game Five, but I could be surprised. You know what's another really mean thing right now is in Wahoo World, there is this one particular section where the tower moves downwards, which means if you get taken down on that particular area, it's really, really hard to make it back um, onto the tower because the tower is literally in the air and you can't jump back up there. So, you know, there's this one special that we really good in that situation and Pain, I'm sure, is going to enjoy this. Otherwise, though, if it's going to be Rainmaker Game 5, well, it's Humpback, Humpback Pump Track. I feel like they're going to have a harder time. But for now, Tower Control in Wahoo World is what we are going to be watching. And I can see that Reflection is actually changing around their weapons a lot. Exactly. But they it's have not now worth also decided. looking into Game 5 if you're Pain at this point. You need to play one game at a time. If you lose this, you're done. There is no Game 5. But we're starting Tower, Wahoo World. Pain needs its win. If Reflection wins, they win the set. They will move on to the semifinals. And before we start the match, Jacob, thank you so, so much for the raid. I hope everything went well. So we do see a Charger now by Pain. And again, we oh. have the Gal and the two the two Jet Squatchers too. Because of course, when you have two Jet Squatchers, what you need is even more backline. Exactly. Whereas, despite all the swapping around, it seems like Reflection is going with the same weapons, but they did probably pick a different kit now. Mm -hmm. It looks like Pain does take the early tower. They're going to get to their first checkpoint. Again, three checkpoints on this stage. And this is did right you know at the Falco... point where you... Mm -hmm. uh, did you know Falco, um, Bomb Defense ac up actually has a protective effect against Stingray. Um, what it does is it makes it harder to see you through walls. Interesting. This, like, uh, this does... C3 effect yeah. is... Diminished. It doesn't look like um, any of uh, Reflection has that as their main. But these rays are proven to be deadly pretty early. Again, Pain doesn't really have the map control, but you don't need it at this point. And Pain is. Oh, yep, yep. Reflection That's is three down. Triple. Pain is going to push forward, get to the first checkpoint. Now, of course, since this is tower control, in tower control, a wipe like this isn't as decisive as this tower. It moves slowly. You see it count down from 10 slowly. It but does. they are you making it past really the first checkpoint. The speed of the tower. Yep. Getting all the way down to the second at 45 remaining. Three players down. Heavy Remix is alone. Heavy Remix is okay, trying gonna... to hide, but is taken down by the Jet Squatcher. I'm a little bit worried because we do have a, a no squid bag in wheel, but I think this charger did not splat anybody before, so it's fine. Two players but down now on with reflection. That. Two on two, pain so so close. Two on one, the jet squatcher jump is jumps up from the tower. In power and power from of course pain is, is finally huge down. Lead. Down to remaining thirteen. Yeah, reflection. They, I mean, the map already looks pretty even, but again, it's not a map control issue at this point it's really just taking out the backliners and it's hard as a junior you really have to rely on throwing the bombs it's hard as a tetra player uh, it's just overall hard for reflection to take out these jet squatchers and charger yeah you can really see the dominance that we were scared we might we might see in this match is actually is actually happening i can't believe like every time this camera goes up there's always a stingray always a stingray and but right now we already control, have I'm counting, we already have 13 Stingrays that have been used. Two two more are on reserve. <laughs> and we have a 3v2. Tower is at mid still. Three on three, tower still in mid. Again, I don't but see Pain see really taking the tower right now. and They just have to be in position for the last two minutes to defend. And they're going to do, I think, a wonderful job at these checkpoints. Again, Reflection hasn't even gotten to any checkpoints yet. And guess what? You have essentially 
four back, three, three and a half backliners and four chargers. Good luck getting past those checkpoints. I'm starting to get a little great though. Like we have been following Pain now for, for the past minute here and they really didn't get out of the corners that they were hiding in and now they are two down. So, so here's the I, first push by reflection. They are gonna grasp their chance here. But of course now, as I as I mentioned, this is the, the crucial spot for the tower and there is the Stingray. There so the tower the already moving back. Yep. Not quite to the first checkpoint yet though. And people who are joining the stream right now wondering, wait a second, is this double ray? And no, this is not double ray. This is something even worse. But at least this we're not seeing more ray. than two rays <laughs> at a time. Exactly, exactly. Again, two players down on reflection, just under a minute left. Pain does take the tower again. Luckily for them, since they already got past their checkpoints, they don't have to do that anymore. They can just kind of coast through, assuming they can hold off reflection. We do have one person trying to flank, but it doesn't oh, no, really work. They are down. So many stingrays. And of course, um, they also have their sub weapon against with burst bombs. Um, it helps them keep away the opponents. Okay, and, and keep them at range was exactly what they what they need right now. So at this Absolutely. point, if you want to play it safe, like try to just like stay in safe positions and throw all of your burst bombs. Now, wait, pain is three down though. Pain is three down. It looks like Reflection is going to take it. This might be their final push. They're going to approach their first checkpoint. Let's see what position Pain gets into. Maybe some There's GG the rays here at a checkpoint. But it's Johnny all alone. Johnny is all alone. Really, really hard to be alone here. But they and do no... get past the first checkpoint. He has one okay, of the rays. Armor, you do of have course. to hop off. Ooh, Did they just take down his flash down with a Stingray? Oh, oh, please. Oh, in the spot. That's a team wipe, and that is a win wow. for me. Wow. What a, what a way to uh, make it into match five. And Absolutely. also... Moving on to game five. Pain and Reflection, 2-2. Two, two. It could be Reverse Sleep. Let's find out. Also, three Smurfs and a Smurf. All of you guys, thank you for the raids. Yes, um, dude and Matkype, thank you, thank you so much for for writing the Ink Theory stream. Um, we are currently going through the quarterfinals, so I assume. Also, I'm sorry that <laughs> Robopoke is bonking everybody now. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, there's a there's a limit of how many emotes can be used in one message, I'm, but, but but it's kind of unfortunate during raids. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for Robopoke for everybody. But um, hello there. We are currently watching game five of Reflection versus Pain, and it is uh, quite an experience. <laughs> It is quite so an experience. I'm, <laughs> yes, I'm, I'm not going to spot it too much, but like for those who like literally like were just right at the start of the right here, you might have seen what is going on. But uh, yeah. Look yeah, they, uh, um, I can attention to that. <laughs> pay attention to the icon and pain. You see, uh, uh, you see a little a little cute little animal that we might see something related to that as a special. Again, mm -hmm. game five Rainmaker Humpback Pump Track. And let us update actually on the top eight, because I assume since Dude and Madcap just raided, they were both playing for three Smurfs and a Smurf. And so I would imagine, yes, so the match five between Barracuda and uh, three Smurfs and the Smurf, it did end in a 3v3-2-2 three two two for Barracuda. So we are going to see Barracuda in the semi-finals in the next round. Um, it's already updated here on the overlay, so you can see three Smurfs, one Smurf very, very closely, very barely not making it into the semi-finals. But making it into the top eight. And so we're going to see Barracuda, we're going to see Friends, we're going to see Arctic Moon. But will we experience more pain in the next round? We will have to see. And of we course, for all of those see. teams that are making it into the semifinals, they will be guaranteed to then play another match, either Grands or Bronze. So the good thing, like, if you want to see it from the good side, the teams that are losing this round, um, they they get to take a break and like this is a long tournament so I'm I'm somewhat like to some extent I am I am happy for them but of course like despite despite this being exhausting everybody is trying their best and it is very exciting to see this one more game to show you guys game five humpback pump track rainmaker winner moves on to the semifinals. Um, also, Milana, thank you very much for the for the sub. I appreciate it a lot. Um, have a lot of snowfall fun. 
and hopefully not a lot of pain. There are now three ink jets. Uh, sorry, jet squashers. Three jet squashers, one gal. Again, Rainmaker could be a very quick mode, could be a very long mode. None of these matches have been very, very quick, so we'll see. It looks like Pain is pushing up. They are getting a very good push. Getting Whoa, all the way really to far. 15. Incredible and that push is like, by Pain. That's a very strong push. Of course, this is Black Belly Skyproc. Black Belly Skyproc, you haven't won until you until you have KO'd. But at the end of the day, you do still see a few matches that do actually like not get KO'd on this map. And with the remaining 15, that is very, very decisive. It is. We have a three on three battle. The Rainmaker's probably going to get reset, especially with two players down from Pain. Oh, nope. It looks like somebody from Reflection takes it. They are now at mid. It looks like they are going to go right. They have Prior. They have um, Arroyo working okay, the pain with is ready. them. Are we going to see another one of those humpback Rainmaker? Oh, no. Oh, no. Is this actually? Yep. I love this. Johnny, okay, let's go, Johnny. The Rainmaker. No way. Just shy. The first bomb ends it. 3v3. Pain now picks up the Rainmaker. Nobody wants it to reset. Everyone wants to grab it. They're two players down. It looks like they're going to get caught. And Pryor's having a hard time chasing them. Pryor and Johnny do get them. Three players down now from Pain. Early pop by by Reflection. They're going to take And this time they it. seem to be going left way. Ooh, they're taking it left way. Yeah, don't forget, left way exists on this... Ah, uh, of course, Stingray. Uh, left way exists on this map. And oftentimes it can make for a much, much safer push. And even if you're pushing from the right side, consider flanking from the left if you're attacking. It really surprises Absolutely. a lot of people. Absolutely. Pain now, again, map control really hasn't been their strong suit, especially with their weapons and their subs. But Pain now taking it to the side. They're just trying to navigate their own little path. They have the lead, gets it over to the right side, just, just on the edge. And I can kind of see that, like, as as Team Pain with, like, all long-range weapons, you would want to go this this long route. Because, of course, like, in, yeah. if, if you go left, yeah, you're kind of setting yourself up for, for a long-range, for a short-range battle. Absolutely. Whereas you can see if you go the long route, you can just all be, like, safe in the distance and still hit with your special or your main weapon. Definitely. We have two rays waiting, and I, I feel like if any player from Reflection picks it up, we're going to see a ray. Oh, but Tenta Missiles. Tenta Missiles are great to help displace the rays. I, that's why I love Tenta Missiles. I always use them against backlines if I can only target one or two players. And okay, Reflection not just quite slowly getting pushing it. Oh, wait. Look at the, 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 the jumper. Just barely... I saw it. <laughs> it's always exciting if you catch one of those death jumpers. Absolutely. Three on three right now. And the Rainmakers reset, I think, for the first time this match with just under two minutes left. Now both and teams are waiting how... for the player advantage before picking up the Rainmaker. Pain keeps using their, their ability to use their, their range advantage, advantage, but now they are two down, so this is another chance for Reflection to push the Rainmaker, but they still, I, I don't understand why they, they, they keep going the, the right, the long route, because I feel like it would be way more advantageous for them to go left, more consistently. Reflection gets so but, close every time, can Pryor take the lead? Pryor oh, is going to take my words. the lead, oh, and it's a wipe! And that's it's a complete a team wipe! It's a wipe, this Reflection is going to be KO, I think. We're going to win! Reflection holding but, on, saving from the reverse sweep. Reflection Never takes a mind. Set. So we're not gonna we're not gonna see more pain in the next round. Uh, we will not have to switch to Genshin Impact. We can continue watching Splatoon without without hurting. I I am glad though uh, this was in in some way actually very enjoyable. That was very very enjoyable. I'm gonna hear those stingray noises in my nightmares when I'm trying to sleep tonight. But <laughs> Reflection takes the set, preventing the reverse sweep. Moving on, and they are going to move on to face the undefeated, undefeated team. Absolutely, they will be playing against Arctic Moon. So yeah, as I mentioned, Arctic Moon, um, still as they are the entirely undefeated team, they still get to play against the number four team instead of the number three team, which actually, never mind, Friends defeated the boys. As, uh, as we've seen, like Friends really defeating all of those teams that are placed above them. So... Um... <laughs> That means that even against Barracuda, who's placed position number two, so like I think the only like one of the few teams that were only defeated once, this still 
Like, you don't really know what's going to happen here. You really don't. We finally have, I think, oh no, we haven't seen Arctic Moon play yet, but we did see Barracuda play in the very first set, and we saw Friends play in the very last set. Exactly. Like usually I would say, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to release you. Like I'm going to, I'm going to finally let you see Arctic Moon because like, I'm sure everybody wants to see the strongest, the, the so far strongest team play, but Friends is on such an, such an exciting, uh, such an exciting trend here of defeating all the teams that are stronger than themselves that I kind of want to see that. I want to see if they're actually able to make it from position number six, from like barely, like when we saw them in game number six, they were nearly kicked out of top eight. And now we're wondering, are they going to make grand finals? Is that what we're going to see? Is this the ultimate reverse comeback? Or like comeback, comeback, I guess? We'll find out. It's so, it is so exciting. Again, glad we could take that one all the way to game five on a... Prevented reverse sweep. Those are always very exciting. Anytime it goes to game five is always exciting, but what an incredible top eight we have so far. And the top eight, sorry, the semifinals, they will also be best out of five. And uh, the maps you could actually take a little bit of a sneak peek to um, earlier. But That's I right. already They're forgot the most of them. <laughs> we accidentally uh, showcased those, but what's great is... Um, Snow, we get a double dose of clam blitz in the semis, oh, potentially. Beautiful. We don't know for sure. If if it's a if it's a best out of five, I guess. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. If it's a like you know game five, what I kind of yeah. like to do, what you might have noticed, and what was actually called, what was actually called out, um, in in chat two, is like you know humpback pump track rainmaker is you know it's a it's a very very tough, very speedy map, and I like to do that for game fives. I like to do um super exciting super sweaty game five maps where it is like a little bit like one of those maps where like things can end very very quickly but they might also not so i'm actually curious to see what and what have i come up with for the semi-finals here we will see in a second oh wait wait a second Oh, I'm pressing the wrong buttons, I see. Sorry, yeah, this this one button that isn't doing what I expected it to do. So the modes are currently not right, but we're going to see Clam Blitz on the Reef, if that is the case. That's right, yeah, Clam Blitz is the correct mode. Um, there we go. On Kelp Dome. There, yep, there we go. Wait, didn't we say something about Piranha Pit earlier? Um, are we not starting... Or was that was that actually I, the quarterfinals? Th that was just in the last set, so we're, we're oh, good now. Oh, I see. I see. Okay. Oh, I remember. Yeah, there were a lot of stingrays. I, yeah, it's gonna it's gonna stay in my memory now. <laughs> we got Kelp Dome. It's a really big stage. Claims are scattered everywhere. You never know which way somebody is. Well, you know, typically they they push the right side to score, but you could have those adventurous people who kind of go around or take the greats. But I I kind of do like this map mode combo. It's um it's different, it's hard, but I I enjoy it. I love that you can do the strat. The strat, exactly. The strat. We'll you can throw clowns from the, the middle of the map, which is just absolutely beautiful. Um there's this thing, so since the maps in Ink Theory are based on the ranked rotations, um it's actually like the maps themselves is actually not like decided by me. So um, there is like thanks to Nintendo giving us those those rotations. There's always like this one or two one or two maps that are like usually by the competitive community to be considered like a little bit janky. But I have to admit I kind of enjoy putting them into the tournament because it's always nice to see how the teams perform on these maps and to see um, you know maybe also giving them giving them a little chance because I I personally I also I enjoy this map mode combo very much. I like shouting the strat every time I throw a clam from the middle and I may or may not do that if I see that during this match too. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if we see it because again, if if you don't know what the strat is, you you certainly will once we see it on stream. But it's very it's very unique the kelp dome because typically you you can't throw a clam in. I'll, I'll say you can't play the objective from this position normally but 
This is I, I like this map mode combo as well. Yeah, it adds, it adds a very nice amount of flavor because you always have to like at least at a at a high level. Like at a lower level, people won't be aware of of like how this whole thing works. But at a higher level, whenever the opponent is pushing, you always have to check is somebody able to throw from mid because they will keep the basket open. They absolutely will. If they, you know, you can only throw one clam in at a time, but they they could keep it up if they have their clams ready. It's hard, but if you have teammates who are distracting and maybe even throwing in clams on a, I'll call it a regular push, doing quote unquote the strat is very crucial. And now the players have gotten ready, picked their weapons, and we get to see the first match between Barracuda and friends. They kind of, honestly, they kind of sound like they belong together, Barracuda and friends. <laughs> Semi-finals, best of five, game one starting. And yes, as has been added in chat, you cannot do this with the power clam. You can only throw a single small clams. Oh, blah, blah, blah. Both teams have juniors as well. It looks like three of the four members from Barracuda are gonna take the right side. The other one is gonna go around the left to take a mid. But right now they have two players down. Friends quickly, quickly getting those kills. And again, friends are the underdogs in this match. Somewhat. <laughs> they are they are the underdogs, but they're also the ones that keep winning as the underdog, so who knows? Are they gonna have the first push already? Happy is collecting their clamps. They don't quite have enough though. And they do get taken down. Legend now collecting up their clamps, but they are at seven. We have the bomb rush. Everybody, everything seems to be played as if they're getting ready for a push, but then it just doesn't work out. And now we have Barracuda at three specials ready. Four specials ready. I'm not a big fan of like waiting with every single special, but now they're actually, they're actually going and they have the power clamps that friends did not have earlier. Definitely. And, you know, coordinating your specials is really crucial when you're trying to score, when you're trying to push in the power claim and get your support claims in. They score, but they are two players down and they're wiped now. No, no, uh, no follow-up claims for Barracuda. So after all, this might actually have been to their disadvantage since they now give a pity clam to two friends and they might be able to now do what they haven't been able to do earlier. And with that pity clam, of course, it is somewhat easy to follow up in competitive. Just, it doesn't work every time. It is. Looks okay, like there's friends the clam. is going to make a strong push. Other one is coming. Yep, they get, they get two power claims in and three, three support claims. Just one player alive now on friends who's in mid, probably gonna get caught. Yep, they are splatted. Okay, they were probably doing a, a certain strategy that we might have hinted at. But of <laughs> course it is, you are somewhat vulnerable if people actually look out for it. Okay, right now, all the players are really just spread out. You'd say Barracuda, they, they had a mid, but it looks like they're kind of losing it. But they are taking advantage of the entire map. All these players are really, really spread out. Capdome, it does provide, like, not just what we saw earlier in zones, also in clams, it does provide with some very dangerous flanking, flanking routes. And you also have to be careful, like, is somebody going to flank through tree? Is somebody going up the grades? Is somebody going to throw through middle if the boss is already open? You never know, but here's another push by Barracuda. Oh, and another power clam, and they do take the lead. Let's see, we have the heavy remix is going to go back. They might try and get a clam to do the strat or take care of the slosher. So they do get... They do get two power claims in, take the lead with 41. Both teams have 24 penalty points remaining. They were able to push friends at a huge disadvantage there with only one player left. But of course, they were able to recover, recover quickly. And do have control over a lot of this map now. There's Isaac with the power clam. And again, it's that double section mem rush that we saw in the earlier rounds. Oh no, the burst bomb! Sorry, the splat bomb! But Isaac makes it, makes it past. <laughs> the power claim goes in, but three players down now on friends. Just the junior this push who is, over. is back over kind of by their own basket. And you see now Tetras making sure nobody's flanking over tree, but also painting a little bit in an area that has previously been unpainted or uncontrolled by them. Nice blast done. Tons of claims at mid right now. Three players again down on friends. Barracuda, they they want to hold on to this lead. But 
it looks like one of the players from Friends is slowly pushing up, but no no power claims are formed yet. Yeah, I like that chicken support by two, but now, of course, since there are only two players left, um, chicken support not going to help much anymore. And now Friends is finally taking over map control. They do need a power claim form pretty soon. Are able to survive this interaction with the ends up. And here we go, here's the clam. But there's a lot of defense coming claim. up from the basket. Mm -hmm. And we again, the scary shot bombs. Up. Can they get one more splat? Because that would be huge. But they're not. Instead, they get splatted themselves. Well, they do. Have, it's a, they now have two players left. Barracuda has two players left. It looks like Happy is going to slowly push it. And they do score. Just one claim will take the lead. Can oh, no, get I one see claim what's happening. The strat! The strat the made strat! it! it the it strat! Happened. It happened! It came from middle. Here we go. Beautiful. You can't see it. Can I move the... Oh, no, I don't know. How do I even... Wait a second, I, I, okay, I'm gonna go back to autocam, I'm sorry. <laughs> Don't worry about it, it's, Friends still has a basket open, they're still scoring, Beautiful. they might not get the KO. Basket's still open, but if they score, can they keep it though? If they score one, no, Happy has no claims right now, and it's a oh, trade. Oh no! So it looks like Barracuda's gonna get pity, let's see how, they're, they're probably gonna jump. So somebody's gonna I grab it. I think they're it. gonna, yeah, they're gonna get that clam and we might get, oh no, they're oh no, right that's a lot basket. of jumpies, that's a lot of jumpies! Ooh. But the power clam, the other is power clam didn't get in. Now let's can air. They will need one more clam. No, 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 no way. They need one more clam. There's one player. They have the third way. That's it. How did they survive for that long? <laughs> how did oh the heavy God. remix stay alive for that long? Oh my goodness. What a beautiful, what a not crazy, so comeback. What a crazy, crazy ending to that match. The moment I saw those two power clams, I was worried, oh my gosh, I think I know how this is going to end. But then by just one single clam, they weren't able to win. And why is their Octoshot A ranked but has 12 spots? I have no idea. Somebody really doesn't like clam biz, I guess. <laughs> what, they're also level 54. It could be an alt account. Either way, I'll admit the beginning part of that match was a little slow. It was, you know, not much back and forth. But man, that last minute, that kept us on our toads. Incredible. Definitely, definitely. And um, yes, so there are questions. Wait a second, there was a tie, I thought. And in Splatoon, you can't actually tie. So the way it works is the team that got that gets to 10 first, in this case, is the one that is going to win. And since France got the counter down to 10 first, um, the win got to went to them. Had Barracuda yeah. gotten this opening first, um, they would have won the match. So it was incredibly close. It was incredibly close, and that's how, you know, all modes are. You actually can't tie. If you do tie in, you know, Splat Zones, Tower, Rainmaker, you will just get one added to whatever you actually got to. Yeah, I, I sometimes wonder, um, having a tie, if that would be nice, especially every time I lose because of this tie rule, I, say, I think, hey, maybe, maybe ties would be cool in this game, but... Um... You know, it's always it's always exciting to win such a such a close match. Also, by the way, like there are so many wonderful people in chat right now. I want to say hi, but I like you know you never can say hi during a tournament because there's a tournament happening. But hi, game two, okay, Splat starting. Zones, mate to Maria. And yes, you also can't tie in turf and not in zones, which is what we are heading towards right now. Double zones again. A lot of double zones this time around. We see an early cap by uh, Barracuda. Two players down now on Friends. Barracuda's going to push up control. a little bit, watching the Junior and watching the Neo Splash. Barracuda's still working on their map control, especially pushing upwards. Friends trying to flank, but now they have two players down. Barracuda has one down. And in zones, you do have this issue. Like, the, if they have this control, can can friends actually like recover it? And you see, like, you see a few blobs coming through. But usually, if you're blowing from that far away, you can't really spot anybody. The bomb rush doesn't make it oh. either. Yeah, your blobs on are mode, be honestly, weaker. Would probably work, but Manta is a very large map. And let's see, if friends can cap. They really, really need to cap if they want to give penalty points to Barracuda. Ooh, and oh, there's a blue bomb that's. Oh, they did. They capped and three. That's a wipe. That's a wipe by friends. Barracuda is going to have to start fresh from spawn. Friends, they're going to push up. The board is now flipped. Barracuda having, sorry, friends having the map control. And you're going to, again, see all of those suction bombs. We really have seen a lot of suction rush today. 
Oh, somebody, uh, somebody flanked. It looks like it's the Kenza Dynamo who kind of flanked around, but they couldn't regain the zone. Friends is continuing to push it down. Two players down on Barracuda. And as we see this, the counter is going down and down, probably even getting the lead here for friends, as there was another three people down for Barracuda. They now have to recollect. At this point, they might even have to give up on the lead and already just decide, okay, let's make sure to not get KO'd here. And I think that's exactly how this is going. Exactly. Friends, they, they take the lead, continue a wonderful lockout, protecting from all angles. Barracuda, they they have some last minute well, attempts. Booyabon last doesn't make attempts. it either. Ooh, can the dynamo can they get do it? anything? Not even. There was nothing because they were just like they weren't. There was not enough time to coordinate, so they were just hopping in one by one. There was the the desperation booyah bomb, and then like after the desperation booyah bomb was already stopped, then there was the dynamo, and like both of those together maybe could have done something, but of course there just was no time. So no time, and again, that's why splat zones is so crazy. It can kind of snowball a little bit. If you're down, your enemies, they're going to protect themselves. They're going to spread out. They're going to take that map control and prevent all flanks possible. Falco, are we actually going to see friends winning again like this? We might, we might. And we have Tower and Piranha Pit coming up next. It's, it's going to be a good one. Mookveen is pointing out, we've been watching a blob throw blind shots over a wall for two minutes. Yes, we have, and they ended up winning. <laughs> it is very encouraging for any, any blob lover main. Sadly, from all the blob lover experience that I have, it doesn't actually work like that if you don't know what you're doing. Absolutely. And I'm also looking at our other match right now, and it's actually tied 1-1. So Reflection does get a win on Arctic Moon. They're in game three right now. Oh, wow. That's... So Arctic Moon actually is being challenged here. It would honestly, I would feel a little bit bad for Arctic Moon if they lose here and they ended up not end up not being on stream at all. Because of course they were like they are so far undefeated. But there is still a lot of a lot of match left. This is after all a best out of five. People are asking for a logo for friends. <laughs> I wonder if they uploaded one last second, but I don't think so. Barracuda needs this win to stay alive and potentially get a reverse sweep. I don't want to jinx them because that may have been what happened <laughs> to uh, this this uh, pain. But we're getting ready for game three. Tower control on Piranha Pit. And we see a knot now. We see a Nautilus from Friends. Switching around their specials a little bit. So that's They're double inkjet actually. That is double inkjet from the it looks like the splash and yep and the knot. Three players oh, down on the working. And friends, they're going to get to the first checkpoint with a player advantage too, so they'll probably coast right through this. They do have one of the, they had their uh, their splash ink jetting, which definitely helped out, and they might quickly approach the second checkpoint. But there are players flanking from behind, so they do get to the checkpoint, but unfortunately... Oh, they're they're on it now, three on three. Happy still on, but now friends in considerably less safety. Oh, Cat's still there! Oh, Cat's still managed to, to sneak by, but so they're now attacked by no, everybody. Typically, oh, you wow, wouldn't the get inkjet, on the, the inkjet, tower the inkjet, like the inkjet. <laughs> Typically, you wouldn't get on the tower like that, but you know you just have half a second to get past that checkpoint. Getting past the checkpoint is crucial. That's where it's kind of okay to feed. It's kind of... Oh, and that's a team wipe. That is a team wipe by friends against Barracuda, approaching the third checkpoint. They really want to have this sweep. And they quickly get past the third checkpoint. Three on three. Can they stay on the tower? Can Just they stay here? Just a little bit of time left. Isaac is on it. Oh, two takes it. Two takes it. Two that takes was trying it. a little bit close, but look at the map control. There's no map control. They're trying again no now. Storm painting like crazy. And that is game. Friends wins 3-0, moving on to the finals. What just happened? How are they so strong? Incredible matchup. Let me let me reiterate, chat. This team was not that strong in the top eight. The power of friendship, the power of friendship seems to get tighter and tighter in every round. Okay, now I want to see which teams did they actually lose against. Because they lost against two teams throughout this tournament. 
And now there aren't a lot of teams left because France literally just reached the grand finals of this tournament. And right now, so who it's did still, they lose to? It's still one-one. Arctic Moon in reflection. Again, we will keep you updated as soon as we know the score. We can actually try to see if we can make it into their lobby, but I assume not. But we can try. I might as well try. We'd love to see Arctic Moon. Um, again, like you said, I'd hate to have a team go undefeated in the Swiss rounds and we not get to showcase them based on who made the top cut. But um, yeah, Bear Barracuda, GG's, friends, congratulations. Moving on to the finals. Sweeping Barracuda 3-0. So in the first round... We had... Okay, I'm going through the list right now. Let me see if I can find friends. They lost against three Smurf and a Smurf, actually, friends. 2-2-1. Two, two, so there was Milana, Barry, Mudcup, and Barry's team. So that was their first loss. And then in the second round... They won against Tidal Wave. There was another strong team that did not quite make it into top eight. Third round, friends defeated Healthy Food Diet Groups. Oh yeah, we talked about that one, I remember. Fourth round, France defeated Liquid Zone. And then fifth round... Oh, they might have actually... Yeah, I might. they might have actually just lost one game, and that was the one in their very first round. So I think that was why they were... Oh, excuse me, we need to... Swap the scenes. Um, that was probably why they were placed so low at the start, was because they lost their very first game. And if you lose your very first game, then like that messes with like all of your matchups. It will have you like over time. It will keep matching you up with like slightly weaker teams. And so that will also have an impact on your like opponent win average, basically. And that's how you have this like somewhat lower position. But yeah, after this one loss in the very first round, they did actually win everything. So at this point, it's kind of hard to tell how things would go against either Reflection or Arctic Moon. That's certainly true. Um, I'm having trouble loading Twitch for some reason, but... Um, you know, I, really impressive performance by friends. They, they deserve to be in the finals. Very, very strong. And keeping you updated with Arctic Moon Reflection, we're going to try and hop into that match. We'll let you know if we do. We do know Arctic Moon is now winning 2-1. to one, So yes. they may already be starting this match, and if Arctic Moon wins, then they would win the set. Again, anytime we can show you guys a match, we will do our absolute best to get you in there. Okay, it seems like we will actually be able to join. That would be exciting. Wait, what? No password? Wait a second, but this is... Let me see if I can get into this. Wait, I shouldn't have said no password. I, you don't, you don't know who is in this lobby. No, this is, this is. Oh my gosh, this password was so. Yeah, sorry. I just, I, I totally didn't just make it into this lobby without a password. No, 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 no. Um, <laughs> I. No, oh, I, they also I, forgot to set you, Falco. But I mean, it's understandable oh, with this like <laughs> last second, with this last second thing. So I will. Uh, we're gonna be watching Rainmaker on Sturgeon Shipyard. I want to see if we have. If we have this overlay, I assume it's... Oh, there we go. And it's... Uh, okay, the numbers aren't quite up to date yet. Of course, the, the background staff is like rushing to, to get these numbers right um, as we are swapping the matches that we are spectating. Also, um, actually, Falco Doctor did also send a message in the Discord saying that he was having issues watching Twitch. So there seems to be a little bit of an issue. Um, Which, in that case, yeah, I... um, hi, <laughs> hi, YouTube. I guess you're all watching this on YouTube now afterwards. So um, hi there. Yeah, I'm trying on my phone and my desktop, and I unfortunately can't connect. Um, are you able to see chat right uh, now? Yes, and some people seem to still be there. Uh, okay. There are a few messages still, but there is there was a bit of a gap. Like between 2321 to 2324, I also did not see any chat messages. So I guess there are a few people, a few privileged people who are watching, who are able to watch this stream right now. And um, as are we, we are just as privileged, being able to hop into this lobby even though there we go even though this is not the one we decided to spectate at first so for all of you who are able to watch this match um arctic moon versus reflection arctic moon at the moment leading two to one 
and we are at the semifinals of Ink Theory. We're already having the very first thing, right? Kind of... <laughs> I'm kind of getting nervous uh, after after remembering some of the, the earlier interactions that we had with Stingray. But this time, actually, there is only one Stingray in this matchup. We also, again, with the Flingsa... I'm not sure, does Vanilla Flingsa have Suction Bomb Rush? I'm not entirely sure. I've kind of started falling in love with Suction Bomb Rush, honestly, after seeing the, the previous matches. Suction Bomb Rush is a fun one, and I mean, especially for those modes where you really want to push just some Okay, now we have three down. Oh, quad though, quad. Uh, Arctic Moon is wiped. And now Reflection pushing through the left side, trying to go for a little bit of a, of a, of a sneakier push, but of course this is a very, very difficult choke point. Getting down to remaining 37. That is quite a good lead on this map, actually. That's a fantastic lead. Very excited to see if Arctic Moon will be able to recover this in the upcoming four minutes. So otherwise, we're going to have a game 5 here. Now they just reset the Rainmaker. But they have no map control to make it able to, to be able to go through the middle, which means Reflection is probably just going to pick it up right again. Three people just around the, the Rainmaker, waiting for this Booyah Bomb to explode. And now here we go, Johnny now very close to the Rainmaker, picks it up. And we have got another attempt by Reflection. At painting, oh, there we go. Not quite, not quite able to to take down the Booyah bomb, but as long as long as they have a lot of a lot of ground to move on, I guess reflection is fine here. Io does need a splat though. Everybody is awkwardly alive at the moment, and I think yeah, the Rainmaker they won't be able to move the Rainmaker f much further as long as Io does not get another splat. And sadly, they did not quite do that. Instead, now gets better themselves. Only one player left for Reflection. So this marks the end of this push. And we have even fewer people being able to watch Twitch runner as I am getting the information from from Discord. So, um, yeah, um, hi, hi. Like, if you're watching this afterwards, I, thank you. Thank you very much for checking the YouTube of this, of this, uh, of this tournament. <laughs> I'm going to be curious to see if we're going to be able to see Grant. I hope so. It's going to be streamed anyways. I, I, can, I can do this alone. I mean, Falco, you're in Discord, so you can still hear me. I can still hear you, and I can see the gameplay, but it's delayed by five or seven seconds or so. Ouch. I do see Arctic Moon trying to make a good push. Wait, so you can watch Twitch. Well, whatever, they are, anyways, they're trying to push now through the sponge. Sorry, I'm so confused over what is happening. But um, pushing over the sponge actually would give them a lead. So they are very lucky, Reflection very lucky that with this with this suction bomb rush, they are able to get a huge amount of map control. And therefore, Reflection, oh sorry, therefore, Arctic Moon not able to take the lead in this matchup. We have now 90 seconds left here. And the map is very even. Also, welcome back, chat. And goodbye, Sparrow. who just got hit by a one of one of those sneaky spot bombs. Oh, I just saw that. Now we had two people going down on the side of reflection, which means Arctic Moon, of course, since they do not have a lot of time left, they will have to move forward. Now, even though this through this somewhat difficult terrain, now carefully recovering a little bit of map control. They have one one K shot who's trying to keep reflection back. Here we go. Here's the push. Dark is going. Io does not does not manage to do the flank. Two people down. Io Dark Dark still having the death of Sponge. Sponge not making it. Arctic Moon is down now. That's a wipe. Only 40 seconds left, and Reflection will be able to get a little bit of map control. But look at how much map Arctic Moon is having right now. So this might still be neutral even after this. So Arctic Moon might get another chance, but there are only 30 seconds left. Here we go, they've got the Rainmaker ready, got a little bit of paint around them. Not enough to push through immediately, but you wouldn't want to do that anyway. It's just said, oh no, the, the, the Tetris, the Tetris, the Tetris. Are the Tetris going to end this match? Dark in huge trouble. No, the Tetris are down. Dark still alive, but Dark now in the corner. And there's an Inkset, Inkset, and there's a Splat Bomb. They keep going. Dark now in the corner, deep in the corner. There's a Splat Bomb rush now. No, they keep going. They had all the specials suddenly. 
And that's the game for Arctic, sorry, for Reflection. What a way wow, to end a, this. What a crazy match. Um, I'm just now getting caught up on Twitch again. I, I, I wish I could have been in that match. Hopefully I'll be in the next one here. Moving on to game five. And in fact, we do now have chat back again. Um, hello. Hello, you, you wonderful people in chat who are still who are still here. Um, I so it seems like things didn't entirely entirely break down because people were apparently still able to watch the stream just just alone. So um, that I mean I mean that that happens. I I hope like I have I have blankets here so I can. I don't know, I can wrap the, the microphone in a blanket if you'd like, so you, like, you might be alone, but you're still, you're like, nice. All wrapped and cozy, if you would prefer that. And also, I'm getting help desk info. Did they just accidentally mark this as a KO? Oh, okay, we're working on it, we're working on it. Anyways, despite... Game five. <laughs> despite uh, <laughs> and all the things that are going on right now, we get to see a game five, exactly, Falco. And as you mentioned, it's going to be the second Clamplets match. It is. And what's interesting, you know, these matches, it's gone Arctic Moon Reflection, Arctic Moon Reflection. You know, if the pattern holds up and it's Clamplets again, Arctic Moon should win. Will they win? We will find out. I'm glad I'm back in the match. Glad, <laughs> glad I'm here. Um, it's going to be a really, really good one. Both of those teams are um, like organized team, they're not pickups. So that, of course, I think always is an advantage in in clams. Um, I think it was wasn't it reflection where like one of the players I, I might I might be making things up right now, but wasn't it reflection where like one of the players was S ranking clams? Though again, that was like probably an alt account, but like you know, <laughs> you know, if there's if yeah, there's a preference, it, it of course, then you really don't want to see game five in clamblets. It is funny to see, you know, you're you're playing at top. I would say, I'd argue top level competitive play, and you know, seeing somebody who's not X rank there. But I mean, we know their skill. And Clan Blitz game five, it's gonna be a good one. It's surprising to see like how even at a very high, very high level, there's this one mode that is sometimes a little bit neglected. But of course, that's a huge chance for like the other teams to then make up for it in tournaments. And over here at Ink Theory, you always have the same number of matches in any mode. So, um, so like not doing, not doing one of the modes is usually not a good idea. We're just about to get started. Again. Clam Blitz on the reef. I think those are very similar loadouts, but we do have a Hydra now. So that's going to actually be double armor for Arctic Moon. But of course, Hydra not as good at spamming armors as the Anzap is. That is probably yeah, the designated like player for We have that. a three on three already. Arctic Moon, they do have a power clam. The Anzap is passing it to the Hydra. Somebody's flanking already, and it looks like it's the Knot. The Knot takes down the Hydra. And there's oh, also, and gonna, oh no, that's the first clam. Yep. And so this is a reflection, side. sneaking past through street with their um, with their roller, and they keep throwing clamps. They're down to fifty three already, and we still have what two players good. alive there. But now two in with good the bubbles. Push. Oh no, Prior nearly able to throw in a few more clamps. But there's the end of this push at fifty three though. With just one minute in, that's a really really strong showing. Yeah, they did have a power claim that were, they were trying to work with, but couldn't quite get it there. Three on three. Um, map control belongs to both teams right now, or neither, I guess. But two players down now on Arctic. Are we dark all alone with the power clam here? But I like how they're always throwing the power clam back to the Hydra. That's usually the recommended strat that you like give it to the backliner, because the backliner is visible anyways. Yeah, the backliner is always going to be visible. They're not really going to be pushing forward too much so you're not as inclined to get them but it's it the next push. Like it looks like reflection Sony does extending break it a little bit coma flex is still there but no clams so they are a little bit of a distraction johnny keeps going two more clams but now there's not a lot to, to keep up i see io in the back does not it's not going to be able to make it to the basket though But now that's already down to 38, which means that Arctic Moon will need three power clams 
and then still not quite have the lead. Yeah, but, but they do like have Arctic their specials ready. Doing a good job pushing. They had bubbles. They have two power claims. They booyah right by the basket, but not quite enough to push. They are two players down. Reflection doing a very good job defending. They were doing a really good job at pushing until they died. And now, with all of those plats that Reflection is getting, they're able to just oh, push another... Just and they claim. missed. <laughs> it happens. It just, happens. But, but they're, they're, still, going, they're, going they're doing the same thing yep. again. They're pushing through the side here. This is so well coordinated. They're doing the exact same thing again, and they're getting away with it. Absolutely. Two players down now from Reflection. Oh, somebody's flanking to get prior. They do, but it looks like Johnny's going to get a few claims in. Gets all the way down to 16. Two players down. Can Coma, the not, get any claims in? Probably not. They're backing up. Giving up top mid to Arctic Moonbird. Otherwise, still a fairly balanced, uh, still fairly balanced painting. Now Arctic Moon has a lot of clams. But of course, the question is, can they survive? Can they survive two this players might... down from Reflection? Okay, if they can get that spot, that's, there we go. This is the huge chance, though. This is the huge chance for Arctic Moon. They have to do this now. Huge chance. They get two power claims in. Now they're going to try and follow up and get a ton more. And okay, they are they're doing a really good job. Minute and a half Now left. also two going through the side. But this time two got stopped. Two got stopped. This is not working out as well as it did for Reflection. Twig trying to throw in another clamp, trying to keep it open, but it doesn't work out. They only make it down to 39, which is good for a first push. But there were definitely some some ways this could have gone better if they uh, hadn't lost a um, hadn't lost in the street. Yeah, this is a time you don't want to have a lot of penalty points, and unfortunately, both teams do. But one power clam from Reef, um, from reflection will take care of take care of the penalty points. But it looks like we have only one minute Arctic left. But there is still there's another power more. clam that they also missed. They did get one okay, in, though. Okay, now one is in. Can any Dark oh, they up. Get, they, 26. Yes, they took That's the lead. lead. But they're three down. Okay. That's the gal trying to There's still one left, though. There's Twig on top can throw in another clan, maybe. They do. There just go, three more in. clans. Did they win? Oh, they finally take down the gal. So it looks like 30 seconds left. Reflection is going to need to try and make a really, really strong push here to come back 30 and seconds. take the lead. And keep in mind, this is game five. There is not going to be any game after this. Nope, this is all that counts right now, these next 20 seconds, and potentially more. And the penalties are plus 20 for Reflection, plus 30 for Arctic Moon, so any push might actually change it. Reflection does have to get any push, though, though right now. They do have the power clamp, so they do get overtime. They might, though, be a little bit too risky. Koma, Koma going down here. Koma going down, Everybody playing. Like Johnny's... Johnny play like really nervously. Oh, Oh, wow! <gasps> Reflection and there's Arctic a power Moon. claim at the last second, taking down <laughs> taking down Arctic Moon. Incredible finish. And there we go. After all, Arctic Moon does reach the Grand Finals. And I can see oh, yes. Reflection does, open, in yeah. fact, everybody is, in fact, X-ranked in Clambert. So that was, that was probably another, another team that we saw that was neglecting you could even see, like, you could see really well how Reflection was well trained in this particular map mode combo. That seemed really well coordinated. Absolutely. And I was thinking we maybe could stay in this lobby. Um, <laughs> oh, never mind. Uh, we just got kicked out. <laughs> yep. But moving on to the finals, it it is insane. It is going to be Arctic Moon undefeated in their sets versus friends who we have seen make amazing comebacks. They, they might, they might not, the meme, I'm starting to believe that, like, they are much, much, much stronger than we thought at the start. They were, they were just underestimated because they lost their very, very first match. But now, they're in the Grand Finals, and they're playing against a very strong team, which we have just seen struggle. Arctic Moon is, at the end of the day, Arctic Moon is still the undefeated team. But, like, for one, since Friends was somewhat, like, underestimated by the system, there has not been a match between Arctic Moon and Friends before. Usually... What we what we have every time is that the teams that have played that play in the grand finals, usually we have already seen them in the top eight somewhere because they tend to be among the top teams, so the system likes to pair them with each other. But this time, because friends lost the very first match, we have no idea what to expect here. That's exactly Except for a good right. time. Exactly. And seeing Arctic Moon, who we thought was unstoppable, just barely squeaking by, whereas friends, they swept, they swept their semifinals to move on to face Arctic Moon. 
And the finals are best of seven now, so if you win four matches, you win the set. It's going to be a good one. And chat is currently asking, um, does this does this happen every month? Does this tournament happen every month? Um, actually, yes. So you might wonder, like, why is this happening on a Wednesday? Why would why would Snowpoke have a tournament on a Wednesday if Wednesday is such a weird day? And the 30th, like December 30th is like the worst, the worst day possible, which I actually agree with you, but apparently the teams didn't and they all signed up anyways. But uh, yeah, usually it's uh, it happens every month, usually on a Saturday. I can't believe I have to say usually now instead of every time. Uh, usually on a Saturday, and um, I, I can't quite yet say like when when's the next one's gonna be, but it will be during during January. Absolutely, and it looks like Twitch is back for me. It was down for like thirty minutes or so. Um, I could see the stream, couldn't read chat, couldn't really see anything else. I think it's working for most people now, which is good. But you know, I'm I'm glad I can be watching. Glad I can be here. And it's it's been so fun so far, Snow. It's been it's been wonderful. Thank you again for organizing Ink Theory. Again, we thought this would kind of be Marco, more thank, low key. <laughs> thank you, oh, thank you welcome. for saving Ink Theory today. <laughs> oh, hey, I I'm happy to be here. Happy happy to be here on the mic with you. But yeah, originally we thought it was going to be more low key. It's on a Wednesday, you know. But no, last night we had you know 20, 25 teams sign up, and it's been insane. It's been wonderful. I I slept longer today because I thought, oh well, this is gonna be chill, so I can, you know, I can I can be like just sleep a little bit longer, and then I just have two hours for the tournament to prepare. But I mean, that's gonna be fine because there aren't that many teams anyways. Things are gonna be okay. Password is incorrect. Whoops. Um, sorry, I was trying to join the lobby, and uh, I can be all relaxed. And then I wake up, look at Battlefy, and see that twenty teams have signed up overnight, and that's when I realized that this is gonna be an an interesting tournament. <laughs> Absolutely, and you probably had 50 plus messages in help desk too. <laughs> with questions <laughs> well, I about mean, roles most of and... those help desk messages uh, were, were responded to by you actually. I was just panically like pressing all sorts of buttons to make the tournament work, and I hardly even noticed what was happening in like in the whole team co coordination communication stuff. Well, hey, we're happy to be here, and again, we couldn't have done it without our wonderful staff. Um, so thank you guys so much. It's been fun. We're not done yet. We still have the finals and off stream will be the bronze final or yeah, the bronze match. So Reflection and Barracuda, you know, we're not sure if that match may be streamed somewhere, but we are looking forward to Arctic Moon versus Friends in the grand finals best of seven. And we're waiting to get into this lobby as well. Okay, we're getting ready with the overlay. Of course, there have not been no, no matches have been played yet. But yes, the grand finals they are a best out of seven. So except for Clam Blitz this time, you might be able to see to see every mode uh, twice. In in fact, absolutely. Okay, I'm gonna Game try this one. with the lobby once more. Game one, we're looking at Wahoo World zones. Let, this is an intense way to start off zones on Wahoo World. It's Kind of a small zone if I if I if I really think about it. You know, a Abuya it might not cap, but it can definitely take away the zone. I think this will be a very aggressive match. It's also like this is a very fun map for Dooleys because you can just like since it is all circular, you can just stand at the start of the zone and then just like you know just zoom around, move like just go in one in one circle, and you paint everything. It's the it's a very very convenient shape for Dooley players. So Certainly I wonder is. if we're going to see the first CDS in the entire tournament, maybe? <laughs> Am maybe. I going to start missing them? <laughs> I, I don't know. It's it's too soon to speak, but we shall see. Okay, we'll take I this finished. chance to change the stream title to indicate that this is, in fact, the grand finals of Ink Theory. Yay! There you go. I finished two bottles of sparkling water. I'm feeling good. I had a Kirkland Italian sparkling water, and I have a LaCroix now. Oh, so I'm in a good mood. Oh, yeah, I'm still just living off of that that tap water that I'm not drinking enough of right now. I I tend to get very I um so it has been mentioned uh, like people had the idea how about I do a YouTube video about um about me organizing the tournament like behind the scenes stuff, which of course like this time would have actually made for a really good video because the first 3 minutes the first 30 minutes were a total mess. Um but 
I should start recording my heart rate during these tournaments because it would make for um, quite quite interesting. I, I I don't know. I feel like I feel like people can hear that I'm nervous. I've been told last time that I was way too nervous. So I think um, that is a, a pattern that I will I will I will keep up. I guess. <laughs> Well, we can say you've done a wonderful, wonderful job so far. Again, any ink theory is always super pro professionally well ran, especially all the overlays. I'm just amazed that everything, all the work you put in before the tournament starts, absolutely incredible. Thank you. Thank you. I try. I try my best. It's um, it's just there are so many unexpected things that you never really know how they go out. For example, right now I'm seeing apparently, apparently my processor is dropping frames. It's stuck at 40, 40 frames per second at the moment, so that shouldn't happen. And I'm wondering how is that? How is that a thing? <laughs> I, I don't know. Like, have we have we dropped frames throughout the entire tournament? I'm not quite. I'm not quite sure. Um, it's. Uh, but I will try to not think too much about it. It might be because yesterday, like, I had to again. I had to rebuild my entire computer. Maybe the cooler isn't attached correctly, and so my processor is overheating right now. Um, but I guess, I guess we're going to be living off like 40 frames per second right now. I don't know, Chad, can you tell me, um... Well, we like, have is a there... semi-still image on stream, so it's kind of hard to tell the frame rate. Um, oh. but looking at... I thought there was like a stats for nerds thing, ad stat, or video stats. Um, I know, it's I'm a 60 not FPS. It says 60 to you, because it says 40 yep. to me. Nobody's noticing uh, any stuttering. Because like this is like the easiest the easiest part to, to stream. Then I, I don't fully understand. It, say, it seems to also... Uh, whatever. I mean, if you say... <laughs> if you say that you're not seeing any drop frames, even though my OBS says your computer is dying right now, um, I'm just going to hope that this is all right. Uh, I, will, I will believe you with that and try to not, not think about it too much. Yeah, Worst the magic case... <laughs> Worst case, um, the YouTube recording is actually being recorded with my graphics card right now. So that would be like an entirely, entirely separate thing. These teams are just finishing getting ready. Starting game one of the Grand Finals. Arctic Moon versus Friends. Starting with Splat Zones on Wahoo World. And I've got the feeling that this is going to be quite a close one. After all we've seen so far. Oh, look, now it's saying 60 frames again, of course. Well, I mean, sure. I, I'm glad. Let's go. I'm liking both of these, both of these kits so far. It seems pretty well balanced. I like it. Again, we're seeing a blob in the grand finals. I think we did see a blob last, last month in the finals. Very quick cap by Arctic. But it's quickly stopped by friends who are three players down. Arctic just wipes friends. Wipe. Arctic is going to take, retake it and push up a little bit. I was just about to announce the, the blah 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 meta, but it seems like um, Arctic Moon is doing their best right now to prevent the blah 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 meta. So everybody who doesn't want the blah 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 meta to happen um, soon, you will all have to cheer for Arctic Moon now. And so far, your cheers seem to be heard as they are doing a really good job at holding control. Yeah, but right now Friends is pushing up a little bit. They utilize their specials, try to use the Tenta Missiles in mid. They Are they going to get the cap? Is, are they going to get the recap? Let's see. They have two players down. It's probably not going to happen. We do have the Forge back at the zone, repainting. And they finally took it back, getting below 50, 50 remaining. Arctic Moon keeps going with all of those splats. We're seeing a lot of splats on the side of the Anzap and the Gal at the moment. Forge Pro so far hasn't done that much, but they don't necessarily need to because they have bubbles. They're probably designated to be painting, to be taking control if necessary. So even if friends will be able to recap here, there's probably going to be bubbles soon. And then there's also the Booyah Bomb. Now just 20 remaining. Yeah, very, very nice save by Arctic. Arctic is going to continue with their lockout. It's been very, very close. They had that one instance where they could push up, but there were three players down. They are wiped. It looks like Friends is going to take the zone. 72 penalty points for Arctic Moon. You could see this time the inkjet was actually used exclusively to paint by Friends. And sometimes that's a surprisingly good idea. Inkjet, inkjet does paint fairly well. And uh, here's one trick. If you use special power up on inkjet, not just uh, does it increase the hit radius, it also increases the amount of paint that you output. So I always like to recommend that in zones. 
Right now, Arctic Moon trying to figure out how they can get back into the zone, but it's so hard with all these Tenta Missiles, all these specials being used against them. They are very, very far spread out. Some of them trying to come up from top. I forget what that part of the stage is called. Trying to throw a Booyah Bomb in mid, giving friends penalty points. That's what they're hoping for, but it's not going to happen quite yet. Friends still has a zone just under 30 remaining. Arctic, um, uh, friends doing a really good job there at stopping the bubbles with their bomb rush. Again, blah, blah, blah. But now Fred, Arctic Moon does actually manage to get the get the zone, which was very important considering that Friends was only down at 27 already. Exactly. 55 penalty points now for Friends. Arctic Moon just passes their 55 penalty points remaining. Tons of penalty points for both teams. But remember, Arctic Moon already got down to five. Let's see how they handle this lockout. Okay, so they're all coming from one side now. Trying to trying to attack, but they are instead all being attacked themselves. Now Legend able to survive this interaction. Four friends. Ooh, three players down on Arctic, and they're going to lose the zone. It looks like, yep, that one bubble's there, but they're going to quickly uh, push it away. 57 remaining now for Arctic Moon. Wait, what is happening? Like Why am I seeing... Wait, 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 what? There were invisible Fri bubbles. <laughs> Friends doing a great job getting map control, making sure Arctic Moon is going to have to work really, really hard to get back into the zone. We see a Booyah Bomb by Arctic Moon and a cap and a cap. They take it. 44 penalty points for friends. I'm a bit speechless right now. Uh, that's that's something I haven't seen before. So I imagine maybe one player has disconnected to me, the spectator, but they're actually still all playing. So as long as they're all playing towards each other, it doesn't matter if one player is literally invisible to me. Um, it's gonna be it's I... gonna be fine. <laughs> I. It looks fine for my end, but yeah, I, I see four players or eight players total. That's no, very cool. interesting. No, no, we're having we're having a good time nonetheless. <laughs> We, we I absolutely could are just, again. Under, <laughs> just under a minute remaining. It looks like friends, they're going to have to try and get a push, try and use their specials to cap. Can they do it? They are down one player, two players. They do get the zone. A lot more penalty points now for Arctic Moon. Arctic Moon still has the lead and now they have the cap. And keep in mind, they have only 30 seconds left. So friends, that's really not a lot of time to to regroup and try to recapture the zone. Let me see if Arctic Moon will be able to get a few specials to just defend this a little bit further. Maybe a bubble or two, maybe some ink armor. We will see. Dark now, though, taken down. Very nice attack on the Hydra. And this might actually be Friends' chance to cap the zone. They haven't quite yet, but there's a lot of splats. They were actually trying the bubbles, didn't quite work out. Now, this might be an overtime. Yeah, Friends now has a zone. Two players down on Arctic Moon. Friends at full strength, pushing up, trying really, really hard to lock out Arctic Moon. Two players down, one player down again on Arctic Moon. Friends still have their penalty points they need to get through, but they're almost done the, with them. They're going to the have flank. to hold it for a little bit. But they are being called out. Okay, now 25. The, time, the counter is actually going with their bubbles. Bubbles have not been stopped bomb. yet. It doesn't need a bomb rush. quite work. Can friends one hold on? Can really really good. Get the bubbles, cap? bubbles, 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 bubbles. Oh, the three players down, three players down on friends. But there's a bomb Arctic rush. Ooh. The bomb rush gets it, the bomb and rush gets it, but it's not enough. There's only one player, there's only one player. They're all wiped. They're all wiped. No, 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 no. No. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. How? The blob. Oh my goodness. I want what to play Blob Blob now. Back. That was amazing. We are all main Blob wiped. after that match. <laughs> that was incredible. They were working alone. What a fantastic. Fantastic save and cap for Isaac on Friends. That was incredible. What? They were literally wiped. <laughs> oh my goodness. If that if that is how the finals are starting off, I am so hyped for the rest of these matches. That was incredible. <laughs> Okay, all the blob blob mains in chat are rising up right now. <laughs> okay, so this is why this is why uh, suction and rush is worth considering, I guess. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> that was such such a thriller. And now we go into tower on humpback. You know, we probably won't see the special spam as much, but I'm sure we'll see some good stuff. 
And again, we're having uh, a no logo team leading in the grand finals, as is also somewhat traditional. It's always the teams that sign up at the very end that don't have logos because they're just all kind of like coming together. Um, they they end up being being favorites, which of course means that these like temporary logos that I make kind of at least uh, get get some use. I'm, I'm glad like. I, I made one last time that like the, the issue is if the no logo things, if they look too good, then people will think that's actually their logo. And so that's really confusing. So uh, I kind of try to go for an in-between this time. And now we're going to go for an in-between between two teams. I'm sorry, that was horrible. On tower control. Let's see if we notice slightly different weapon choices. Not not by much. It looks um, it looks pretty similar, but a few a few alterations here. Looks like friends gets to mid first, but again, that really means nothing in tower control. Nobody wants to touch the tower until you do have the player advantage. And right now, two players down on friends. Very very aggressive explosive opening. Lots of short range weapons. They were all running into each other. Arctic is going to get to their first checkpoint. Three checkpoints in this stage, spaced out pretty evenly. They get past the first checkpoint. That armor is going to knock the Hydra off of the tower. And they're already at a 60 point lead. This tower is moving awkwardly quickly. Now down to 57. It is two on two, but it looks like friends kind of protected the tower a little bit. They're going to ride it back maybe slightly. It looks like Twig is going to have some... Oh, can Twig get out of there? They almost escaped the tri slosher. Not quite. But now Arcticman trying to go for it again, but does get taken down immediately. But of course, if you have this tower so close to the checkpoint, you might just go for the sneaky push again. Dark is going to do it too. But Dark is also somewhat alone here. Yep, they're not giving up. Right now, map control looks like it's kind of going Friends' way, just a little bit. Except that the double Booyah Bomb there is really going to uh, not do a whole lot for the tower progression. They get to the second checkpoint, but unfortunately can't really execute at the checkpoint. And right now the tower's back at mid. Friends definitely has map control right now. They are going to be pushing up, taking the tower onto Arctic Moon's side for the first time this match. And of course, Arctic Moon's 55 push, not going to be enough to make this a safe match for them. Oftentimes you do see matches tower control on this map actually go to a KO and we already have them past the first checkpoint. Now going towards the second checkpoint and they seem much, much safer than Arctic Moon did before. Legends they do are, look at that map control. They're taking turns, taking the tower. It looks like it's the Neo Splash and the Junior, but the Blob gets on to take the lead. They get to the second checkpoint. Two players down on friends, one player down on And if they can't Arctic. stop Sparrow, then they won't get much further. Sparrow keeps stopping them here. Now, okay, on it, but Sparrow's still on it. Sparrow's still stopping this. And they're not getting the checkpoint because of Sparrow. Tower's gonna go back to mid. Map control's more even at this point. Friends still maybe has a slight advantage. Three on three, two and a half minutes left. Isaac doing a really good job there at taking just a little bit more control. We can see Arctic Moon trying to get a few specials doing that. Booyah Bomb, but it was actually, they're still missing their ends up though. They're still respawning. So that Booyah Bomb not gonna do that much. Now Friends gets back on the tower. Three players alive for Arctic. Again, friend, since Friends got past the first checkpoint, they can just whiz right through. And the rain is going to help push the enemies away from the tower, but the Capers coming from the side is going to be pushed out a little bit. Friends is going to get to the second checkpoint and not be on the tower. Okay, I don't quite know what the blah 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 just died from, but I'm sure, I'm sure it, it worked out fine for the for the teams. Okay, now Arctic Moon trying to capture their first somewhat advantageous position. You can see they do have a bit more map control. Two in getting to very important. Three down, three down, three down for his friends. This yep, should Arctic be lead now. Making a wonderful push, getting to the second checkpoint. If they get halfway through, they will take the lead. But we do see okay, a Booyah, I see bomb that Booyah Bomb coming to help that defend. Bomb is they huge. do take the lead. Okay, with the surprise Sparrow on the tower, they might actually take another spec checkpoint. There's just 1v1. It's just Legend yep, versus three, Sparrow. One, Sparrow is on it. Sparrow having the rage. It. Sparrow not getting this fat. Sparrow is taking down. Oh, Sparrow lost it, however, Legend somebody with the huge else is on the Now, of course, they're, they're taking down all the jumpers. They it were doing was just everything. Sparrow versus Legend. 
everything they possibly could to get past that third checkpoint. Unfortunately, it didn't work. Getting to 19 remaining. Under one minute left now. Friends has map control. They got it. They quickly gained that map control. They will take the tower back and try and push as far as they can. They still have a checkpoint and a half to get through. And right now we have a 2v2. Friends is still on the tower, making good progress. Gets to that checkpoint they never actually got okay, just, through yet. Oh, and just 30 seconds left, but they're doing such a good job at taking down Arctic Moon. They are. Ooh, could they take the lead here? Two players down on Arctic Moon. I think oh, they're okay, going to take the lead. Okay, being a little bit safe. Oh, oh they need two more, but Twig. Okay, they're still happy. They're going to make it. They're going to make it. 20, they 18, they 18, 18, 17. They're, down. they're wiped. 10 seconds left. 17 and the wipe, 10 seconds. The last push by Arctic Moon coming up right here. We'll see how long they can last and if they can take the lead. This was really good, not just as far as this push goes, but also in terms of map control, which now Arctic Moon desperately needs. And of course, since this is not Raymaker, it is tower control. The tower either keeps moving or you lose. So you can't just stay safe. You have to be on the tower and be in huge risk, even if there's a lot of enemy ink around you. And we have two, two now going for the Booyah Bomb, which has been very good so far. Yep, oh, there's the Sergeant Mirage. Oh, it takes them down. Can Sparrow get back up there? That's there's a complete that wipe. Is a team wipe. Friends gets it for the win. It was the Sergeant Mirage once more that ended this game. What a yeah, that was our that was our second comeback here. The comeback team keeps was. comebacking even in the games. Friends up 2-0 over Arctic Moon going into game three. Remember, we're doing best of seven this time. So this third win won't quite do it for friends. They need to win four matches. And we have Rainmaker on Kelp Dome coming up. Falco, how much do you want to play Blah 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 right now? I I want to play. I want to play it with Suction Rush. Oh my goodness. Now, what I oh, yes. do as, as well as these teams? Absolutely not. <laughs> but man, it really comes in handy. Oh, and by the way, I did actually figure out why the frames were, were dropping. And so the viewers won't be able to see it, actually, because it's just this particular scene. And my graphics card can't keep up with like both the like grand final scene and also running the game capture on the side. But once the match starts, since the stream and the game capture are the same again, it's no problem. So um, it's my it's my graphics card. And uh, <laughs> the real Ink Theory is the friends we made along the way. No one told me Ink Theory would be this way. I'm actually, yo, Falco, I've got to admit something. I sometimes, oh no, the match is already starting. I sometimes wish, um, you know, can't we just have a boring grand final so I can just chill? Why, why do they always <laughs> go like this? <laughs> Well, we know we're getting the best of the best. Speaking of which, game three, starting up soon. Kelp Dome, Rainmaker, let's go. And this might be our first Rainmaker Kelp Dome match, actually. Um, this one has this notorious strategy where you just pick up the Rainmaker immediately and go through the side. But I would imagine that in this scenario, this is not going to work out. And also, I don't think a lot of people are running the run speed up required for that at the moment. Yeah. Just one player from, from Arctic Moon, the ball point has some run speed, but you know, that's a ball point. They're going to have run speed regardless. Um, kind of a <laughs> quick maybe carry, uh, two on two. Let's see, the ball point's going to take the greats. Look how, oh, they're going to they're gonna have to shoot. They couldn't make the escape. They couldn't run. They are down, three players down. And now friends will take the Rainmaker for the first time this match. And they're going the more common route. Legend being dangerously close to their, to their opponents, but of course they're playing Enzep, so I guess that's, just how, that's how it goes. I love how they keep trying to take down the Booyah Bomb, sadly not succeeding so far. Exactly, and the Rainmaker doing a good job. They're not pushing up far. You don't want to do that. This is such a narrow passageway. The Rainmaker never wants to be the frontline player, especially in a position like this. So let the Blob do their thing. Let, you know, <laughs> let the T-Tech do it as well. But it looks Legend like the Rainmaker getting, does get caught. Getting dangerously close to the pedestal. So they were... Um, Arctic Moon very lucky there to be able to stop the Rainmaker, but there's still a good chance here since it is so far painted. Now down to remaining 43. This is another choke point though that they cannot pass, luckily for Arctic Moon. Ooh, and we see the t tech we see Okat trying to flank, getting behind the pedestal, but it looks like they're ooh, they're not gonna be seen. But it's not gonna matter because the Rainmaker goes back to mid. Arctic Moon takes the Rainmaker and we'll see which direction they head. Toon having their really, really good interaction against the Spider Shot. Usually the disadvantaged weapon here is the K Pro, but yet Toon actually able to, to squarely defeat the Spider Shot. 
And now Isaac stopping the Rainmaker a little bit from pushing forward, but of course they can just stay in this very, very safe corner. Yeah, the Junior Which... is gonna try and get them, and it looks like, ooh, they do just in time. So this is always a tricky spot because do you want to jump down as Arctic Moon? Do you want to try and hop and get that knowing you're probably going to die right away or just let friends take it? It looks like friends do, friends do take it. They take it back to mid. Nice cooperation there to take down the Inkjet, which of course which would have like slowed down Arctic Moon substantially if they had not been able to stop that. But now it is Arctic Moon that is taking down and stopping friends from their attempt at pushing the Rainmaker further. It's now a 2v2. Half of the match is, is over. We still have 2 minutes 30 seconds left. We see Ocat from friends taking the Rainmaker. Can they push it a little more? Again, th these these choke positions have really been hard for these teams, and it it always is. It's really hard to push forward. Three players are down from friends. Looks like Arctic Moon's going to pick it up. Two minutes left. They have it at mid. Hey, take a look at those specials. Nobody's really tried to go great. Again, they probably don't have the run speed for it. Yeah, Grace is but really dangerous if you're not is, equipped for it. It is two players so down, think, but they do push. We will probably see them wipe. focus on this one area, on this one path. But yes, it is a it is a complete team wipe. Grace just tends to have you like it incredibly is. vulnerable. Absolutely, this match is going well back and forth. Um, you know, every thirty seconds, a remaker is going to be on the opposite side of the map. Can friends push it up Wait a, a little second, further? there are three down, that's a huge push. Can. Very good push, getting it all the way to 22 remaining. However, since this is since the pedestal is so, so close to the spawn on this particular map, as long as you're able to stop the Rainmaker, you will be able to respawn quickly, even if they take down a lot of your players. And that's what we could see here right now, as uh, Arctic Moon got taken down, a lot of players were lost, but they respawned close to the pedestal anyway, so they were able to stop them from just doing the KO. They did, and now friends continuing to just try and grab it and push it as much as they can. Under one minute now, they are down one player, and we'll see how aggressive they want to be. It looks like the Rainmaker's probably going to get splatted, and there are two players down. And let's try to see what the map control is looking like, as we have only 40 seconds left. Friends, you can see how friends is already, they're already making sure that whatever Arctic Moon is trying to do, that they will be stopped by a lot of, a lot of paint. Everything is really well painted um, in, in their street, in their defensive area. I'm not sure if it's actually called street, but this little choke point. Because, I mean, that's kind of where, where it's, it's going to matter afterwards. This is where, if Arctic Moon is going to be able to push forward, that's where the battle is going to happen. But so far, they're not even getting there. They're still, they're at their own tree. Yeah, Arctic Moon is And they're not Moon getting out really of there. And imagine is flanking. Yep, yep. The splash, the splash flanked a little bit. It was really hard to get out of that position. Friends needs to grab it and maybe, or they don't need to grab it actually. They're gonna just defend the Rainmaker. Somebody from Arctic needs to grab, they don't. Friends wins game three. That is a 3-0. It is a 3-0. Well then. Now, the underdogs. If history, <laughs> if history repeats itself in the grand finals of Ink Theory, Arctic Moon could come back for the reverse sweep. They they just might. It's going to be really, really hard, but Friends is doing an incredible job at just yeah, usually execu this, executing everything. This tournament series tends to be very reverse sweepy. So, um, not sure, not sure what to expect um, upcoming. And again, game four is Claim Blitz on Macomart, the stage that, you know, we said we we really enjoy. I feel like a lot of the community enjoys it too. And Claim Blitz, it's a it's a tricky one. So also, many we've opportunities got news. for flanks. Paco, we've got news. Uh, we also have a raid from, from Prior. And uh, coming with the news that the um, bronze match actually has concluded. And we can congratulate... Da, 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 da. Give me a second. We can congratulate Reflection on winning the third place in this tournament, beating Barracuda 3-2-1. Thank you, Pryor, so much for, for the raid, and um, congratulations on your awesome performance in this tournament, and thank you so much for participating. By the way, we might want to start talking prices, actually, since we are now in this in this part of the tournament. Um, we have a $100 prize pool, so if I'm not mistaken, that would be... I think it's a $20 prize. So it, like where you can, the team gets to decide which charity the money goes to. Um, overall, the winning team will win 50. I need to like multiply everything by two, which apparently is escaping my brain right now. We have game four starting up right now. 
Kelp Dome, or not Kelp Dome, sorry, <laughs> Claim Blitz on Macomart. If Friends wins this game, they win the set, they win Ink Theory December 2020. And the opening push for Claim Blitz, it's always just a battle for... I, I don't even know what the strategy is besides just killing your opponents right away. But two players down right now on Friends. And, and it looks like there the might prices. be power claim form. There is. There is a power claim form by Arctic Moon. Right now, the Hydra has it. To catch you up on the prices that this game is deciding over, the third prize uh, gets to donate $20 to a charity of their choice. So that is going to be a reflection. And there's the first pusher. There's the first push. Second place, $30. First place, $50 to a donation to a charity of their choice. And it looks like Arctic Moon continues to score these claims in. They need this if they want to stay alive in the grain finals. They have two players down, but 35, that's a fantastic push to start off this game. That would take three power clamps just to take it back. And this is, again, this is Arctic Moon getting the lead here. So they are they are the team that needs those pushes, that needs these points desperately, as if they, they just are. lose this one single game, they will be out of the tournament and will then be second place. Friends but scores, he's the they have... Yep, here's the counter push. They do have a lot of map control, but map control doesn't mean a lot if you're not going to get your claims in. They do get another power claim in, get to six remaining. They have two players down. Right now it's a 2v2. And you can see Arctic Moon getting rid of that clam as they can see. We need we need to stop this. We don't need our own clams at this point. We need to stop this push. Now Dark luckily getting it back. Like Legend, Old Legend, Throne getting the lead. They take the lead. Three players down, getting to 24, taking the lead. They'll have quite a few penalty points, but it's a lead nonetheless. Congrats. But I like I like how Arctic Moon is already getting ready for the counter push, already trying to set their players up as they could see, okay, they're not going to be able to do much further. And now here's the counter push. They're, they're dying, they're dying, they're dying. Everybody is white. We'll see if we see another incredible counter push by friends. If they score right away, they're going to take the map control. They're going to try and find spare clams. Two players down now on friends. Three players down. So Arctic Moon does a good job preventing the counter push. And it looks like the Hydra's going to go in and score. They do break the barrier. 32 remaining. Can they take the lead? They do take and the lead. lead and they get the what? game. There was another power clam. Oh, Arctic well then. Moon gets their first win in game four, preventing the sweep. The broom has been, has been taken away from friends. It might slowly it now, be uh, flipping over towards the other direction, but we'll see. Exactly. Let us let us see if uh, Arctic Moon can now sweep things back, or if Friends is sitting on that rumor is going to crash the entire party. And again, this is Splat Zones. We already had it in Game One. We saw Friends win, and it was a it was a interesting match. Just remember the suction bomb. Remember the blob staying alive. Friends won that match in a comeback. Arctic Moon, they did a really good job there, but I don't know how the Blob stayed alive in game one to get the win. Now we're in game five, Splat Zones once again. Also, I um, since since many people who are watching were actually not uh... Uh, not not sure weren't aware that this is a charity tournament. Uh, yes, basically, if you donate to my stream during Ink Theory, the amount you donate is going to be added to the prize pool, and all teams they they get to decide to like which charity uh, the money goes to. Basically, so the winning team fifty dollars will go to a charity of their choice. Um, last month, for example, we had so oftentimes, for example, we have Doctors Without Borders. We have a lot of Black Lives Matter. We have um, Against Climate Change, and then we have a few smaller ones. For example, last month we. We had, um, uh, we had, I think, like fifty dollars or a hundred dollars um, for victims of a hurricane in the Philippines, if I remember correctly. So um, there are a lot of courses that um, people feel very passionate about in this platoon community, and um, I'm glad that we we get to see those. And no bits bits don't count; it's only donations through PayPal. Game five getting started. Splat zones on Piranha Pit. Could this be the end? Could this be the finals? Can Arctic Moon hang on and give one more game? We'll find out. Okay, we're seeing a few a few changes in weapons. We're having two suction bomb rushes this time with the, the new splash. Yep. I mean, there are two zones, so why not two suction rushes? It's, honestly, it kind of makes sense. 
Exactly. 3v3. Ooh, 2v2 very quickly. Arctic Moon takes his... Oh, that's a wipe. Arctic Moon has a player advantage. They take the zone. They're going to try and jump in and prevent prevent friends from sneaking in very easily. Getting all the way down to 80. And they're doing a good job. They have two players on each side watching both sides of the flank. There are a lot of specialists ready though on the side of friends. They're probably going to use them all now. You can see a lot of a lot of bomb rushes. But Arctic Moon able to stop friends here. Counter the counter is still going. Dark getting a lot of splats. Very, very crucial splats. So only two players left for Arctic Moon, but now it's a 2v2 now. But can they 2v2. hold it? Can they if they can hold it steady, this is going to be even more points yeah. for Arctic Moon as oh, this counter is running down. Now there's only Dark left though. Yep, just the jet squatcher, and it looks like it's gonna be really hard to hold on, but they still do. He's gonna back up into their zone, use the stingray, let the teammates come back to repaint the zone. And it's working out for them. They do remain the cap, no penalty points, getting all the way down to 20 and 18. And can friends cap it? Friends caps it, giving 63 penalty points to Arctic Moon. Oh, and we are getting, we are actually getting donations now. Um, I, I should have really pointed this out earlier, shouldn't I? Um, from Marceline, $25, $25 added to the prize pool. And again, this might be the very last match of this tournament, actually. Um, and might be decisive over where all of those donations are going to go to. We appreciate all the support here. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, you so much. Right now, Arctic Moon is doing a good job chipping away at their penalty points. Remember, they had quite a bit not letting friends really take control of the zone at all. 2v2. Yes, if Arctic Moon keeps going like this, then we will actually still take some time to figure out where, where these donations are going to, as this is going to take a little bit longer because Arctic Moon so far doing a really good job defending this. They are in Wolf Friends, finally get another cap. It's 3v3, they're pushing up, but it's not gonna work. Arctic Moon regains control, which further chips away at their penalty points. And now we're gonna soon be at the point where it's actually gonna increase the po decrease the points themselves, so we might actually even have a KO here. We could Dude, have a KO. Keeping, keeping them really far away. We might even might even stop the Tuxedo Marrush. There's another Tuxedo Marrush left, though. Again, there are two of them. But even that Ooh, is not going to be enough. Arctic, nope, two players down now on Arctic. It looks like the Booyah Bomb is going to help. But not by a whole lot. One player from and Arctic Friends down. is going to cap, giving 57 penalty points to Arctic Moon. So we are doing this again. Uh, Connor, thank you so, so much for the $5 donation. Thank you. And right now, two players down on friends. Arctic trying to push up so they can regain the zone, giving penalty points to friends. Three players down on friends. We see the bubbles going to take the zone. And now Toon again. You can see Toon being a lot on this particular side, trying to stop a friends from even even getting anywhere close to the zone. But now Toon actually does get, get stopped here themselves. But so far, I really like how Arctic Moon is playing this game. They're being very careful, um, not running into any suction bombs. And we're seeing a Stingray. Yeah, they're being very careful. And again, getting all the way down to five. That's such a good feeling. So close to winning, but not quite there, especially when you get all the penalty points. Two players down now on Friends. One player down on Arctic Moon. Just under a minute left. And so far, I would say, looking at how many splats, Dark nearly getting a quad here. How many splats the teams are having. Look at Arctic Moon with the um, 16 splats Jet Squelcher. 15 splats um, ends up. It is so far really decided on the number of splats. It is, it, and it's it's incredible. This jet squatch was doing such a good job. Six speaking of things so that are incredible, so we just doubled the we, we just doubled the uh, the price pool. Um, oh my goodness, Stroke and Egg, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> so the price pool is now at two hundred something, two hundred thirty dollars or or so. I've lost count, but uh, what is not lost count is Platoon, as it is counting down the seconds for friends. But we are now at only twenty seconds left. Can friends hold on to for the win? It looks like they lost control. There's a Booyah Bomb, but they do regain two on two okay, in the last 10 seconds. Dark, Dark trying to paint here, but is not quite able to make it there. But so far still, this is even as far as players go, so they wouldn't be able to get it to, to get it down to zero, unless there are a lot of spots. But oh, the spots are happening but on the wrong side, but friends is all done. Can they do it? Oh, and they're down. They it looks like it's not going to work. Arctic Moon takes it, taking game five. They are now only shy by one point.
two to three, heading into game six. I am, I am speechless about all of this. I like, too. I, I really should have mentioned earlier that this goes to charity, shouldn't I? <laughs> I actually, I, I got an idea for next tournament. What if I, what if we have the teams say beforehand which, uh, which organization they want the money to go to, and then like you could even, you know, it would be like even more, even more hype. But. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, basically, so in this tournament, uh, like, usually I'm, like, pretty, like, I, I talk a lot about prices and stuff, but since I expected this tournament to be small, I kind of didn't really have prices in mind. I even told people they were willing to donate. I told them, okay, we already have pretty good, like, with $50, there was already a pretty good price. I said, hey, let's wait for January. That's probably going to be a way larger tournament, a way larger with, like, way more teams and stuff. And, um... Well, the opposite, the opposite is happening. <laughs> this tournament is large, as is the prize pool, because, um, because all of you, all of you wonderful people are contributing with your donations. And, um, of course, after the tournament, after the donations have been done, I will inform you as quickly as possible which charities the team have chosen for the money to go to. So this might yes. be this night, maybe tomorrow. I'll try to be as quick as possible. Yes, thank you to all to who donated, all of you guys viewing, all, everybody who has helped Ink Theory become what it is. It's been incredible so far. We were almost done, but we'll see if we move on to Game 7. First, Game 6 has to be played. Arctic Moon needs this win if they want to bring it to Game 7. Also, the music, by the way. Um, I set up the playlist quite a while ago, so I don't know the music for every single track. There is like about 30 to 40 percent is from Yu-Gi-Oh! actually. That's what it is for this tournament. Otherwise, it's from all sorts of Nintendo franchises. We do see the return of the slosher on Friends. And this blob, the blob is still here. Blob on towers. Uh, well, suction rush, I should say, on towers. You could, you could expect that. Um, slosher Nouveau, uh, Tri Slosher Nouveau, is that Ingamar? I believe that one is armor. It could be wrong. Because um, then they're going to have to right armor. Like Friends is going to... They took control a little bit. They do have a one-player advantage. Now it's tied 2v2. Looks like Arctic Moon is going to get on the tower first, but they're going to try and take on the blob. I mean, it's actually Inkstorm. I always mix those up. And here's the first Friends is for now Friends. on the tower. And they also, if you look at Happy, you can see they have a lot of space to move around at the moment. It's fairly comfortable. It is very comfortable. 3v3, tower back at mid. Another player of Arctic Moon's falling down there into this little pit. And Arctic now, Moon might be approaching the first checkpoint. They are down a player. Friends being pushed back though, so a... even... Ooh, they're going to trade positions. Two players on the checkpoint, or on the tower. Okay, but now this ink armor they had is over. They're not gonna get any more. Actually, both teams are playing double armor. Well, never mind. But they may get both past the checkpoint. Are... Armor might come up soon. Just oh, both armor actually just at 50%. This stage. I don't know. I don't have a good feeling about this checkpoint, honestly. You know, Arctic Moon is making really good progress. Just getting past the second checkpoint, getting all the way down well, to 19. Two players down now on friends. Could this mean? Ooh, they're just, still going. It's a 2v2. Watch it it turns out Arctic Moon doesn't care about my feelings. Five seconds left, but there are also oh, no players oh, left, though. Oh, so, so close by Arctic Moon. We were two to three seconds left from a from a start of a potential reverse sweep. But we're still on the way there. This it broom is, is slowly, slowly trading owners. If there's any team that I can believe will make a comeback, we, we think it's friends. <laughs> We've seen them <laughs> Absolutely. before. But they are now down three, two players as Arctic Moon continues to try and get their push again. Again, they got all the way to five, which is so, so, so close. We do see a Neo Splash flanking, but they're down. But they are actually going for this push again. And this time it's looking possible. Tuna's still there. Tuna's still trying to get there. But it's a hard, it's so, so unsafe. No, no, Tuna needs to get a, out of there now. And they don't even make the jump. One. <laughs> oh man. Well, you can try. <laughs> You might as well try when you're that close. What do you have to lose? Tower's going to be approaching mid. And right now, Friends is down by one. Uh, it's just the junior. So Arctic Moon we will are continue seeing again. to try their push. 
we are seeing again just looking at the number of splats that again it is arctic moon somewhat out splatting their opponents and therefore having a lot of control but it seems a little bit more balanced this time so um that makes me hopeful that maybe friends will actually be able to recapture all of this but so far the match seems to be in the hands of arctic moon it's definitely possible especially looking at the hydra already has 12 kills which is incredible doing a great job but they're wiped now friends will try and paint Let's see if they get on the tower. They do. The tower moves a little more quickly when you're on it if it's going back to mid. And, you know, if you're on the tower, obviously. But they're going to try and get some map control and continue to push upward. They still need to get to their first checkpoint. Well, here's the first attempted push by friends, but it is aborted very quickly. Apparently, they prioritized pushing the, the map control here and which honestly might have been a wise decision as two players on the side of Arctic Moon are now going down but that being said friends are being stopped too and so they are not making past the first checkpoint so far but that's a lot of map control now they're finally at the first checkpoint but it's a 3v3 can they avoid the Hydra doesn't look like they can because it ends up flanked as well three players down just the slosher who's at mid who is gonna hide behind the tower and maybe back up, but they are down by the Kenza gal. So in the end, this ended up being counterproductive as friends now at a numbers disadvantage and Arctic Moon being able to recapture a little bit of the zone. They're also having their specialist ready. You can see this Booyah Bomb probably about to come soon. They have double Booyah, double armor, which uh, at the very end of a splat zone, excuse me, of a tower control match, of course, very convenient, exactly what you would want to have. And just about but 15 phenomenal. seconds left. Arctic Moon down by two players. Can friends make a wonderful push here? We'll see what happens. This will go and into overtime if all. they want to get the win. That was a delayed wipe. So uh, this is this is their chance. Friends, as as good of a chance as they've ever had in this entire game. Yep, they are, we are in overtime. best situated right here. It's going to be so hard. Let's see how their teammates position. But we do yes, have a Booyah Bomb. Remember, they are white. No. Arctic Moon takes a tower. We are headed into game seven, everybody. Game seven, game seven, game seven, yay! It's happening again! It, would <laughs> it wouldn't be an ink theory if we weren't going to game seven in the finals. This is so exciting. Uh, as is tradition. It's kind of ironic, like, since this tournament doesn't have a skill cap, in theory, like, super strong, super unbalanced teams can just participate, but it somehow still always ends up working. It does, and we keep moving the broom the other way. Just slightly, just slightly. The last map mode combo for today, Rainmaker, the Reef. I think Rainmaker is what I would want to see in Game 7. It is going to be incredible. Oh, very, very much so. I love having Rainmaker as the very last match. It's always the most the most exciting mode for, for something like that. It certainly is, and these teams didn't take too long to ready up, so we are going to get you guys in there. Grand Finals, Game 7, Arctic Moon versus Friends, Ink Theory, December 2020. And while I'm at it, I'm quickly going to annoy everybody with pinks. There we go. Now everybody knows it's Game 7. If you don't know everybody, it is Game 7. 3-3, three, three, Arctic we Moon versus Friends. We have a double splash. I, I like in this loadout from friends. It's it's interesting. You see a double splash, a junior and a blob. That's a very, very painty loadout. And again, very so have quick special. From, from two armors to one armor and one ink, one stingray, which makes a lot of sense considering how much you can defend with stingray in this mode. Two players down That's now on Arctic, three players down. Let's see how friends takes advantage of this. The junior picks up the Rainmaker. Let's see which way they want to go. Ooh, two players down, trying to avoid the Ray. And there's the Stingray. <laughs> there's the Stingray, indeed. Yep, now it's a two on two again. I think they just slowly took down the entirety of Team Friends, actually. And, oh, of course they are. They are, though, coming back, of course, since it was very delayed. But the Rainmaker is safe enough there for Dark to wait a little bit to contemplate. Do I pick it up? Do I not pick it up? And in the end, they did go for it, but are now in very stinky trouble. Stuck in that toxic they mist. Are. Arctic Moon is finally going to push it, get some points. Let's see if they can get past the 76. That's what they need to take the lead. The Booyah Bomb is going to help maybe, but there are bombs, there are bubbles, there are blobs, there's everything. Oh, and Have the flank from this one? the Neo Splash. But Arctic Moon probably won't be able to take this much further. Nice attempt by Twig, but does not quite hit the blob blobber. Blah. 
We'll see Friends picks up the Rainmaker. They were going to try and go up, up the bridge, get that height advantage, but they accidentally drop down. Let's see if they can extend their lead. Looks like, you know, you if, if you're the Rainmaker, you have to avoid the Stingray. You're the number one target of the Stingray. Wow, Isaac, not so strong to avoid the Stingray, but then even pushing forward. That's that, that that takes that takes some uh that takes some uh some motivation. It certainly does. And now Arctic Moon, they're gonna take the Raymaker over the bridge. It seems like every team every team's just going over the bridge here. And it's it's a tight battle, you know. Typically in Raymaker, we've seen one team make an early push that almost decides the game. They get to ten or fifteen remaining, and that's kind of it. But this has been very very back and forth. Absolutely. That being said, I mean it is still Rainmaker at any second. Now there are two down on Arctic Moon. Any second, literally, could just be the end. You know, and there's a splat bomb. <laughs> you you never know in this mode. I. You. <sighs> That's exactly correct. And just under halfway through or over halfway through the match. Ooh, they try to sneak it, getting to 37 remaining, just the blob alive, so that could be the push they need to get the win. But Arctic Moon, they're going to need to really paint, good. they're going to need to push and build their specials. Keep in mind, that is basically a second choke point that they made it past. You can kind of imagine Rainmaker, like, with a half... Oh, wait a second, wait a second, wait a second! No way! Arctic Moon, no, ever so slightly not making it quite past there. They can try again, but they're probably not going to. They're not enough players. But it's a two-on-two. -two. It's a two-on-two. -two. Okay, there's we'll one respawning, but not jumps. quite in time. Yo, respawn faster, respawn faster! Okay, they're getting there. There's the bomb rush. Oh, and it looks like Friends picks up the Rainmaker. They're gonna go around the side. That was risky, because if you get spotted right there, you might put your uh, lead in jeopardy, but they're gonna avoid the ray. Let's see. Oh, they're gonna go up the wall. Okay, Friends is up the wall. And Pretty I believe sure that's that was a Rainmaker, no Rainmaker zone, zone, so they wanna quickly leave that area or stay there until it detonates, but we'll see. So at this point, friends leading by two points. But it doesn't matter. If they win, they win. But now we can see Arctic Moon already getting ready for another push. Friends being in a slight disadvantage. But look at Happy just Waved. just charking this entire thing and making sure nobody gets gets further than they need to. Wait, but Happy is just two people, just two people getting a very crucial yep. spot here. This might be two making a huge difference. One minute Two left. players down on friends, double booyah bomb, but they get so close, getting to about probably like 40, 41 remaining there, so close. But now this is looking much harder, friends two down. This time Arctic Moon added advantage. Look at Twig, Twig trying to stop. Twig does getting get stop themselves. Up. Can they push just a little bit, just a little bit, just a little bit? No. So close. So, so, so close. 35 seconds left. And now, and now Arctic once again, Moon has to regroup. And now once again, around the side. And they have the lead, so they could maybe hold there. Maybe this isn't a... It's probably not a Remaker free zone. That's, I, I don't we'll think, I don't think that's, that's going to work. But they might actually try. They might try. Okay, Happy might. actually trying I... to hold it there. 15 seconds. Do they have... Wait, well, let's they... take a look at the range. But they, they have, have Sting, but Arctic Moon has oh, Stingray. It pops, it pops, it resets. The Stingray would have probably pushed. ended them anyways. But now last the final push. push. We're 3v3. Two down Arctic, this okay, might be game. Oh, and that's, that's it. That is game. That is, so in fact... <laughs> oh my goodness. That was incredible. The rejection of the reverse sweep. The sweep, the, the, the broom has been handed back to friends as they are pre uh, preventing the reverse sweep uh, from Arctic Moon. Also, everybody is, from Kiva's stream, we just got a right at the... Thing. Same thing that we saw in the first round of the quarterfinals. Welcome in, everybody. We just finished up the grand finals of Ink Theory. It was a blast. Congratulations to friends defeating Arctic Moon, preventing the reverse sweep. Everybody from, from Kiva's stream, uh, thank you so much for uh, stopping in by the, the very last second. We just, we just finished the well, most of the tournament. We can still take a look at all the, the overall results. Um, and um, again, the third place, the third, the third place match, we weren't able to see. And as Chad is pointing out, though, again, a no logo team has won the tournament. I can, I'm gonna tell you, next in theory, nobody, like everybody's gonna sign up last second. Nobody's gonna have any logo. Just hoping to get the, the win like that. But um, yeah, with that, Falco, another game seven. Another game seven third time in a row it has been incredible 
it, again, friends with, it kind of counts as a comeback. You know, you go up 3-0, then you go down 3-3, and then you win the finals. I, I would say that's a comeback. You just won after losing three matches in a row. Congratulations to friends. Again, no logo, but that's okay. They still deserve the win. And it's, they it's get fine. to choose where the charity um, prize of their choice is going to. Yes, which is now going to be like above above $100, like since the prize pool has exploded so much. So um, the charity that is favored by friends um, is going to be very, very happy this, this evening. And of course, that's the uh, Arctic Moon also getting to have a, a huge donation of $50 to a charity of their choice. And the third place reflection, um, $25 or more, as I will have to add up all of those donations. And again, congratulations to Arctic Moon for going undefeated in the Swiss rounds. Unfortunately, didn't really work out in the grand finals. Congratulations to friends. Incredible, incredible um, playing from both teams. Absolutely incredible. Let's show, let's take a look at the overall results for these top eight. Again, as as said, friends winning the tournament. Then we have Arctic Moon on place number two, who again, like were until this very light uh, last moment, entirely undefeated. Nobody was able to defeat them. But then friends in a game seven match were able to just ever so slightly win this tournament. They were leading by two points. And it's it's absolutely, absolutely absurd. But I, I loved every second of it. Third place, Reflection. Fourth place is Barracuda, who, um, I mean, both of whom we, we saw a lot, including in the semifinals. Then on the fifth place, wait, now I have to do some, some math. Fifth place would be Pain, if I'm not mistaken. Sixth place would be, would be the boys. Seventh place would be three Smurfs, one Smurf. And eighth place would be Vision, if I'm not mistaken. Those last four are always a little bit hard, hard to tell, but I think that is the, the, that is the, the entire top eight line for this tournament. And um, of course, there were also many, many other teams that I hope had a great time. And uh, yeah, yeah, that was, that was a fun tournament, wasn't it, Falco? It certainly was. And for those of you who guys, or those of you who participated, remember there is a feedback form on Battlefield. We would love for you to fill it out. I know, Snowpoke, you definitely look at those. Um, you look I, at I the do. feedback and you wholeheartedly take everything in. I, oh, I very much do. Like every time after the tournament, I post the I post the feedback into the organizational stuff, and uh, and I mean we we get positive feedback, so so it's fine. And then I freak out over the one person who has who who would like something to be changed, and I'm like, oh wait a second, we gotta change something. Wait a second, let's rewrite the entire tournament. Um, <laughs> But yes, uh, it, please, I take I take all the feedback. Um, I, I don't mind people shouting at me if that's what you feel like. But um, I feel like this tournament was a lot of fun, so I assume there won't be that much shouting. It certainly was a lot of fun. And again, we kind of saw, I'll say we saw everything in this tournament. You know, we saw, um, well, we had technical difficulties, but we saw what would happen yes. if a team had, would have like disconnects. If we can't finish and finish a whole set, you know, we had to want end one set early because it took us a little longer to get in. And, you know, these things happen in tournaments. They're real. But thank you again to all the staff who, if it wasn't for you guys, these tournaments would take so much longer and would not run as smoothly. So make sure to go follow all the staff members. Um, is it exclamation exactly. point follow staff? OK, um, actually, those are the staff from last time. But I mean, they're still kind of. Oh kind well, of part of, cool. of the stuff in, in some way. Um, it's just that I told all the art people, I told them, hey, this tournament is going to be small, so uh, take a breather, because like they just got finished with this art. So I so like they didn't really have time to like for another artwork anyway. So it was like, OK, I'm not going to look for much more artists, so because like the next one is going to be much whatever. Anyways, I totally underestimated how large this tournament is going to be. And now here, here we are. So I would like to, yes, I would like to like make sure that here we go. You are all aware of the wonderful, wonderful, beautiful staff that has supported this tournament. We have Lex, we have Seaweed, and we have... Wait, please roll over once more. Baggage. 
um, the three of those, they were doing all of the overlay stuff. So basically, like whenever the teams were like on the, like the team names had to be updated, the scores had to be updated, um, all of those things, it ran so smoothly this time. And like whenever a match starts, looking at the colors and stuff is so difficult. Um, I think we've never had like overlay stuff run that smoothly. Um, all the times where like somebody opened the wrong overlay at all, like that was me. Uh, that's what I do. But like all the names and stuff, which all the stuff that ran super smoothly. Thank you so, so much for the stuff. And then um, the communication. We had Hakan, we had Witty, who, um, so Witty, what she does is she pings everybody. All the players, you know her now. Um, please buy a bobblehead from her. She's wonderful. I am out of two bobble, sorry, I'll get distracted. Hakan, um, Hakan made sure he even managed to get us into this second semi-finals match. Uh, make sure we get into the lobbies quickly. And that too has been as smooth as it has never been before. If it wasn't for me breaking the audio in the first 30 minutes of this stream, this would have been the smoothest ink theory ever. So, uh, yay! <laughs> that was wonderful. And then also to the, the hero of ink theory, the co-commentator that saved the first, first, the first 30 minutes and then made the rest of the tournament so, so, so wonderful and such a great experience. Paco! Snow, thank you so much. But we all know that this could not have happened without you. So much hard work that you put into ink theory. So Snowpoke, thank you so much. Thank you for hosting. I'm glad I could be a part of it. And I look forward to all ink theories in the future. Thank you, thank you so much, and thank you all for for being here. Um, it is. I am so amazed by how many team people, like how many teams, enjoy this tournament and come for like tournament after tournament after tournament, and how many people like we're having so much hype and set. It's so much fun. But of course, all of this hype. Um, well, it has now it has now concluded. We gotta go somewhere else, don't we? So give me one quick second while I open up Twitch to see where all of these wonderful people who are now all hyped up are going to go to. So let's see who is live right now. Sorry, I'm actually one more second. This music is amazing. I am I am way too hyped up. <laughs> I'm gonna scream after this tournament. <laughs> Okay, actually, um, actually, like we haven't been able to raid Aribun in a while and she got partnered. I want to, so um, all of you, can you please congratulate Aribun on getting partnered uh, with all of, all of these people, super big raid to celebrate Aribun. Cause like usually my streams have been a bit shorter lately, so I haven't been able to rate her as much. And so I would like to take this chance to finally be able to support her more. And again, everybody, thank you so, so much for being here. I will send you over to Aribun's wonderful place. And um, yeah, feel free to copy the right message and everything. I know the music is already over cause I, I'm talking way too much. I'm way too excited. Um, I hope you're also way too excited so that Aribun can, can feel all of that excitement. <laughs> everybody, wait, Falco, Falco, are you still? I'm still here. Okay, so we can say bye-bye together. Everybody, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Yes.